Mike check, <laughs> Mike check, Mike check. Hey, guess who is here? I, I'm here with Brian. Brian's on either side of the screen. Come on over, Brian. Come sit Better down. Late than Let's never. talk. Let's do a quick mic check. What's up, guys? <laughs> wait, wait. I'm going to start with this. I predict the winners is S95D. Those damn shills. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we shilling for tonight? Who we got today? I predict the winners is S95D. Oh, wait, Those wait. damn wait. shills. <laughs> Let's take the echo off here. Oh, Who we shilling okay. for tonight? Who we got today? Well, that's a little, that's a 30 second delay. No, it's definitely. We don't trust ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. We are here at Val Electronics and. Let me adjust to make sure that we're all good. There we go. Okay. We are here at Valley Electronics and we have three TVs that I think you guys really want to take a look at. The Q900D has not had a chance to really shine because so much of it is taken by all the TVs. W -O of oh wait, I forgot to do the intro. I think right into it. Okay, all right, so let's do a proper let's do intro. A proper intro. I'm, I'm so terrible almost, at almost, So I'm Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy. This is FOMO, this is his channel. We're here at Value Electronics in Scarsdale, New York. We have three TVs here, 75 inch Q and 900D AK, Neo QLED Mini LED is on the right. We then have the S95D QD OLED 77 inch in the middle, and we have the G4 LG MLA OLED 83 inches on the left. Yes. Now, these TVs have been covered to death already by us and others. The perspective we're looking to add today is we're starting this comparison in a bright room. Room is very bright. Oh, we have a skylight. Keep on talking about the room. So I'm going to show them the room. So we have a skylight above us. We have windows to the left. FOMOS panning to the left. That's my raincoat. That's all our gear. We didn't plan on showing that. And it's not bright right now, but we're showing right away the showroom. So a lot of these comparisons have already been done in a dark room. What I'm trying to put it to bed right off the bat is the fact that the S95D will not do well in a bright room. That is nonsense. It won't do great with direct sunlight. What that means is sun hitting it directly. I would argue that every QD OLED uh, struggles with that. So we want to show that we're in a bright There's room. This, and this is the skylight, skylight above us. Look at that skylight. So we're in, in effect, the kind of room you'd be watching this in. Um, and we want to show you right off the bat is the lack of glare on the S95D right off from the jump. There's glare on the G4. Wait, there's glare on the G4? What? Lift up a little bit. FOMO. Put the front of the camera a little bit up. There you go. Okay. And the 900D is off to the right. It's at 75. Now the glare is on the... G4 and the 900D are pretty massive, but we're about to show you why there are. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> High Def Digest. It's Brian's channel. <laughs> I said no matter. People were like, what is the name of your channel? It's Brian's Tech Therapy. Nah, it's Brian's channel, baby. I, I love it. So if you want me to show you why the glare is so bad, I will actually have Leanne assist me in a second to show you exactly why the glare yeah, is so I'm, bad. Yeah, I'm going to the right scene so you guys can see. So anyway, how are you guys doing? Sorry we're running late. Love you guys. Um, much props to Value Electronics for having us. They are officially open today, and we actually take over the store. Um, and these TVs are all and amazing. People out. And uh, we're lucky to actually have the 83-inch G4 here because they're flying. Like, Wendy, they're, they're all sold, aren't they? Like, as far as they're selling out the G4s oh, yeah. at 83. So... Um, we're very lucky to have it here. And actually, the 900D has been selling really well as well. So we'll let him finish setting up. We're going to have Robert Zone jump on shortly. But also, thank you to FOMO for coming down because he actually has these TVs at home other than the 900D, and he still flew down. So respect to him. Okay, let me turn up the exposure just a bit because I'm, I'm having fun with this. Yeah, so we're going to have a quick little fun, fun thing about the glare. Before any of the eagle eyes people figure it out, why you see so much glare on these other TVs. Okay. Okay, Brian, why is there so much glare? Why is there so TVs? much glare on these TVs? And I'll just say, just to set the stage, when I sat down, I was like, wait, is the glare that bad on these TVs? I can see like Brian's jacket on the sofa right there. <laughs> and like what, what, what happened? And so ultimately, well, come, the, the reason is, remember everyone, when you buy a new TV and you see glare, 
There is a reason for the glare, and it has nothing to do with the coating on your TV. It does not. Leanne? <laughs> this is Leanne. This is... No, she has to be to your, your left. There's Leanne. Okay, <laughs> now. Let's, family business, family business. Let's see how good the glare is when we actually remove you want the, to do the, the plastic protective coating. That's on these TVs. The glare got a lot better, didn't it? There we go. The magic of the plastic coating. So those of you who want to keep the coating on because you want to sell it on eBay a few months from now, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with way worse glare now. Now there is still a little bit of glare. Okay, Brian, see the G4. Let's remove the plastic Come on, coating. Leanne, you do better than I do. Come on. You, you got the best. My best thumbnail is Leanne taking the plastic Le off. Le Leanne actually gets paid to do this. Quite a bit better, Brian. Okay, now. It was a funny moment though we sat down. Thank you so much, Leanne. So Leanne, real quick, Leanne is Robert and Wendy's daughter. Leanne doesn't love to be on camera. I force them to be on camera whenever possible. But Leanne is the one that when we're putting these stands together is the Spider-Man of the team. She's the strongest one out of everybody. Shout out to her husband, Benny as well. Much love to Benny and the whole family. But Leanne's the one that's jumping behind stuff, lifting things that gets all the stands built here. So she shows me how to do it actually. So much love to Leanne, Robert, and Wendy. So uh, yes. we walked in, we're like, damn, the glare is terrible. Huh? I, know. I was like, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> it's like, it's, I go, wait, it's like what, a mirror. What is that plastic tab on the side? I go, oh, thank heavens. No, they, <laughs> it would have been game over. All right, they win. <laughs> now it's obviously the glare is, it's much better now. Uh, the anti-glare coating on the G4 and the QN900D, it's manageable. I mean, it's not too noticeable now that we removed the, the plastic coating. However, on the Samsung S35D, obviously it's a touch better, but what we also wanted to show is, even though in the Sprite room, it doesn't make the flaring across the S95B as bad as we would have thought because there is no direct sunlight. Because yeah. you guys saw up right above is that sun yep. roof, right? It's like... Well, you know, some creators decided <clears throat> to take like a flashlight and put it against the screen. I think, not I think pointing I was, any wait, fingers. Wait, I, I think I was one of them. <laughs> not to point any fingers. This guy takes a flashlight off of a helicopter. He's like, whack! But you see how it behaves. Now, in fairness, does a bit of the contrast take a hit? Absolutely. But when we talk about the reflection handling, it's not about the contrast taking a hit, it's about the fact that you lose the reflections. So we knew that you would see the reflections on a WRGB OLED. But with the S95D, the point is the whole TV is still visible, meaning whatever you're watching is visible. You won't see yourself. That is what they tried to do, and that's what they did. Now, we, we have the, the third stooge here. Here, you switch, you sit here. Can see it. Oh, your O'Brien could stoop and stamina. No, yeah, it's going mean, to be in So here is the man of the hour. Robert Zone made it possible for me to bring take you over in his store can, today. <laughs> and is there glare on my shirt? This, oh, the sunlight's <laughs> going to My shirt has glare. So yeah, I'm going to move over. Right. <laughs> so, Robert, uh, before we jump into comparing these things, we want to talk Bravia 9 real quick. Very because nice. many of you are here just to see these lesser TVs because you really want to get a Bravia 9, right? And as you guys know, the G4 is currently my favorite TV. It is in the lead for many reasons. You guys watch my video. But more importantly, though, a lot of you feel like for whatever reason, right? I'm not judging. OLED isn't for you. And that's absolutely fine. You've been waiting for the ultimate mini LED. Mm -hmm. And we've all been to the same Sony event. And it turns out that, yes, the Bravia 9 is literally the most cutting edge mini LED based on their software algorithm, the, the precision dimming control. So, yes. two things they want to know the release date mm -hmm. and the prices of the Bravia mm -hmm. 9 Very good. and we know it's going to be selling out really quick even though it's over five thousand dollars but more importantly because it's so early in the year Robert is the only one that's going to offer you a bundled discount yes store credit so let, let me set the stage very good right Robert uh, if they get an 85 inch yes from you the electronics and I posted it pinned it above in the chat 10% off for yes. store credit. That's right. If they take that 10% and they get themselves the Sony Bravia 
Quad, yes, which is the updated version of the HTA9, which I think is great. Now, the updated version addresses the dropouts. They have a dual antenna system. That's right. So it makes sure it's always bouncing and checking which has the best feed. So I spoke to Sony at length and like, yeah, it took them a while to figure it out, but this is going to eliminate dropouts. Mm -hmm. If you love the HTA9, hold on to it. It works great. The yes. new one has that upgrade if a dropout is an issue for you. And number two, it also has slightly better room correction. It's more, yes. you know, it's more immersive. It gives you that vertical as well as bed level. So in addition to the 10%, take the 10% discount, applying it to the HT or HT, the quad, mm -hmm. that's 2,500. Yes. So take 10%, the price of the TV, apply it to that. And there's an additional $100 off. That's right. On either that or the Bravia 9. That's right. Uh, Bar 9. I'm getting confused. That's right. Personally, I like the Bar 9. I think the Bar 9 too. is great, but if you're getting the Bravia 9, go with the Quad because the Bravia 9, the speaker system is so good now that it will serve as a matched ch uh, center channel to mm -hmm. the Quads. That's right. But if you have a non-Sony TV, then the Bar 9 will probably work better because yeah. then it has it's right there in the center. Yeah. So most of you getting the Bravia 9, most likely, maybe we'll get the quad because a lot of you do like yeah. the quad. But either way, if you don't get the Sony soundbars, that 10% can be applied to other soundbars, yes, right? Yes, that's correct. I personally like the Samsung, so the QN990D or the 990C is still available. Apply 10% to that, and it could be really inexpensive to have a sound system. That's right. Now, let's talk about the release dates. Right. Are you able to share? Yes. So the week of May 20th for the Bravia 9. May 20th? I was told June, so this was even no, earlier than what I was told. the week of May 20th, for the very first allocation that's very limited in supply mm -hmm. and uh -huh. has a very high demand. <laughs> I'm getting so totally please well, act this quickly. This sun is shining on me. Wait one second. Let me, <laughs> okay. let me take down the, the, the crazy... Here we go. It's like, what? What's happening here? Oh, that's good. It's nuts. Okay. There we go. It's like, I'm getting washed out in real life. <laughs> so the Bravia 9 in 65-inch up to 85-inch uh, will launch the week of May 20th in very limited supply. And then thanks to FOMO and Brian, they very aggressively but kindly uh, persuaded me to do a very aggressive launch promotion that's exclusive to our company, which gifts our customers a 10% store credit and uh, for Sony accessories. Or just take the three year extended warranty oh. at no charge. So that's another thing is, let's say the 10%, the you don't want anything, right? You have everything right. you need, you have a sound system. That 10% can be applied to the three year extended warranty. Right. And, and that way you'll have a total of four years of warranty coverage for all parts and labor with in-home service oh, at no Sony. charge. Yep. And as we always say, it doesn't matter how much you pay for a TV, Bad things happen sometimes, it and, and it often happens after extended warranty. Now, more likely than not, the more expensive the TV, the less that happens, but it still happens. So right. for those of you who are risk averse, take the extended warranty. Yes. But so the last week of May then, right? Yes, is the when last the Bravia week of May. Right. 9 is shipping. That's right. So if you want to be on that pre-order list, lines are open, and Robert will probably be personally answering the phone. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Robert. Yeah, and real quickly, I know you've discussed no, no, the Bravia no. 9, but that is excuse me a tv and i never thought i would care about a direct lip tv but this tv gets very near oled blacks very deep rich blacks mm -hmm. incredible peak lumens capability uh, up to almost 4000 nits yeah it has the same new second generation of the backlight master drive that not only controls each little tiny mini LED, but it now controls the luminance level of each and every little mini LED. So not just the local dimming zone, but each little mini LED is controlled on and off or uh, luminance level. This TV is amazing, and it has an OLED look and feel to it with a much, much higher peak lumens and beautiful contrast control. This is the only mini LED that I've seen next to an OLED where yes. more often than not, they were similar. So when we're at yes. Sony, the Bravia 9 was next to the Bravia 8 yes. W OLED. 
And the next to that was the Bravia 7, which right. was formerly right. the X95L. That's right. And you could tell the 7 was not an OLED. Yes. But in most scenes, I couldn't tell the Bravia That's 9 right. Was it. it has so an that, OLED look to it yeah. with much, much higher peak lumens. Now, that's not just important for a bright room. That increases the contrast ratio, which gives you a more dynamic range and more depth and detail in the image. Okay. So it's not just about it helps you in a higher ambient light, which it does, but it gives you a higher contrast with more detail in the image. You have some questions? Well, some yeah. Chats? That's what I've been trying to fix. Leo's like, FOMO, you're totally washed out because the sun oh, it moved overhead you. and it literally struck me in the face. And yes. then I had the raw, I had this filter on it, which is actually a a shadow kind of filter yes. to, to help, ironically, to help disperse bright light, but when it hits at the wrong angle, the entire lens just yeah. flared out. So I had to remove that filter, and so now we're good. Thank you, Leo, for letting me know. And okay, so very I think good. That's, Thank you all. That's our Bravia Nine. Because I you know a lot of people want. Well, any discount will help. Well, I think that ten percent at least gets you the extended warranty. Yes. Okay, Brian. Thank you. We're back on track. Let's hit some super chats. This is interesting. Uh, Ahmad Doshan says, "I heard some people reporting issues with dropouts on the Q900D." So it sounds like that one connect box. Now the 900D has the new one connect box, but people are reporting dropouts. I wonder how long for the S before the S95 D dropout complaints start rolling in. Any truth in that? So Mod, I did go to the owner's forum to check out the S95 D, and it appears that people are happy with it. They don't notice the dropouts, and we're talking gaming, right? This that's where the dropouts the occur. Dropouts. I now on the 95 D, people are saying it's been addressed. However, people with a 900D are complaining of dropouts. So on the, the, about the dropouts I had with the 900D were... So you had the dropouts too. I did, but okay. they it's really hard to understand if you're using a PC. Um, for me, it was the 4K um, 240 that was having a handshake issue. No problems with the 8K. 8K didn't drop out once. I think I was here for three, four hours gaming mm -hmm. on it. No problems with it at all. But I'm guessing that the um, 240 is going to be a software thing if there's yes. an issue there. So I would say hold your horses on that. I didn't have any problems with 8K, but 4K 240. But I wonder if that's just too much processing happening. Um, but I didn't have any problems with either any of the QD OLEDs either. But we'll definitely look at it. The problem with 8K is so few people actually have these TVs that are that are um, on videos. I'm the only one really shooting 900D videos, so at least now. And we have one more, of course, our friend Sean. What's up, Sean? From India. We're actually on at a time that he can stay up for us. Yeah, Sean's like, I'm actually going to leave this message before I go to bed. <laughs> it's like 2 a.m. in the morning. Hey, phone one, Brian and Robert. Thanks for the shootout. Bigger thanks for giving the 900D when it was vanishing from storage so fast. Yeah, this 900D actually literally arrived two days ago because Robert called me and says, I'm sorry, the last two 900Ds are gone. Those are 85, by the way. And those are 85. So. He goes, but for some reason, they're sending me a 75. So let's put it up there, yeah. which worked out perfectly because you have a 75-inch 900D next to a 77-inch next to an 83-inch yeah. G4. And I yeah. wanted to put up the 83-inch G4 first, so you guys all know it actually exists. And second, relative sizes. Like, do you need it that extra that I extra mean, 16 percent right? so i would say in my opinion before we even start any comparisons if i'm ever going to buy an, a mini led versus an oled it needs to be bigger so i'm going to say right off the bat the 900d is at a disadvantage being the smallest one here mm -hmm. just because it needs to be bigger than 75 inches yeah or just bigger than if, if we're going to do a mini led and real, realistic guys they'd have to be larger yeah even in AK, um, but the 900d processing things like that we're gonna have to, something bigger would be more appropriate it just ends up you know, they're selling off the shelf. and um, But if I was ever to have someone say, even with a Bravia 9, people said, hey, would you choose a Bravia 9 only if it's equal or larger? Yeah. And that's the problem with 77-inch OLED FOMO versus 75. That's the only discrepancy. I'm trying to find our chat so I can talk in the chat. Yes. For equal or larger. Yeah. There you go. And let's go to the next one. Yeah, three... What's up, guys? We have 333 in the chat. Only 333, So right? we're just starting, so please give us a like. Christian, thank you for the super What's chat. Up, if the Bravi 9 had a 98-inch, I would pre-order it. And I predict if it had a 98-inch, it'd, it'd be about 15 grand. 15 grand, you think? 10 to 15 grand? At least. Uh, Robert, yes. Robert, what was the uh, Q90L at 97 inches? X90L, you mean? X90L. I think it was a, it's at 7,000 now, I think. Or Wendy. 7,000. What, what was it at launch? 
was it 10? Nine. 10? All right, so 10, so think about it. X90L was 10K at launch. If you're gonna do the Bravia 9 at 90, you're looking at at least 15K, I would imagine. And Sean has a really great comment because this is why we're here today. If by chance the Q900D with the best processor and AI cannot compete today, then Samsung has to rethink what's their flagship going to be, OLED or 8K? I feel Q900D should be on standard dynamic. We'll get there. And so and let's talk about what we're doing. So yeah. Right so, now is the only time you're going to see these in filmmaker mode. Yeah, mostly so, because it's it's to start off. So I'll I'll take it from this is what I think is I I very much disagree with filmmaker mode us showing them even on camera. It is and we've talked about this. It's the most accurate, especially with Spears and Munsell. However, to me, the processing on these TVs needs to be enabled. And I think if you're somebody who's looking at a mini LED, you need to see it outside of filmmaker mode. So, which is why in my videos, I always show you the different presets. I don't want to be stuck with filmmaker. Accuracy is a great thing. But yeah, if you want to see how a uh, mini LED is going to perform, it needs to be out of that. However, with these brighter OLEDs, Sean, um, the think about the, the micro contrast of an OLED mixed with 3000 nit OLEDs it's gonna appear brighter even if the Q900D is full blast. I don't care if you put a 10,000 nit TV up there, you're having micro contrast and bright OLEDs, Sean, so it's not gonna really blow them away in terms of brightness. It's just not going to. I can tell you that, that now. Yeah. But the fine detail and processing might not be visible on camera either. Speaking of reflections and glare, just make sure that we need to have almost set a little bed for himself right here, a little lay down. <laughs> but I mean, my point is, Sean, the point of thinking a mini LED is going to flat out beat an OLED is very difficult. I mean, just pound for pound, it's just not going not gonna to be easy. Just the technology doesn't lend itself to that. Now, if we had, say, 4,000 nit content with a Bravia 9 and we could actually show that, you might notice it, but... Right now, it's going to have a hard time. And what content are we going to use? So in a bright room, so we're maxing out the use case for people. And when I say bright, this is a normally bright room. We're not at the beach, right? Well, it feels like I'm getting a suntan here, but we're not at the beach, but it is bright enough that I think this is a realistic. So a lot of you will have it on Filmmaker, but maybe in static, or I'm sorry, active on the Samsung, and maybe dynamic tone mapping or in cinema home on the LG, which is what we're going to do today. Take it out of Filmmaker, get it into a accurate but brighter uh, mode. So on the set, on the LG, it would be Cinema Home, and then we'll play with dynamic tone mapping on yeah. and off. So you guys see what that's like. And on both the Samsungs, it'll be Filmmaker Active or Standard Active, and we'll play with that so that on the one hand, you guys see how bright it can get relative to each other. Because in a vacuum, when someone says it's really bright, that doesn't tell you much, right? I mean, yeah. anything can be bright by itself, yeah. but next to each other, then you can say, oh, okay. And then of course we'll have Vivid with or without AI genre. I, I know you guys have heard me say that I do enjoy the G4 in Vivid with AI genre on because they shift the white point a little bit and they make the skin tones to feel a bit more natural. But in sports, I don't think it matters. And so we'll have some sporting content. We yeah. have our Roku slash Crow. You have a Fire Stick? I do. Okay, so so we, have, we have to do. We won't be able to plug it into the splitter though. We'll have oh, to do a okay. different splitter. Uh, and so we'll do that. We'll have the PS5. So on the PS5, we'll have the S95B and the G4 mm -hmm. in various game modes and so forth. I have the Marine splitter. I can do the three. three yeah. One. Yeah. Oh, great. So we could maybe even plug in the 900D. But I think I figured out the splitters here. But regardless, yep, we'll be here all day. Yeah. And then some. And our goal is to work with you because a lot of you have questions where give us some time and we'll be able to figure it out with these three TVs here yeah. today. And some of you are asking, wait, what about maybe the C4, or the S90D, or even the Bravia 8, A80L? And the answer is they simply, first, they're not the flagship, so the best is not in those TVs. No. And second, as a result, they're not the brightest, meaning they're being held back. The S90D may share panels with the S95D, but it's not unleashed. Here, everything is unleashed. Yeah. And you're gonna have to take the good with the bad. Yes, the 95D has that matte coating, but it is what it is. Some of you may need it, some of you may not, but we're just here throwing it out there. And like right now I can tell you, the glare on the 900D is terrible. Now let me ask you this though, Fomo, quick, before we get into that, the S90C, S95C comparison. 95C. You really felt that the S90DC was close enough to the S95C. 
Oh, the S90D felt like it was a 95C. Yeah, but, it's but this less bright. But this year you feel the delta between the 95D and 90D is bigger. Way bigger because the 95, okay, so the 90D is the slightly dimmer version of the 95C, same tone mapping. But last year they were closer. Last year, they, at the 77 inch size, they were indistinguishable. So, and that's what, so I guess that's what I'm saying. When you pay attention to what we say year after year, some of you went right to the S90D this year thinking it would be the same differences. The same and they are not they close. Are not. So, so last year, they showed the same processor. So this is what, you know, this, yeah. this year they separated. Last yeah. year, just like LG, the, the C3 and the G3, same processor. Yeah. This year, G4, new processor. New processor. Yeah. This year, 95D. Better tone mapping system. And that's where these matchups, where the matte screen does hurt the S95D is if you don't like it, the G4 is the logical choice, not mm -hmm. the S90D, in my opinion. Yeah. If, if you're looking for the same pricing, the G4 would be the one you would choose. That's the problem. If they had one, um, they should have a coding one or the other. They should have had a choice. I think they would have been all set. I think so. Um, but I think that's... My point is falling back to the S90D is not as simple as it was last year. We recommended the S90C to almost everybody because of the dropouts. I don't recommend it this year for that reason. I don't think it's as close. So it's not as simple as, hey, you don't like the mat, run to the S90C or D mm -hmm. FOMO. So that's yeah. so important that we make that, that separation because you're going to get hurt this year. You're going to get an inferior TV that's not as bright. And the G4 is going to beat it badly. The S95D beats it badly. So it's kind of important for us to, to separate this year. And, but then we take back to what is it you watch? If it's just Colombo, go get the 90D. <laughs> if it's Colombo, <laughs> keep your C8. <laughs> uh, now, Jay Stuff has a great question mm -hmm. because I think this is something that you're going to be struggling with. He has the G4 HDI. HDMI input is bad. He's going to swap it. But before he swaps for another G4, is the Bravia 9 worth taking a look before holding on to the G4. So yeah, so Robert and I were having this conversation off camera, which I wish we could be mic'd up all the time because, you know, I'm ready to buy the G4 now because my use case is gaming micro contrast. I think the Bravia 9 is going to be next level mini LED. Do I think it's going to be able to compete with an OLED that's almost 3,000 nits? I don't think that's technologically capable. Uh, possible. Right. For movies, probably. If I was just straight movies, I think the Bravia 9 and the 900D would be the ones I'd choose at 85. But for what I'm using it for, I think micro contrast is still going to be king over any yeah. kind of, unless we're talking micro LED. But other than that, what are your thoughts on that? I sit close enough that's important to me. So, so seating distance also. Now you sit close. You now, like big, he likes I big TVs close. now and he has so, whatever. Getting larger and sitting at that 50 degree angle to 60 that I actually realized that wow, it actually looks even better. Because before I'd be at the 40 degree angle, so I have, you know, 65 inch TV, I'm maybe eight feet away. And I'm like, wait a minute, this entire year I've been telling people that 100 inches and seven and a half feet away is perfect. What does that mean for a 65 inch TV? So I'm seven feet away from my 65, and then I got my 77 S95C, and I'm seven feet away from that. I'm like, okay, this is it. I can live with seven feet from a 77. But then now, the micro contrast, the detail, it becomes more important. And, and that's why I immediately noticed the tone mapping difference between the 90D and the 95D, the 95C and the 95D. But as you step farther away, maybe that may be less of a difference maker, but it depends on how much of an enthusiast you are and how what, what eye for detail do you have? Like yeah. a lot of you guys, uh, I don't know if he's here, but he, one of our viewers bought an 83 inch, loved it until he noticed that the silver bezel on the G4 yeah. is a deal breaker for him because yeah. that bezel is a small lip that extends maybe one millimeter, yep. maybe two beyond the screen, but just enough that he noticed the reflection. Now I have the G4. I had to really squint to notice it, but... Wendy noticed it and she didn't like it. He noticed it. He says, I'm going to return this. And Woody's like, I can't blame you. And you know, she sold him the, the G4, right? Yeah. Because when you're paying that much, everything has to be perfect. But as you can see, it had nothing to do with Andrea Glare, nothing to do with anything other than that. I'm sorry, that bezel just annoys me. I cannot unsee the bezel. Well, to people me, get annoyed about the remote. So I'm not buying that because it's in the back of the remote. But for me, the bezel is just fine. Hey, I just want to add something on the bezel because that is, an, it is a, a good question. First of all, it's on the side of the bezel. You know, I thought you were going to say, I will personally take a black marker and... Well, <laughs> thank you. I am going to say that. 
And so the front is less than an eighth of an inch, and it's pure flat black. The edges have, a, have a, a, an aluminum look to them, a stainless steel look. We, for our customers, when requested, we will decorate them with black magic marker. Very quickly I, and easily. I like how he says it. We will decorate it for you with black magic marker. Yes. And, so no, that eliminates that problem completely. And of course, the high-end Sharpie. The high-end Sharpie, only <laughs> available in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do it everywhere. And, and if that is a solution, they will go ahead and do that. For yes. You. And that's what, the first thing I thought was that. And I see it here, but again, to me, it's not noticeable. It, it falls into the rest of the room. Yeah. But when you turn off the lights in a man cave, for some people, they just see that frame. Now, Brian. For me, it disappears completely. So yeah. your eye doesn't see it at all, at right? All. I'm actually right. on the G4 here, and I didn't notice it at all. Right, no, right. So, and so, I don't like it. Yeah. I didn't notice it at all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not keeping from buying it. Yeah, so. it, it's a non-issue. If you if it is an issue, just to color it with flat black. Mm -hmm. It's very quick and easy to do. But what's amazing, though, is the silver bezel for you guys watching on the 900D is literally invisible. So they did a good job with that. I know. It's amazing. It's I know. edge to edge. So even if that was the 85, you still wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're known for since the 900T, I believe. TS, I think, had the puzzle Mm-hmm. Very good. Jay, Steph, to your point about swapping out and waiting for the Bravia 9, what is your content? If your content is mostly just basic streaming TV shows, it's probably not going to be a huge difference between mm -hmm. the two. And if you add gaming to it, then the G4 mm -hmm. is definitely the gamer's choice. Yes. But if you're watching a lot of high impact, you want to get the brightest HDR accurate to the creator's intent, so we expect newer HDR content to come out of Sony Studios as well as maybe Prime. Yes. They're all taking advantage of the new reference monitor that is out in the wild now. The studios have it. So if that's what you're looking at because you want HDR impact, the Bravia 9 is worth taking a look. But again, it's your use case. Show with us yes. what that is and uh, you know, maybe you can help uh, steer you in the right direction. G4 versus Bravia 9 on the horizon. Yes. So at some point, I already yes. have a G four. So when yes. the Bravia nine comes, you know, yes. I'll friend, get you one. <laughs> a good friend will make sure. Yes. We we get it because to yes. me that's another keeper. It's a lot of you ask. I miss my chance of getting a Z nine D because a lot of people hold that Z nine D in their museum. They have a personal museum. They only turn it on a few hours a day to make sure it lasts their lifetime. We think this Z nine D or this Bravia nine yeah. is that generational TV from Sony yes. because you can see the love they put into it. Normally, what I say is follow the money. When a company puts so much money into one model, they put a lot of time and effort yes. into it. Now they're going to market the heck out of it. And I saw that with the Bravia nine. Whereas That's with right. LG, I was telling Robert, I don't know that QNED ninety nine. There's no love into that TV this year. I know it will be available, but. When they quietly slip it out, that means that there's going to be a lot of corners cut. It may not be the latest and greatest. And we will know, does it have the Alpha 11 uh, mm -hmm. latest gen processor? If mm -hmm. it doesn't, then it's just snuck out there. Oh, and also, A95L has the new calibrated Amazon Prime mode. That's correct. Uh, I did not know that they would do that, and so I'm thrilled. I'll be able to test that That's on the right. A95L. That's so, great. Yeah, but thank you again, Robert, for thank offering you. to personally hand draw, yes. redecorate your G4 yes. if that is a, a problem for you. Yes, and I'm still working on our uh, development of the website advancements. Uh, I have put up all the PDF spec sheets, oh, great. all the technical specs. So everything is being upgraded, which I'm working on now, but call me back as needed. Yeah, you have his number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. All right, Brian. <laughs> Okay, so there is a question. I remember FOMO or Brian earlier this year saying they heard LG is planning to expand all their production for larger sizes next year. So the answer is yes. They're planning to expand not so much larger sizes, but definitely expand production to lower the prices. And how large is the size they're expanding to to lower the prices? I know it's 83. 77? 83, 97? I don't know. I don't think so. I think the 77 and 83 is where they need to focus dropping prices because, yeah. for example, right now, the G4 at 83 inches, it's $1,000 more than the 85-inch Bravia 9. Yeah. Right there, a lot of people will look at the two, not being enthusiasts like you guys are, and they're like, <clears> wait, it's a $1,000 difference, and yet the Bravia 9 has the better audio, it's brighter, right? They'll look at the stuff that's important to them, and, you know, it's Sony's flagship, 
and they'll look at it at Best Buy. And of course, neither of them has the matte anti-glare, so they'll look very similar in a Best Buy, and they'll take the $1,000 less expensive TV. True. So that is what LG needs to focus on, is that G4 83-inch is amazing. That 6500 MSRP and the Bravia 9 MSRP is like 55, 5600. But in, but in fairness, the Bravia 9 is pretty. Wendy or Robert, what was the X95L at launch? Do we remember 85? I think it was 5299. 6299. 52. 52. So, what we're, I guess what I want to say too about the Bravia 9, what I think is interesting about the pricing, is in effect, it's taking place of the 4K flagship and the 8K flagship. So it's taking the 8K brightness and putting it into their 4K TV. So in theory, it should be much more expensive it um, be. than it is. The <clears throat> And Wendy had let me know that the G3 at 83 inches was the same price as the G4 at 83. Not that long ago, the A90J at 83 inches was $8,000. So just to put things in perspective. Yes. So yes. I, And I agree that the prices should be more competitive, but where do you think these guys are going to make any money? Not Value Electronics, but LG. They, they can't drop the price much further. Um, I'd like them to, obviously. But the point is, we have to be realistic on their, their top-of-the-line TV. It's going to be hard for them to drop it much further than that, considering, again, the A90J was three years ago, right? Three, four years ago, and it was eight grand, and no one said a word about that thing being expensive. So, But the Bravia price being that cheap for what I think is their clear flagship is very interesting. Uh, for those of you wondering what I'm doing, so many of you noticed that the Nahiri was struggling a little bit, mm -hmm. so I was going to give it an extra bit of love. I thought maybe active will help, but all I ended up doing was actually... Ugh. Yeah, um, active it, it doesn't it a do a lot more in filmmaker mode. Washed out, so I don't like it in active. We're gonna make sure the local, let's, just, let's check the, the, um, the local dimming now, make sure that's on max, because out of, it might not, oh, it is. Yeah, let's play with that. Filmmaker not at strength for the uh, for the mini LED. Yeah, it actually darkens it. Low does not help for sure. High is the best. Maybe contrast enhancer. Okay, I think I'm going to put contrast enhancer on low. It gives it a little bit more pop. Yeah. Because again, we're competing against OLED, so I'm trying to help those of you who have the 900D. What can I do to make it similar to OLED? Get that pop back. Yeah. Because ultimately, it's less about accuracy and more about the that jump. pop, right? The amazing is how punchy the G4 is, though. I can just tell you, sitting here, the G4 is off the charts. Yeah, movie modes. So back to what you were saying about the Bravia 9, I was very surprised. I think that's a very, very competitive price, considering it's almost the same price as last year's X95L, which was excellent, only came in one size. Where I think you guys are going to find the Bravia 9 being expensive as we're getting down to 65 inches, it's going to feel expensive for you guys because I think it, at that bottom, the prices have to be a little bit more competitive. You know, I'm going to have it on standard contrast enhancer high and tone mapping on static. Yeah. Helps it a little bit. I mean, it helps it a ton as far as its, it's punch. Yeah. Yeah, now, the, now is it's is the live up. color on? It looks like the live color is on the booster. No. Live color? The the color booster. Oh yeah, maybe. Let me see. I think those reds look a little a little too red. A little too Samsung-ish. <laughs> All right. So how do you guys feel at this time in the year as far as what you're seeing? Color booster is off. Color booster is off, okay. And I go. Now, where do you guys feel we are? We have Sony's announcement. We're still waiting for Hisense and TCL to release their TVs. But from the big three, where are you guys in terms of does what you saw, we only covered what we shot at the event, which was amazing to be at. But I guess my question, for one, I'm going to put this question to you too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had this, I have um, my interview with Rob Brennan will air on Monday that we did a few days ago. But do you feel like the fact that Sony doesn't have, the A95L was looming, being a QD OLED. Does the Bravia 9 being a mini LED, you think some people are gonna say, yeah, I'm good. Like for me, myself, mm -hmm. the G4 is the TV I know I want for my personal use case. 
I'm not going to wait for the Bravia 9 for that reason. There's no way the gaming features are going to come near it for me. So, um, and the micro contrast and bright, the fact that this thing is that bright, especially against the 900D, yeah. my answer is already answered from my personal. Where last year, I may still have hung back with the A95L in the darkness. Do you think that the lack of QDO that hurts Sony this year? It hurts Sony to the degree that you have people upgrading from the A80J, yep. A90J. They were gonna, they were gonna go to Sony this year, maybe because they want to stay with OLED, which mm -hmm. is completely what I'd normally tell people: is your OLED stay with OLED? Yeah. So Sony A9G, right? The older OLED owners. This is the year, and then they find out. Wait, the A95L is kind of last year's mid TV twenty three slash twenty twenty four, but they feel like. But that's not the best. The G4 is the best this year, but they don't want to go to the G4. Yeah. You know, they have their reasons. Yeah. So they're going to hold back because their TV's still working. Like, you know what? Now that we know they're skipping OLED this year, they will give it love next year. So we'll wait until next year because what's going to happen is if they get a G4 this year, you know, they're going to swallow their Sony love. And then next year, Sony comes out, like, ah, where do I yeah. do? Yeah. So for those of you waiting for the Sony flagship OLED, it's taking a break this year. They're giving the A95L some love. So it's a great discount, right? Black Friday, get the A95L. Still be yeah. TV. Yep. But if you want the best of the best, what, four months later, CES, you're going to hear about the QD OLED Generation 4 that will be on yeah. the Sony next yeah. year. And that's when people get excited again. But mini LED owners, you're good because this Bravia 9 is going to be... It's going to be an excellent It's going to sit there for at least two more years. I don't see Sony going back and touching it up next year other than no. software former updates. No. But the hardware is solid. And this is how long Sony holds on to their technology. Yeah. The X95K became the X95L, became the Bravia 7. Yep. So, so next... Three, yeah, your, your last year's flagship becomes your next tier down. So they're expecting the... Bravia 7 to eclipse the performance of the X95L last year. That's what I'm hearing from Software. them. Software and just uh, Features, its capabilities, yeah. which would be amazing. X95L, mm -hmm. I think, was their most refined LED to date. Even though we love the Z9D, guys, the Z9D, your memories are a little skewed. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Z9D too, but um, what you're going to see, though, I think is interesting, FOMO, is that the way they brought out the A95L later helped them. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to hurt them because it is yeah. a second gen uh, QD OLED. It, it's, gonna, it's not going to have the same punch as the newer TVs. Let, let's stop right here. Is this scene is in standard mode and the 900D is struggling? Oh, the glare is killing it. Can they see the glare? Let they can't see it, but we can. No, we can. Let me turn it up so you guys can see the glare that we're seeing on the 900D. It's actually a great shot of the S95D too because. The trade-off, you guys can't really see. Yeah, you can see the glare now. Okay. So this is perfect. Here, if I almost have a seat, I want to the show them. Yeah. So if you guys are watching the screen, yep. you're going to see. Go ahead. So I'm going to walk you through it real quick. If you look at the 900D, so this is what we typically recommend for a bright room, is you do have some pretty strong glare. Now, the S95D, the glare is gone. However, we have this whiteness of the screen. Can you see that foam on camera? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit lifted gray. So it's lifted it's gray. Lifted black, and it's a reflection that's lifting it. Exactly. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is... Which is more distracting? Which is more distracting? You seeing yourself, but you still see a little more contrast, or you see the entire image, it's just going to be paler. That's the trade-off. Now, I don't love the way the S95D looks here, but the key for what Samsung is trying to say is the image is all still there, right, FOMO? Yep. It just looks very matte right now. Now, the better comparison is the G. Can we see the G4? I can. Reflections? Yeah. So the G4 here, reflections are much worse. I, I can see people outside the window. Let yeah. Me, might so, that. Let me walk over here so they can yeah. see. Let me see if it's on camera. Hold on. Can you see me, Brian? Yeah, can you see FOMO waving guys in the uh, image? Yeah, so you can see him in the corner. All right. Now, what I saw at Samsung was, which do you prefer? To lose none of the contrast or sharpness and lose some of the image because you see yourself or keep the entire image and lose the, mic the contrast ratio? Yeah, yeah there is so. a drop in, a touch of drop in contrast, very, a, a minor drop in the colors is not as, as a pop, the trade-off is you don't get that pop that the G4 has, yep. but 
But then if you your see room is like this, but you see it's, it's a worthy trade off. Yeah. So you would see, so you like, so if you're watching sports or whatever, the whole image is visible where you could keep your contrast ratio and lose half the image and see yourself eating popcorn. Now, which Brian. isn't always attractive when you're sitting there with your belly. <laughs> you got cheese all over you. But I think it's a good way to really show um, what the trade off really is. In a dark room, which we're going to be here long enough, you're going to see that actually, is, but this is the realistic um, use case. But you can actually see the cars outside on the G4. Now, yeah. for me, guys, personally, I don't care. I watch OLEDs in a bright room all the time. Um, it wasn't until I was editing the S95D, I'm like, damn, I can actually see myself editing yeah. in the video. <laughs> Question for you. What's up, buddy? I want to know how soon Brian will be leaving OLED for the Bravia 9. Never. Never. I already told you no. Save your five bucks. Yeah. I, think, well, I think the Bravia, I'll tell you this, and I said this in my video on FOMO. You were sitting next to me, and Robert, I think, saw the same. We were in different groups, but we saw Venom. Um, it was him riding a motorcycle, and the sparks were hitting him, mm -hmm. right? It was these flashes of white. That HDR impact is real. 4,000 nit grade, that was, wasn't that blinding? I mean, that was something you remember, because we were watching it on the, the Bravia 9, uh, the, the, the subwoofer, not subwoofer, I'm sorry, the sound bar. Sounded great, but I'm telling you, that brightness was impactful. Yeah. That's something that these three, or not these three, these two can't do. And I would argue the 900D is not going to be bright enough to do it either. Anyway, so... Josh, AK, says, these guys took seven hours adjusting TV to make the G4 look better. Honestly, I was trying to adjust the TV to make the S95D look better. <laughs> Robert, got, Robert got two semi-trucks of double LEDs. You better, I wish he had that. <laughs> so it says the G4 has already me, been gone. Trust me when I say I don't need to do much to make the G4 look better. No. But, but you're right. I had to adjust it to make sure that had I placed it right under the sunlight, you couldn't see anything. You would just see us. All the TVs would be just washed out. So it would just be us TVs, sitting here. Yeah, TVs don't do well <laughs> in direct sunlight. No. All of them, right? But as far as a, we make no bones about it, the G4 is in the lead, period. Yeah. Yeah. The S95D is a use case TV. It, it is performing well, but it would be arguably a step behind for enthusiasts. But I would choose it over the S95C, yeah. but I would not choose it over the G4 given my situation. However, if it was in my parents' living room, I'd take the S95D. I don't and what do you think about there. this? Let's just say FOMO, let's take the matte screen out of it. Mm -hmm. Would that, you think that would change your mind or you think that has no effect considering no, that the no G4 effect, is... Because the G4 is... Is that much mapping, of a beast? Yeah. It's a little bit... Okay, it's not just told me, this, the motion. So you guys saw my motion testing. I thought the motion was great on the G4. I really liked that. And Personally, I don't like the one connect box. So the one yes. connect box adds an extra what we call point. a point of failure. Point of failure yeah. And you know, and I don't game to the point where I'm gonna see dropouts, but still, it's those little things that down the line, if I give it to my son and he games a lot, he's gonna complain to me, Dad, why don't you give me a TV with dropouts, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <he's> like, <laughs> so real quick guys, we have five hundred and thirty in the chat. How did that happen? So let's uh, give some love. Please hit like. And, and one of them is from India. Sean, thank you for hanging on. Sean. Is AI on the Q900D, is it on? I'm, I'll, I'll check right now. I see the 900D trying to control the brightness. Is it more because of AI? Is it filmmaker mode? OLEDs being brighter? How much time can they sustain the bright room in long hours of sports? So I'll tell you right now, the G4, I ran it with the S95D. And the G4 never, and, th and they were both in vivid and dynamic mode. Both preserve their brightness, but I will tell you that the Samsung is more sensitive to static logos. So when there is a static logo, the Samsung, if it thinks it's a static logo, it'll still dim. But most of the time, it preserved it like hockey games. I didn't see it drop at all. But then certain sporting content where I guess they just didn't move as much, it would dim a little bit. The G4, no movement at all. It stayed bright the entire time. And so, and, and the A95L also, I think maybe for more updates, helped it keep up. It would be just behind the S95D. Yeah. So for sure. I compared them. They were, because yeah. you can make the S, you can make the S95D look just like the A95L and Filmmaker and Movie. When you want it to pull away, it, it pulls away significantly. And I know Sean loves watching sports. Sean, normally, we, we talked about this, we recommend mini led because it's so bright in a yeah. bright room for hours of sports yeah, no, no, uh, i can ABS comfortably off. recommend the 83 inch mla g4 now i know you need the 85 inch size that's why we haven't been doing mla for you with the g3 because it stops yeah. at 77 yeah but 83 inch 
That MLA G4, Sean, I think you'll love it. And uh, uniformity is consistently better than LCDs, just generally speaking. So for Bright Room Sports, I, I really think that will do the trick. Somebody now. puts out there like, they, we're selling G4 skies. We don't need to sell them. They're oh. gone. <laughs> so there's no shilling happen. Who are we shilling for today, baby? Got, oh, oh, what's up, LG? What's up, baby? <laughs> you got an LG hat on? You, you know that. <laughs> I don't know how many times LG is afraid of watching my videos because it feels like I'm always attacking them. Yeah, we go after them. Because I go after LG very hard for uniformity. Like my G3 was just terrible banding, vertical banding. This year it's slightly better. It's, if you guys are sensitive to gray, and so, well, actually, let's talk about the, the bad things about LG. I mean, I, I don't want this to be a love fest for the G4. The G4 does some great things. It's the G3, but refined. But ultimately, it still shares some issues with the G3. So WRGB OLED. Yeah. Yes. WRGB OLED generally, G3, G4, they will not have the same level of uniformity consistency as the A95L and the S95D. The G4 right now, I'm still, we're going to play with AI Picture Pro. I don't think it makes that huge of a difference. To clean it up, you mean? Well, I really don't know what it does. It's not to clean it up. It's to make it like extra clear. To yeah, yeah, to give you punchier. I haven't seen it really working, like working, working. I thought it looked normal. So you know, we'll play it, try playing with that again today. And ultimately, though, color luminance on the G4 is going to fall behind the QD OLED S95D. So if you guys are paying attention on the stream, there are some bright areas where the G4 doesn't seem to have as much color, but the brightness is the same. It's very subtle though. You have to be looking for it, but yeah. that's where it falls short. And that's why many enthusiasts will not get the G4 because they know they're losing color. Like up to 500 nits, they all look the same. But when you start getting to 800 so nits, start a thousand, a bit. 2000, right? That bright yellow becomes bright white. And for most people, ah, oh, it's close enough, right? Yellow, white, it's all the same to me. But for those who are like very critical and you wanna calibrate it to the nth degree, Quantum you cannot down. calibrate the colors back in, right? No amount of, of extra saturation. I mean, they just cannot hit that brightness. So the case is what, is, what is it you want? Like gaming, do you really need that extra yellow luminance? Or don't you? The bright white on the G4 is brighter, but it's whiter, right? It's more of a white. Yeah. So it's all preference. And Brian, he's a cutie OLED man. And then this year, oh, dude. G4. Well, when I, but when I gamed on the G4, guys, when you guys that watch my video, Dead Space, those lights popping, when I went home and ran it on the C1, it was night and day. And I love the C1. So that's what made me know I need to make the switch myself because I know I'm leaving something on the table now in terms of peak brightness. Yeah. Um, where anything else, even the G3 never really attracted me, but the G4 certainly does. Um, as far as the banding, no, LG's banding is not better than Samsung's. It's QD OLED versus WRGB OLED. That's yeah. the challenge. So the, Sony would have banding too. They do too. Yeah. yeah. The Sony with the Master Series, maybe they have a better bin rate. Um, but as far as the technology, I have, have you seen any vertical banding much in QD OLEDs, period? That's I not a screen uniformity I issue. haven't seen it, but viewers have shared. So it's panel yeah. lottery. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I haven't, and all the ones I've seen probably... At Value Electronics, between the A95, the A95K, the S90, probably 12 of them, I haven't had any issues gaming on any of them with banding. Where on a WRGB OLED, when you pan um, in you certain will, games, you will see lines all over the screen. That's part of the content too, though, unfortunately. Well, speaking of that, I actually specifically asked Dwayne Davis. He was here yesterday, of course, calibrating the G4, the 83 inch, and he has his own. And I was asking, hey, let's talk about banding. What are your thoughts? Have they improved? And he felt that, because he's already started calibrating a bunch of G4s, slight improvement, but the 83 inch, to your point, Seek, thank you for the super chat, is the panel quality of the 83 inch G4 as good as the smaller sizes? For example, vertical banding, any downsize to larger size? And the answer is, you will still get more DSE and, and banding on the 83 inch. And in gaming, you will see it, but does it bother you? Is it that bad is another question. But the same goes for mini LED. So when we talk about these 100 inch TVs that we throw out, the DFC is gonna be more on larger TVs anyway. And I'm going to check for the AI. On the Samsung? On the Samsung 100D to see if it's yeah. on. Small Do you want to add anything, Robert? Uh, no, but you want me to just close these over here now? Um. Do you, you want to bring it a little darker in here? Yeah, yeah, we can close the one in front of you. Okay. Because I think people get the idea that in a bright room, you're going to see reflected. They, I think they want to see... If the upscaling is on? Uh, let me find... Where, where did that Samsung remote go? Oh, I have it plugged in behind me. 
I think. Is it yeah, it's right there. It's going to control them both, though. Oh, no, no. The other, mo the big remote. The factory one? Yeah. The service menu. Oh, here it is. Okay. So we have one of the um, old school service remotes from Samsung. It's got actual input buttons that, because, you know, it's not, you're not double tapping or hitting home. Yeah, you only have the uh, S90 or Q1900. Yeah, the intelligent mode is off. Adaptive picture is off. So hey, let's just turn it on at this point. What do you have to lose, right? We'll turn off the sound stuff. It does pump everything up though. Okay, so let's see if this helps anything. So it was off this whole time, Sean? Which we wanted it off, Sean, because honestly, we're, we're looking to do these in, right, well, that's, that was in standard. Actually got a little bit brighter. It actually changed the color too. It did look how, how bright the blues are. Look, okay, let's leave it on. I think intelligent mode wants to give me better color, yeah, more blue. We're gonna turn the exposure down a little bit too in a minute. Picture mode, so it's called optimized picture mode now, Brian. Oh, they changed it. Yeah. What was it? It was called AI, it was called upscaler before, wasn't it? Yeah, they call it optimized picture. And, and let's give it that only because it's struggling hard. High and standard do not change much. For a local dimming? Yeah, local dimming. And we'll, we'll keep it on active. See what it does on, st on static though, FOMO. See if it does, because you see, okay. if it'd be nice to see if you can keep the optimized and change the tone mapping. I don't hate that though. Uh, better Ooh. contrast, deeper blacks and static. Active makes everything a little bit brighter, but washed out. So I think. For Sean, I'd leave it on active just to show up. But Robert, what do you think? Real quick, Robert, look at the active and static on optimized picture mode. The static is actually pretty beautiful. If you can see the depth back in the trees. Yeah, there's more blacks, there's deeper blacks. Yeah. But if you're in a bright room. But I think if, if Sean and you guys want to see the punch, yeah. active is good. But it's definitely working. Yeah. Now, Fulham, if we were to drop the resolution on Spears and Monsel, would that, that won't really trick the upscaling, will it? We have to have a, a low bit rate disc. I, I, I can see that's the thing. It's not low bit rate, it's high bit rate. I'm not gonna put color booster. It's on not color. resolution, it's, um, it's the bit rate. Yeah, and I cannot trick bit rate. The only yeah. one with bad bit rate consistently is YouTube TV. So yeah, you can really see the issue right here. Right here. What are you saying, to over, uh, over process? I'm gonna have to put it on, on static. static. Cause that, you're, you're missing a lot of that detail. And in no, sports, the problem would be you're not be able, you won't be able to distinguish. You're like, who am I watching? Words and text <laughs> as well. Let's see if it comes back. Oh wait. Oh my God! Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Static. Wow. So, wow. It, it, that, that removed all of it. But I still like the blues now. Let's lower the exposure foam so they can see it. So and I'll run it past them. So when we change the tone mapping. It was brighter, but we did lose the detail completely. That was on the tree over here. We lost it completely. But now the blues are a lot deeper. Now, yep. obviously, this is, uh, yep. they call it optimized, but the clouds are gone. If you notice, Brian, like, what happened to the white clouds? Wow, okay, so yeah, can you pause it? Yeah. Let's pause that. that that's actually Wow, good okay. That's, um... Wow. <laughs> so what we're seeing quickly is that we, now the clouds are present here. Mm -hmm. It's not even that they're just gone. What we have now is FOMO, you have like a static almost lettering happening around it. So you can see where the processing is working, but it's actually created an outline. FOMO, check this out, if you get it, come check it out. It's not that they're gone, they're there, but look what it's oh, doing. Oh wow, that's artifacts right there. But I mean, it's, it's a... I mean, look at that cloud. They, yeah. they purposely eliminated the cloud. But it left behind. Look what it left behind. Yeah. You see the outline? Let me... So you know what it's doing? I'll tell you right now what it's doing. You can see it. So look at the S95D. And look at the... See how it's trying to put this into the background? It's actually trying to blur out the background to show you more detail in the front. That's what it's doing. Let's turn off optimized mode because a lot of people will see this and say, you know what? No bueno. 
No, but I think what it's trying to, guys, what it's trying to do is trying to give you that foreground, background um, yeah. fade out. Oh, here we go. Intelligent processing. I almost lost it. Okay, so intelligent mode settings. I'll, I'll toggle it off. Clouds are back. Yep. Yeah. Good. Now see if you can change this down to another another strength. I, oh, it's just eye comfort. Let's start off. Okay, so we'll take, well, but then what does intelligent mode do? But let's, let's keep intelligent mode on, but turn but, but off. Sam the still, but the S95D has an intelligent mode too. Are you sure that's what it is? Yeah. The intelligent mode is off on the S95D. So it was definitely trying to make what was in the, the foreground more prominent. But instead of giving you a depth of field, it was. But you know what, FOMO, it's still, it's still here. Yeah. Well, that's also possibly on the S95D, too. I think it's a source. It's not. It's yeah, a it source. Is. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's a source artifact. Oh, wow. They all have it, right? Yeah. So, you know what? Other than, so, so, let's take that back. Other than removing the clouds, the artifacting is on all of them. It's just. Yeah. But that's interesting. They completely removed the clouds. Yeah. It's like, like you don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> Director's intent. Director's intent. Them, <laughs> in them clouds, baby. Where did my grandmother go? <laughs> I wanted to make it Hawaii. Where's her gray hair? She looks bald. <laughs> These are in Wyoming. Nah, we're doing Maui, baby. We're doing Maui. <laughs> oh, the things you learn. You guys are great. Okay, hey, Ahmad, thank you for the super chat. So, Bravia now for movie room and G4 for living multiple purpose rooms. I, I, I'd say the G4, you just layer on gaming. So, the Bravia 9 and the G4, they are great for all sorts of entertainment content consumption. But when you go to lighting situations, the G4 is actually very bright. Even if the Bravia 9 was brighter, it's it brighter for HDR impact. But the G4 is very bright. So I wouldn't yeah. choose the Bravia 9 just because, quote unquote, it's brighter. It, it may not be that much brighter. Now, that's my guess. We'll yeah. see, because I really want to see how the Bravia 9 goes against the G4. So I guess the question for you is, if it's a true, well, it's pretty awesome, but even though we have it dark in here, guys, the sun is passing. So you're actually almost seeing darkroom performance on them now. That's what's so cool about the store, is mm -hmm. the sun is just gone for a minute. But my question for you, Fomo, even if it is a true 4,000 nits, mm -hmm. Would you rather have 4,000 nits mini LED or 3,000 nit micro contrast on an OLED? Which you think would appear brighter? The OLED's infinite contrast will appear brighter. With a 3,000 nit. With a 3,000 nit. And, and, and to be fair, G4 doesn't hit 3,000 nits. That was, in theory, at yeah. LG display. Yeah. I think people measuring it, it's a little bit brighter than the G3, but not 1,000 nits no. brighter than G3. So it's noticeably brighter, but when I say noticeably, I have to put in the right content. Uh, otherwise, I've been telling people, get the G3. If you're not like needing that last 0.5% of performance that you will only see either in super bright hockey sports or Spears and Munsell. Right. Short of that, I just, be need, I just need that new processor. I need That's a new processor, and, and I need well, the cinematic. It's the new processor, and also the 83 inch now goes up to MLA. Yes, yeah, so that right. is the reason. The 83 and, inch and MLA. Personally, I like mm -hmm. I like the new filmmaker mode, even though I don't like it. I like having it in Dolby Vision. I like the new yes. UI. Yes, I do too. Um, yes, thank those you. little things to me make a difference, and 144 is a game changer for me. I'm fighting for everything. Absolutely. Frame, so. Yeah. I didn't think it was a big deal, but that's where I think Sony's going to struggle is, again, not having 144 puts them a little farther back. Mm -hmm. Except this year, Sony does have the three presets for gaming the way the A95L did. Correct. So now, Robert, jump in. And Sean has a great question about 8K. I feel 8K has to be 85 inches to really shine. Am I right? Sean, how far are you sitting from the 85 inches? So right. if you're sitting seven feet from the 85 inch, which is what I would do, yeah. Yes. Now you're close enough to appreciate the dip pixel detail. But if you're 12 feet away from 85 inch, I honestly don't think you should go 8K unless in Samsung's case, 8K has better processing. Right. But from 12 feet away from 85 inch, it's going to look very similar, identical, everything else being the same. Right. But Samsung didn't do that. They actually gave the 900D better processing. But yeah, for you, Sean, if you're sitting seven feet away, eight feet away, you may notice a difference for sure, say. right? Yes. Now, speaking of 8K, LG does have an 8K TV mm -hmm. that is awesome, but it's the 77 inch right. OLED Z3 with MLA. Yes. They yes. are not bringing over the 88 inch no. though. Well, so those of you- the 86 inch QNET. 
Well, we've been talking yes. about that. It yes, it is. It's right behind, right there. That, that's the, right but that's <laughs> not the, that's the 90T, Brian. Or oh, that's the, the 90T. The 86T. No, that's the 86T or 89T. That's not the 8K unit. No. It's coming oh, later. That's l much later, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and we know the QNED. Where's the phone call, baby? He's, phone he's, he's all excited. But I was like, yes! So, it. yeah, Sean, sit closer to your 85 inch 8K. Yes. You'll be able to appreciate the detail. I mean, that's why yes. you got it. Otherwise, some of that's lost. And Chris has a super chat. Thank you for that. Percent brighter is color luminous on the S S95D versus G4. So, it's not even percentage, it's all or nothing. Above a certain brightness on the G4, you will only get white, especially if it's a blue. If it's mm -hmm. a light blue, mm -hmm. above a certain brightness, it'll just be white. That's right. Or it'll be a lot dimmer, right? You have to make your choice with the G4. Bright white, but the right luminance, or dimmer, you know, lesser luminance, but the blue is there. On the QD OLED, you will get both brighter blue, but you know, you have to find the scene. You define the situation, maybe in gaming, more often than not, you mm -hmm. do that in gaming because HDR gaming yes. is very specific with color and brightness. So it's something that, what is important to you, Chris? There's no right answer. Some people are like, I just want that impact. Bright white, G4 is fine. But you're right. There is a color luminance improvement with the S95D, but it's very content specific. Like I have to pause in scenes to demonstrate it, but in a normal scene move, you will probably not notice it. But again, it's there. You know, it's why enthusiasts pay the big bucks. Good question. And James asks, A11 processor versus Sony's XR Clear. That's so yes, that yeah, is. That's, that's that's a good question. We will have that. I will. I'm, I'm still studying the G4 versus the A95L, but we'll also do it against the Bravia 9. Right now, I'm talking to LG directly, trying to understand how AI Picture Pro works. So quick mm -hmm. update about AI Picture Pro. It is working with copyright content. What they told me is mm -hmm. that notice is wrong. <laughs> I know. In a firmware yeah. update, they need to eliminate the notice where it says, uh, will not work with copyright content. So let me show you guys real quick what I'm talking about when we're on it. So you, you guys getting the G4, right? You suddenly want this amazing experience. And then, whoops, and then you go down to the setting that enables you to turn on AI Picture Pro. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. AI service. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, okay. while FOMO switches that, I want to have a quick observation. Since we've sat down, Sony has completely hijacked the conversation over the S95D might as well not even exist. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yes. It's interesting how QD OLED was the hot thing, but now that Sony's announced it, everyone wants to know how the Bravia 9... Against the G4. Against the G4. Well, because right. we've already that's answered right. the S95D. But, but, but the point it's been is, cast the, S95 aside. is D, the S95D, Robert, is right here. Yes. It's like, I'm right here. I'm even in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, cool. Uh, I have a new girlfriend. Can you bring her in anymore? <laughs> She's on the bench. Like, Just waiting to get off the bus. I'm even in the center. I'm in the center. Yeah. I mean, it's awesome, but it just shows you the power that Sony has. Um, even a mini LED, Robert, people want to know how it's going to compare against the top of the line G4. That's right. So, I mean, that's... A and, and it's $1,000 cheaper. You would think, oh, oh it's not a real flagship. No, it doesn't awesome. matter. So, as you guys can see, AI Picture Pro, when you activate it, it says, this feature is not supported on copy protected content. So, apparently, that notice is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to update it. Actually, I told LG, he went back. And checked, he goes, oh, yeah, that shouldn't be there. That's right. So in the next firmware update, and this yes. is why we talked yes. to OG, is they didn't even know that. That's right. Because I was like, wait, you promised me I got some magic happening with streaming content. He goes, no, the magic is still happening. It's just the notice is wrong. So uh -huh. I'm going to have to check out what that means. And everything else will stay off. I like AI genre selection. I'll show you guys how that works with Vivid Mode later. But yeah, so we're going to have it on real quick, just so you guys can see if it does anything. And it works with streaming content now. So if you want that on the sun, the cloud mode of the way, it just got hit <laughs> by the sun again. <laughs> so yes, good question, James. Thank you for that. Yes. Max Overdrive asks, thank you for the super chat. I commented on FOMO's channel about a $1,000 gap from G4 to the Bravia 9. Yes, you did. That's you right. reminded me of that. But my thought when I saw price on Sony's site for Bravia 9 was, wow, that's cheap. It is. Okay. It is for what the TV is, yes. You guys don't understand. Now, 
Max appreciates how Sony prices things. That's why he said it's why it's cheap. Sony normally would have priced this at seven to eight thousand, which know. is what I predicted. I but consistently, they've come back and like, yeah, maybe this Sony tax is a bit too much. Yeah. So for those wondering, is that fifty six hundred dollars a good deal? Relative to the G4, definitely. Yes. But more importantly, relative relative to Sony's past, the eighty five inch X and ninety five K was over six thousand dollars. I know. So this is five hundred dollars cheaper yeah. at launch after inflation too. I mean, yeah. Right. If you take inflation, it should be over seven thousand practically. Yeah. So Sony is working hard to bring that MSRP down. Now maybe they the are. deals might not be as they good, are. but you know, Sony are. being Sony. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for those considering the nine and the G4, maybe that nine hundred dollar thousand dollar difference yeah. may swing the difference, and then you can apply the credit and That's the money right. saved to a brand new soundbar. Yeah. And by the way, Sony's engineers said to me, "Tell me." What don't you like? What can we do better on the Bravia 9? I said, nothing. The only thing that's wrong with the Bravia 9 is you priced it too low. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, don't, don't, get, don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> People are going to call. They're like, that is a world-class TV at a very affordable price. Yeah. And we have a great super chat from Leo. Today is my grandma's 98th birthday. Beautiful. Well, well, for birthday her. party What's happening. Her name? What's her name? Everyone tell her happy birthday. She's the best. Love you, Grandma. Yeah, give oh, us her name. Happy birthday. Name? Name? Happy birthday to you. Birthday to yeah. you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Leo's Grandma. Leo's grandma. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Hopefully Yay. she's in Phoenix with you. Thank you. And Sean. Follow-up question. Do you feel that the Bravia 9 is a Z9K with the XR processor? Yes. So the Z9K has always been that, or the Z, the, the Sony Z series has always been that flagship. So they haven't given the Z series any love since the Z9K. They focused all on developing this Bravia 9. And now that it's out, the Bravia 9 is that flagship yeah. LCD TV. It encompasses them both. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the XR processor is the latest and greatest. The Z9K yes. is now, what, over two years old? Yeah. Yeah, that's long in the tooth for a processor. And you know what Sony's doing with the whole Amazon Prime calibrated yeah. mode? If the Z9K doesn't get it, that means its processor is just not worthy. That's a so, cool feature, actually, genre. Choosing. I like AI I like genre that. on the LG. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for that. And Peak Matic Dreamer. Thank you for the super chat. In the market for a TV, ideally, Sony bundle with a new sound bar, but I see it's in pounds. I don't know if Robert could send it to the UK. I'm sorry not. Do I go for an A95L or the new Bravia 9? A mixed <laughs> usage, bright room. So both TVs are excellent. And I think the A95L is okay in a bright room, but the Bravia 9 is the HDR impact. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm gonna say Bravia 9, mm -hmm. okay? In a brighter room, that infinite mm -hmm. contrast, yes. it's, it's muted. In a dark room, all that infinite contrast, you, you get to max out what you're paying for. You get your money's worth of the infinite contrast. Yes. In a brighter room, the ambient light reduces your perception of the infinite contrast, which lowers the playing field to the Bravia 9's level. And suddenly the Bravia 9 looks really good, and more importantly, 85 inches. So if 85 inches is where you play, N85 L stops at 77. So go with the 85 inch Bravia 9. You get the size, the HDR impact, and the contrast is close enough in a bright room. I think you'll be okay. Uh, but the A95L also, because it's a thin OLED using mm -hmm. the acoustic surface, the 9 has a better audio system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 75 inch versus 77. The 9 has a significantly better, yeah. louder, fuller audio system. So I would go with the Bravia 9 in your case because of your mixed usage bright room. I think yeah. you'll like it. The Bravia 9 has exceptional TV audio built in. I, I never thought I would ever say that about a TV. That's why it's so heavy. And the TV audio is exceptional. It, it is has actually good. has Dolby Atmos built in, and it really is Dolby Atmos. Has up firing, wide firing, mm -hmm. subwoofer is built in. It's it's N normally do I don't like job. using the Sony TVs as a center channel. Right. This one's good. <laughs> this one is good because it's not a good match. The yeah. like my HTA9 had better audio quality than my A95K. So I had to turn off that center channel. It was just too yeah. hot. The on, the on the other hand, the A95, my, the Bravia 9 was matched, timbre matched to yes. both the quad and the bar nine. And yes. so ideally the quad, right? You have timbre matched 
Bravia 9 with the yes. quads. So you have the ultimate surround system that's world and the class. center channel. That's right. world class. And then you got a subwoofer SW5 yeah. and suddenly you right. have a pretty good system. Right. Very There's impressive. one problem if you buy all of that. You'll never want to leave your house again. It's incredible. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's the new generation. No one ever wants to leave the house anymore. <laughs> so guys, come on. Yes. Why don't you guys do a workbook? Oh, oh, wait, wait. Here, here, Brian. You guys do a no, no, no. Go ahead. So... I want Robert and FOMO both to just take a quick sweep. Okay. Come up to the TVs. We're paused. We were paused. I don't know what happened to oh, it. Let me pause it. Let's go back to that. We can stay here if you want. No, no, no. Let's go back. Uh, which scene? Just the one with the alligator or crocodile. Oh, I love that alligator. Yeah, National Great Geographic. Yeah, it's, it's actually uh, an Australian uh, switchback. So pause it here. And then I we want take out. And we take out and this. Take the menu out. Uh -huh. So we have our AI processing with well, the 900D, correct? And so the Niger D has AI processing on. Okay. So Correct. if you step back and when you want to look at the detail between all three, you have to get in front of all three. Yeah. So, you know, this is tough call. but when you stop at each one, I want you all, all of us to do it. Stop at each one, look at it. Now, so G4 has the AI Picture Pro on. Yep, that's fine. You can leave it on. Oh, you know what? Let's turn on the S95D's AI. Uh, yeah, let's, let's make it a fair. Yeah. Yep. So let's turn on the S95D, whatever the AI does. So the S95D, we'll see. Which is their um, optimized. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I get this wrong every it's single time. A fair playing field here. So what I want to try to show you, at least we can't show you up close, but I want to talk about where the upscaling of the 900D helps it, but can hurt it. Mm -hmm. Because we're gonna be paused, and you're gonna see the processing is actually doing a lot. Yeah. The question is, when it's paused, you're gonna see what it does. Whether you like it or not is the question. I think a lot of you may like it more, but yeah, if you look I at the, better, so if you look at the AI upscaling on the, G, G4. on the G4, yeah. FOMO, look at the detail when you get a okay, chance. One second, let me adjust the lighting real quick on this. Exposure. Now you guys aren't gonna be able to see it on the 900D because it's gonna look a little paler because it's too bright. But if you look at the teeth yeah. on the crocodile, you'll see them differently on the 900D FOMO. I'll come over, I'm gonna show you FOMO. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Okay. So as we're going through the, the two, G4 scales, take a good look at all of them. You're right. All right, the teeth, everything. Everything pops a little more. But now okay. when you come over to the 900D, you can almost see where it's over upscaling the teeth. Mm. But from further back, I think on an older film, that's where you're seeing that extra. Remember the words popping out? We did yeah. that on the show. So it looks false up close, but you can see where they're trying to add extra detail. It's not really there. Yeah. You're right. The but you, edge, might, but you may like it. It's giving yeah. you more edge enhancement. Mm -hmm. It's but, almost as if the alligator is coming out of the foreground. Yes. So I think so. It's a, I think for you guys watching, it's a plus and minus. When FOMO and I saw this at CES, there was text up. We don't have anything right, like right here. The yellow, yeah. right? It's popping yeah. the and little the teeth, highlights. And you and see here, the teeth. It's pixel to pixel matching. Yeah. Which is blurred, obviously. But you can see how in some cases you'd like this, or it might be too false for you. But you can see it's actually doing what, it, what it, it's, it's making a more 3D image and it's blurring the back a little bit. You can see we lose a little detail in the background FOMO. But it's really popping. The color saturation is better. I mean, we're, I think we're in a brighter preset FOMO. What are we in? We're in, are we in standard? Uh, they're in Just, only the 900 Ds in standard, so I believe. Let's, let's, I believe the S95D is in filmmaker mode, static oh, still. Okay. So let's that's, that's some of the differences. So, good dynamic. Well, I think filmmaker mode would be better. But the processing is still on. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. bringing back some of the contrast or some of the yes. darkness. Well, that's I don't. Just got a little better. But you see, the processing is still wanting to edge it out more. Given, and just uh, so you guys know, it is in 10,000 nit content. So the TVs are being pushed to their tone mapping ceiling. You know, 2,000 maybe? Well, well you want it 10,000 or two. If you go to two, then it'll look more, even more similar. But well, yeah, so let me, let me 10, go. 10,000 doesn't blow out the 900D. Let's get to no, it doesn't. Yeah, the 900D is doing a good job tone mapping. 
But it's just an indication of what we're looking at as far as that extra processing on older content, I think would be a benefit. Um, but it's definitely doing something more than the S95D is. Well, yeah, because like, you know, Colombo's teeth, you'll see the uh, cilantro yeah. on his teeth. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll start making things more clear, even though it may or may not be there. Like right here, I can see they're, they're making this reflection a touch brighter off the alligator. Yep. That reflection is actually supposed to be pretty bright. But you can see it's also choosing the rock it doesn't want to star. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fading out the rock more. Oh, look here, the Ryan. Look at the rock on the LG. It feels like there's more shadow detail on the S95D, doesn't it? Is it because of AI Picture Pro? There is, you're right. Right? So it looks so. like it's, it's, so the same with the G4. Looks like the G4 is trying to make the foreground blip fade out a little bit. So I guess in theory, the S95D would be the most natural, which makes sense because the processing is off, or at least not compared to these. But then again, that's because the AI Picture Pro, so that's another thing. Yeah. The AI Picture Pro is on the LG G4. Yep. So let me turn it off and see if I could bring back some of that shadow detail on that rock. Because that shadow is a bit too bright compared to the S95D. And this is helping you guys understand what do I give up when I turn on AI Picture Pro, assuming that's what it's doing. So I don't think it made a difference. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Are you in the standard mode? No, I'm in Filmmaker. Filmmaker, Crystal. Filmmaker, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's great. Filmmaker's worth more. No, it doesn't. Yeah, all the dynamic contrast is off. Good. What do you want to leave the 900D in? What's up, Brian? What do you want to leave the 900D in? Uh, leave it in standard. Oh. Movie okay. adds some depth to it. Yeah, movie did add some depth to yeah, it. Movie's good on so, that. Yeah, look how bright Eco is. <laughs> the, the irony of Eco <laughs> is not lost on me. Yeah. To me, movie looks the movie best. Is the best mode. Yeah. Actually, put it on movie. Yeah, keep it in movie for whatever reason. It is funny, though, how that, that eco is bright as can be, man. Maybe eco means uh, you will now have to buy eco everything else once you have this TV. Ooh. Ooh, what did you see that? What, what just happened there? That was interesting. That was not good. That was weird. That actually went from what I wanted it to be. Watch. So go movie. It changed when I backed out. You see that? It did. I bet you that's the, the, the processing. Because the menu, the processor is off. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So I like that, and then I pop out and watch the picture change. Return. Didn't do it that time. Okay. But it's interesting how... Now let me change the, the actual brightness on this or actually the, the HDR it's funny how local dimming on the um, 2000 how local dimming behaves on the Samsung's the standard is actually brighter yes the shadow is back so it is unable to tone map that shadow detail as well as the S95D in this scene. So it's very scene specific. You see that, Brian? At 2,000 nits, it's back. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you just joining us, definitely what you're seeing is we lost a lot of this shadow detail at 10,000. But again, how often is 10,000 happening? Not very often, but it's just when you're paying that much, you want to know what happens. So the tone mapping uh, right here, the S95D did well. So you got to give a, give a hand to S95D. Well, Definitely Brian, good tone and, mapping. And Pomo, what's your opinion on the overall picture quality? Oh, the G4 consistently grabs you. That's yeah. what I think too. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. it's I not. I just wanted somebody else to say it, not just yeah, it's not, I, don't, I don't think it's close either. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if, okay, like, this is why I say, if you have the TVs in separate rooms, you go from one right. room to the next, you're not going to be able to tell. Why. But right next to each other, you can see the G4, you know, it has, just, not every scene, but some scenes you go, oh, what happened there? But then for other scenes, oh, they all look the same. 
So you know, we, we don't want to overstate how good the G4 is either, but it, it is, there is a difference. Hey, Brian, why can't Sony make their TV support all PS5 stuff? What does that mean? That's the super chat from Eyes of Buys. So the analogy I thought best put for Sony gaming is PS, PlayStation, Sony, PlayStation is not like to be called Sony. They want to be called PlayStation. That's right. So the best analogy I heard from Sony, I won't say which one said it, is that think about them as brother and sister. The PlayStation and TVs are brother and sister. Right. You don't take care of your family. You take care of who's giving you the most money. Mm -hmm. So their features for uh, the PS5, 1440p, that is for Samsung and other makers that sell more TVs. That's PlayStation is, 1440p. PlayStation yeah. is interested in PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Now they have more synergy now, but in the past, they were more interested in what performs best on. They so don't, the family thing is yeah. your sister isn't paying rent. Samsung is. So they want to make sure they have the best functional system but the synergy between the two is lacked. It's better now. And, and also, people have to consider that the PlayStation team is in a nice condo overlooking the river, and the TV <laughs> team is in like a meatpacking district somewhere. <laughs> and every now and then, they'll send an email, hey, you want to come over for, for a quick bite, right? But other than that, they don't really talk. They don't talk. I mean, I mean it's, 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 it should, they should, but... And we have separate. a super chat. This, this is a good one, because I get this a lot. Hey, Douglas, thank you for that. Guys, 65-inch C4 or G3 in a light-controlled room. So the C4 is great. If you're just watching content, I'd say go with the G3. But Brian, you game in a light-controlled room, 65-inch, which would you choose, C4 or G3? I don't like the screen room. uniformity of the 65-inch. 65-inch. G3, it wasn't, was, there was Robert for worst, worst 65 was, had the little bit of the pink? I was not impressed with the G3's uniformity. At 65, or was at that six, or was that G2 that had the problem at 65? It's G2 and the G3 had a okay. problem at 65. For me, I like the C4's refinement. I think the I C4's... Do. I would say a C4. They won't claim the C4 is as bright as the G3. And it isn't. It appears that way. Mm -hmm. In a vacuum. So I would, I would give the edge to the C4. And I will always... I agree. For some reason, for me, the new TV... If it's, if it's close, I'll go with the new TV. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Now, a reminder, I don't know where you are, Douglas, but the G3 has a five-year panel warranty. So if that's, that's, that's true. If yeah. that's important to you, maybe take that into consideration. What do you want me to leave this on, the 900D on now? What is that? What do you want the 900D to be on for the rest of our time? Uh, leave, right it, leave it that, because we want it to compete, but then people also know that it has to be at this setting to look the way it does. What is it on right now? Is it filmmaker mode? I think it's on movie. Movie mode. But it's yeah. on like a juiced yeah. movie. You want it on its regular movie? It's okay, on standard. Sean, so. We will have streaming coming up so you guys can see the difference. So Sean asked, thank you for the super chat. Is AI making a difference for Samsung or LG in this, sh in this shootout so far? The answer is I'm not noticing it. I toggled AI on and off and it didn't, uh, it wasn't that big deal, but we're not streaming yet, Sean. So we'll, I'll throw in, we'll throw in Witcher real quick, go to that favorite part of Witcher that I like to use, and we'll see if it makes a huge difference. Maybe in sports content, we can see it, yes. And we're gonna do some sports so we can see the motion, motion resolution on the 900D, whether it is superior, because that was the big thing from Samsung this year was their motion resolution on the 900D, right? And hey, thank you everyone for coming by today. We're, we're here, we're spending the day just playing with content. Wait, KG wants to say, Vivian and LG is the most psychedelic, ugly mode I've ever seen. But KG, did you try with AI genre? <laughs> That's my response. Yeah, I am not impressed by Vivian mode, just straight up Vivian mode. Okay. But people are loving well, so for vivid mode on, I heard this straight from LG. If you want vivid mode to be useful, change color to warm and take down the sharpness and it becomes a useful preset for sun drenched room. Yeah. That's what LG, uh, Greg Lee said that he recommends when he's doing them is vivid is actually purposeful in a very bright room. So if you're having a lot of glare, mm -hmm. just turn down the sharpness and knock it to warm. Well, you too. know what I'm gonna do is why don't I pause this scene mostly because it has a bit of everything, dark. And let's put them in their best vivid mode, dynamic mode in the case of Samsung. So I'll play with LG's vivid mode because I, I know how the I like it. The problem is the 900D's vivid modes are just washing them out. Yeah. And, and people just have to see it for themselves, you know? 
All right, so we're gonna go into dynamic and warm it up. So you're doing dynamic, what, warm? Uh, they don't have warm. I think it's just standard is the best you're gonna get. For uh, Samsung? Yeah. So we're gonna do, so we're, we're gonna try to make them as bright as they can go, in a way. So local dimming will be on standard, just so we can go through the settings together. Contrast and so I'm putting auto dynamic contrast to low in vivid mode. So you want it, so I want to put it low on the Samsung too? Make it look its best, basically. Well, it's, it's brightest will be high, but it won't look that good. I'm putting detail on expression enhancer and dynamic. All right, so we're gonna kind of max it. Tone mapping is active, color tone is going to be, so you have to put the color tone in um, standard for the uh, LG, because they don't yeah. have warm. Okay, I'll do that. Shadow detail, Oops. color space native, color booster, we're gonna put those on. Um, LG doesn't have one. It, it has, yeah, no, I, I'm not touching the color of the LG. So we'll turn the, you wanna turn the color booster off of the Samsungs? Make it look. I got you. The richest or the best it can look against these other two TVs. At this point, I want the dynamic or in dynamic mode, what can the 900D do to look its best? And looking its best meaning all right, not so, clipping all the colors out just to get black and white. All right, so for you guys listening, just because we're trying to be as fluent as we can, we're looking at dynamic mode for the 900D. We're not recommending dynamic mode, everyone. That's not what I'm saying. Um, everything is set normally. Picture, quality, picture clarity. We're going to have... Are you keeping the processing on? Yeah, I'm keeping AI Picture Pro and AI Genre on mine. Okay. So local dimming is going to be on standard for now, the Samsung. So this is, just so you guys know, the S95D is still in Filmmaker, so you guys can see the difference between Filmmaker and Dynamic. In a G4. Come on, babe. Early pick. My early horse. Um, so I'm going to say Contrast Enhancer is very impactful on the 900D, but it really, you really lose the blacks. So we'll stay on low for that. So we're pretty much maxed on the 900D. So, so yeah, so let's see what it looks like now. What's the S95D on? S95D is on Filmmaker still. So I want to, them to see compared to accurate. You want to leave it? Yeah, just leave it, just, just temporarily. So you can see the difference. No, Brian, what are your thoughts? G4, no. oh my God. The G4 looks like it's glowing. Oh my God. Put a bow on it. Ball game. Robert, you can skip the shootout. We're finishing it here. Look at this dynamic mode. <laughs> now, what Cancel about, it, Robert. G4. What about the 900D, Brian? Um, well, I mean, I, th I think you probably, well, it looks good there. It does, doesn't it? The local dimming is actually quite good on the 900D. It is excellent. For LCD TV, it is excellent. Look at the deep blacks. The blacks are excellent. The G4 is blooming a little it, it, bit. It's actually <laughs> blacker than the S95D because of the matte screen, yeah, right? That's interesting. Yeah, the blacks are actually better on the 900D than the S95D at the moment. Right, because the room is so bright, yeah. it's reflecting, it's, it's dispersing onto the S95D screen. So yeah, so you know that we still have the S95D is still in filmmaker mode. We haven't changed that one yet. So that's why it's looking the way it looks. I really like this scene. It is nice. I mean, look at the, okay, this is why I like the G4 and Vivid mode. If I'm watching Chameleons all day, this is the one. Yeah, the, the Vivid mode's Look legit. at the Chameleon. It, it does, doesn't look like a Chameleon anymore. It looks it like an alien a little bit. <laughs> Damn, OLED's blooming all over the place. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, you're right. Let, let me pause, right? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So LG, LG's... Uh, Vivid always reminded me, especially in the C8 and C9, it always reminded me of um, a Samsung OLED back in the day. It's like watch, that, that green on the G4 is definitely alien green. Look, yeah, it's that Chernobyl green. Oh my gosh. But you know what's funny, that it looked, but see the mist is almost completely missing on the right side of the G4. There's like lines that were there. Well, you know what? It's, I think because dynamic tone mapping is on on the G4. Let's turn it off because that may be a bit too aggressive. Hello, though. Excuse me. Going right into the mic. For those of you who love dynamic tone mapping, you know, that's what happens. Yeah, the dynamic tone mapping is, uh, is very strong. 
Oh, leave that on, though. Yeah, I gotta leave it on. Yeah, leave it on. If you want to be impactful. Yeah, no. So, guys, in vivid mode, you gotta leave dynamic tool mapping on. Now, what about standard mode? Let's let's. Uh, standard can be even more impactful on LG. Oh, maybe not. Oh yeah, but, but you have vivid uh, maxed, right? Yeah. But standard's also actually. You no, know, put it in standard. Let me put the uh, the nine hundred D in standard. Okay. Okay, we're we're gonna compare standard mode now because this I is the fun part about what we do. I think. Okay, dynamic tool mapping is on. Auto dynamic contrast on medium. Let's take it to low. Yeah, a little bit better, more accurate, but still getting that brightness. Should we turn the processing off of the uh, off the Samsung? You think it's hurting it? Yeah, you know, turn it turn it off because we'll have it on for motion. Because I, I don't think it's helping the brightness and contrast much. What's it under? And, and we're not upscaling low bitrate content either. What's it under? It's under general? It's under general it's intelligent general. mode there settings. Is. There you go. Because I don't think it's actually helping it um, with this content. Which makes sense. It's 4K. I would imagine it would do better with 1080p. That's what they're kind of touting, right? 1080p was its best use case? No, it's seven, even 720. Yeah, so... Are you juicing standard too, or are you going just out of the box? What is? The LG. You juicing it? <laughs> uh, only AI genre selection. There you go. It shifts the white point just a touch. So color boosters on on high. Um... Put color booster on low. I, I think high might be too much. They really push the red too hard on high. Are you using spark calibration? What's happening over there? So for those of you Samsung, what's funny is Wendy was saying I was actually controlling the S95C in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> right, Wendy? I was like, yeah, the TV in the back is all screwed up. Let um, me right. lower that exposure just a touch. What color are you on? You on warm or are you uh, still cool? Warm to on the, film, on the S95. On the, uh, it's standard LG? on whatever the standard is. I left that at default. That's at uh, standard. Uh, that's at not neut neutral, so we'll do standard. Uh, yeah, that's closer. All right, there's a 900D standard. That's, wow, a, little, that's a little at least okay. off angle. So it's so bright on the G4 that my camera cannot capture the dynamic range between the bright mouth and the cloudy white. Interesting. I need to get a better camera for these <laughs> things. <laughs> Cameras that cost more than a TV. I mean, there is actually white happening on the S95D. You just can't see it because the dynamic range. Or the G4, you mean? No, I mean, on the S95D. You see how you have white there? If I increase the exposure, you'll see it. See? But now it just blows out the G4 because it's so bright. Bless you. Do you want to get the, um, the S95D out? It's a standard? Bless you, Robert. Yeah, go ahead and put it in standard mode because the dynamic range is too much for my camera. This is insane. Wait, wait. Josh AK wants you to know, 8K dynamic on bright scene blows OLED. And that's the point, right? So let's get more and tell you that's Josh AK right now. Am I predicting that? How did you know it was Josh AK? We have more Josh's in our communities between, what, 200,000? But I know that's Josh AK. Well, Josh, you got to make the suggestion. We don't see it if you don't make the suggestion, Josh. Now you made it. So, so you right know, scene. Let's go to funny. a bright scene and see. We actually totally forgot. The S95D should, in theory, be the brightest here, being that it's a third-gen OLED. So let's go ahead and... Let me give it the brightest scene. What in this you, disc, um, which is literally brighter than any source you're going to find, Josh, is a 10,000 nit grade Spears and Munsell scene of the white horses. Right? That oh, white horse scene is great to, to blow out every TV. <laughs> oh my and I, don't, I don't know how you can argue if that's not bright enough. That, that is going to... I tell you, the S95D is bright as heck with a... Uh, um, in standard... Look at that. Gosh. And, you know, and we'll obviously 
Hit the full 10,000 nits. Don't look at the nits. S95D in standard. Get off right, me. 10,000 nits. Now no one has any excuses. This is 10,000 nit feed, Josh. You will not get that on any stream. You have to get it on disk. So go ahead and put the 900D in dynamic mode. Let's blast in dynamic mode and see how it does. Squirrel! And we'll put the G4 in standard mode and the S95D in filmmaker so that they have context. Actually, I'll you know, put the S95D in standard. That way people don't complain. Oh, the S95D sucks. It is in standard. Oh, it is in standard? Yeah. That's how, look how bright it is. Let me put the G. It's let me blooming check the everywhere, G4. though. I tell you, the local dimming on the 900D is phenomenal. The real fight's going to be Bravia 9 900D. I know everyone wants to see it against the G4. Okay, we got 10,000 nit. Why is the color on the S95D so wonky? It probably isn't a 1%. Let me see. You want, to, see, you want it to be a, it's a... Put it on... What are we, in standard? Yeah. Put it standard. And... You want color around uh, new, uh, uh, new uh, Yeah, I'm on standard here too. Make sure I have dynamic tone mapping on. Oh, I'm on warm too. You want it on neutral or standard? Uh, keep it on warm one. Warm one. What? Oh, you know what's ironic is the mini LED looks blue. I'm gonna take dynamic tone mapping and put it, keep it on. All right, so we're going to rewind the horse scene. We're going to go everything through these bright scenes, and then you guys can complain. Like, we have no favorites here, by the way. Yeah, and my yeah. job is to make sure the TV looks as good as it can look, yeah. given the source. And here we have 10,000 nits. And if it cannot do 10,000 nits, that's not my fault. All right, here we go. Okay, so the G4 has the most grass. What was your local dimming setting on the 900D? It's on standard. Let me see if I can get more grass back. If I give it the 900D high. <sighs> Dynamic mode 900D. Goodbye, horses. Oh, no. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Little of the lambs. Color. Oops. We got a crow in the building. It's more Brandon Lee. All right, guys, we got 420 watching. Please hit like. Yeah, we'll lower the exposure in a second. Apparently, high and standard don't make a big difference. Local dimming of 10,000. Local dimming on low is terrible. Dude, I look like so a football player on camera. I thought it was leaning out. <laughs> camera adds mapping. 50 pounds. I'll put on static to get back some of that. The brightness yeah. doesn't change, guys. So in dynamic, okay. It looks a little bit better now. Let's see that I like the 900D the best. You like the 900D the best? It's got, well, the, I can see everything in the background. I okay, can see so the, uh, against dynamic, and then let's... let's yeah, because look, you, because we're here, we look at the detail. Yeah. It's gone. Good point. Gone. 900D has better tone mapping. Oh, yeah, and, go back, let's go back to that. But that's work. because dynamic tone mapping is on. Let me turn off dynamic tone mapping on the on the G4 because when you have dynamic tone mapping on, you're going to lose detail is what I've noticed. So we'll do that scene again, guys. Oops. All right, so turning off dynamic tone mapping, what you'll see is in that horse scene again, and this is why I love the horse scene. It is such a great critical watching scene for tone mapping at 10,000 nits. All right, so I'll toggle it so you can see. It's off. Yeah, so you, watch, you have to leave it off. All right, so. Now it just it's more, the, or on just blows it out. Yeah, on everything. So now, how is it now? So it's dynamic 
dynamic mode on the 900D still more versus, on the 900, still more detail on the 900D versus standard on the G4 versus standard on the S95D, right? Yeah, you think you still see more 900D the trees? You do. Even off angle, you do. You do. So wait, let me turn down the exposure so you guys can see that. Yeah, we're gonna show you guys. Oh yeah. Josh says we don't know how to adjust the TV. <laughs> what happened to all the love, it's, Josh? It's, We're pretty certain we know how to do it. <laughs> it's all about what is it we want to test, right? So if we're uh, testing dynamic <laughs> on these TVs. People, yeah, you know how to adjust people the People are so TV. critical. I tell you, man. <laughs> this is my first day. <laughs> my first day on the job. That's I'm getting hit from all time. sides. <laughs> Be gentle with me. <laughs> the S95D looks great right there. Uh, it's still like the G4. It looks better than everything. I have to say, I wish the S95D had the 900D's processor. Yeah, that'd be, that's a, it would that, be that is a better processor. Let me see if I can adjust to help the, S, the S95D out a little bit here. I think it's active. That's, oh, contrast enhancer is on. That's why. All right, yeah. guys. We got 441 watching. Please hit like. Hope you guys are having a good time. Okay. Yeah, we're actually doing all of this in a pretty bright room. The windows, uh, the blinds are drawn. The, the mat really does show up though here. When what, what are we on? We're in standard now. It's in standard, but it's not as bright because I turned off active. I was going to toggle it so we can see. Turn it off. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Active makes a huge difference in a bright room. Brian, does the effect of the oh, color wait, it brightness? Oh, it is active. The hell? I don't know. There's not really the does the off angle. Maybe a little bit, but like, I would I would say, um, Kevin, is that you know the G four is a little off angle too, in this shot. S ninety five D is the only one that's dead center. So the S ninety five D cannot keep up in brightness. It this I mean white to be fair. The coating is off. You goofball. <laughs> white is a specialty of the G four. I took it off in the Leanne took it off in the beginning. <laughs> so I'm gonna rewind this one more time. You right to the horses. We gotta rewind the horses only because that scene is so bright. The S ninety five D cannot preserve that brightness. So this is like a hockey game, right? Whereas the G four brightness does not change. It, it can handle all that white because that's what it specializes in. Yeah, we're not gonna get in real content pushing body guns. We're just showing their the the ceiling or getting it close to the ceiling if we can. So this is kind of like a and so the nine hundred D in dynamic mode stress test. It does a phenomenal job of tone mapping. Absolutely. The trees. By, uh, by, I mean, especially I mean, considering it's got yeah. the foreground and background at the same time, but the background is completely visible on the 900D. It and, is and it is the brightest. It is the brightest, it yeah. It is the brightest. And, and without compromising some of that detail. So you have to have it in dynamic mode, obviously. Colors would be slightly different, but it has its use case. So, going, so you're saying if we go back in static for the S95D, we get back the brightness but we lose more detail yeah. so it's aggressive like the the dynamic tone mapping for the g4 but it clearly is how the dynamic tone mapping is off the g4 it is off on the g4 and it's still bright yes so it cripples the s95d having that off though I mean, that's interesting check. i'll check it i keep on forgetting because dynamic tone mapping has such a deep effect on the g4 let me double check again Yep, it's off. Dynamic tone mapping. Wow. Is off. So the yeah. so think about that. The off for dynamic tone mapping still has a bright image. Where in the S95D, you have to have it enabled if you want that brightness back. Well, no, you can't. It cannot hold. It, this white screen is too bright. The S95D cannot preserve the brightness to keep up. No, but I'm saying that's why you're seeing it look so dim. If we had the dynamic, so we had it active back on, at least the brightness would come back. It'd clip it, everything, but it'd be back. You know what? I think it is on. Oh, let me talk to it. Yeah, double check that. <sighs> We have dueling remotes. <laughs> These TVs are being abused. Like, oh no, I have to. <laughs> that's not mine. That's not the one I bought, is it? <laughs> Wendy, we're not breaking these in, are we? <laughs> we can sign it if you want. Let's see. Oh, my, it's on active. It's on active. That's what I told you, right? It's on active and it cannot hold on to the brightness. That's what I'm saying. The G4. 
is just a bright TV period. So here, the Nahtu D definitely made a case for itself as being the brightest TV that we have so far. Bravia 9 will have something to say about that, but certainly number one in brightness in their brightest profile, dynamic mode on the S900D, and standard mode on the G4. I think dynamic or vivid on the G4 might get a little bit brighter. I, I didn't think so, but they no, just... Contrast enhancer really helps it. Is it on the G4? No, I had to take it off because it okay, was just... Okay, so we had it off, okay. So what's funny is static and active doesn't change much on the... Look at the difference. So static... Well, in vivid mode, the G4 got a little bit brighter, but you lose a little bit more detail. That was the problem. But look at active and static. You want to go back? You want to put it back on static and see what it does? I'm going to take dynamic tone mapping. Bring back some of that. Okay. So now the G4 is in vivid. Look at the with dynamic tone mapping off so you can have some of that detail back. Look at the reflections on the E95L. Told you. <laughs> okay. Spin that camera around, baby. And the G4, the G, that would be still slightly brighter. Slightly. It's a lot brighter than the S95D, though. Oh, the S95D is not here to win the brightness game. That's for sure. Well, especially this is the strength well, and of this, in the, the 10,000. Yeah. It's white. W OLED is called white OLED for a reason, right? Yeah. So those of you who want just well, hockey sports is what we talked about. Okay. So we, should we put maybe change it back to just 2,000 nits and let it run and see how things look just on, on their own? 2,000 nits, yeah. Just let it let it run on its own, just just so people can see the real the content. Thing, yeah, and let me put a 2,000 mostly because that reflects the maximum real content you're going to get. So at 10,000 nits, we'll on 2,000. We'll let it run from the beginning again, and then we'll answer some questions and get to all your super chats. Thank you for being so patient here. There's certain clarity on the G4 though. It is. There is. There's, there's just there's that clarity there. So this is the battle of the vivid mode. What 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 you want to do standard out of the box for all of them? See what they do? Okay. Just reset them all to standard out of the box. What do you guys think? I mean, standard like out of the box what? Just out of the box for all of them. Just uh reset them all to standard. Standard mode? Yep. Is what people watch. All right. I mean, we'll just do I think that way we don't pump or cook. Whatever they are in standard out of the box. Go for it. I'll answer questions as you do that. Because we already see at max what they're supposed to do. And yeah. Of so course, what, how many nits are we at? 2,000? FOMO? Yeah, they're at 2,000. Okay. This is 2,000 nit content now. So we're going to reset them all to standard out of the box. All right. Let's get to your super chats. I want to make sure I don't miss anyone. We'll start with Arthur. Hey, Arthur. I'm a new fan and just moved into my first apartment. Congratulations. Looking for a TV up to 49 inches. 100 inch, baby. And <laughs> 100, welcome to the channel. 100 inch. 100 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Look how bright that is now. TV series, games, price, no issue. Can you help me? Thanks a lot. So the best 49 inch TV you can get, my friend, is the LG C4 at 48 inches. Unfortunately, small TVs under 55, they're not, they're not being sold, right? If you can get to 55, get the G4 or the S95D or the A95L or even at 65 inches the Bravia 9. But 55 at least gets you some of the best OLEDs out there. At 49, you're really limited to one OLED and that's the C4. So if you can push to 55, I'd recommend you do so so you can get the G4. I think that'll be your best 55 inch TV out there uh, because you're doing TV series, games, right? And the 55 inch G4 is capable of 144 Hertz solid and it has a five-year panel warranty well in the usa at least so that's unique to us here i don't know about you wherever you are so let us know what you end up getting arthur thank you for that super chat and eyes of buys asks why can't oh, we already talked about that ps5 oh wow i skipped the Arthur. sorry about that hopefully you're still around <laughs> hey jerry osmond shout out to robert and Dolly electronics i pre-ordered my 83 inch g4 and they've been excellent. Well, congratulations, Jerry. It's a great TV. I can't wait for my TV to arrive in a week or so. Yes, share with us your experience for sure. And buddy, thank you for the super chat. I remember April 22nd, people saying LG was done and goodbye. I could have been one of them. Don't call it a comeback. Remember the s I've been here for years. In 2022, the S95B was released. 
And we yeah, that was told tough. everyone to throw their WLA TVs out the window. Well, that was when it beat the A90J. To it beat the A90J. It beat that thumbnail. So I'm like, ah! All right, so now while we're talking and while we're answering questions, every TV's been in a standard preset, and they've all been reset. So if they're in a cooler oh, color temperature, we've left let them. Let me turn up my exposure so you can enjoy so, the content. So um, you can see the brightness now on the 900D, but I think as we discuss how these TVs look, that's why I think filmmaker mode can be a detriment to many LEDs in comparison to OLEDs. I think now the 900D looks much better. Um, it looks brighter in some cases. Mm -hmm. But I would still give the micro contrast of the G4, the detail on it. On the, uh, it's crushing a little bit on camera, but the G4 looks insane. The G4, that really pops. My gosh. This thing really pops. So now we're standard preset. Everything is, there's no one's being juiced up. This is just reset standard on all of them. So they all are at a cooler preset, um, which also means the color booster is on for the Samsungs, not on for the LG, and the LG is definitely more colorful, considering it's not a quantum dot OLED. And as a reminder, dot anyway. this is not the most accurate mode. No. They all have their unique personality no. and standard. And this is what oh my God, says. look at the G4. Showmaker Let me check the settings real quick. I definitely must have screwed that up. There's no way that that looks, <laughs> look at the, the S95D. <laughs> And this takes us to Buddy Love's comment. Buddy, Buddy Love. 2024, everybody wants a G4. Brian, does that include you? I, I called it. Look. <laughs> is this thing on? Hello? Mic check. I called it at CES. I said it was ball game. So you're asking me, Buddy? I don't even waste money on a super chat for that. Diggerless. Thank you for that super chat, Buddy. Guys, 65 inch. Oh, I think we already answered that. I'm just catching everything I missed. Okay, Mankite wants to know if Bravia 9 versus OLED coming out of black and shadow detail. We'll see. Uh, the OLED coming out of black often has issues, but it depends on which model. I believe the G4 has improved it a little bit. I spoke to Dwayne Davis yesterday, and he felt the G4 definitely has improved in terms of that coming out of black shadow detail. So at the shootout, this is where that really makes a difference, right? But for most yeah. people's G4, content... G4 just smacking you know, people around today. You may not notice... I think the best content for that is 1917 in that climbing up the staircase scene. So we'll compare the Bravia 9 to the G4 and the S95B there as well. Thanks, Chad, for that super chat. Are blooming concerns overblown with modern mini LED? No. No, it depends on the model. <laughs> it's still there. It's not all mini LEDs are made the same. Let me tell you that now. With the Bravia 9, I think so. So the Bravia 9, now I'll just tell you this. Sony themselves said, OLED will beat the Bravia 9 in some scenes. Mm -hmm. Their goal wasn't to say the Bravia 9 will replace your OLED. OLED has its place and it will do certain scenes better than any mini LED, LED LCD TV. However, the Bravia 9's use case is very broad. In slightly brighter rooms where you want to watch bright 4000 nit content or bright sports, this is where it shines. And its control of blooming is probably going to be one of the best out there. When I saw it next to the X95L, the X95L, or in this case, the Bravia 7, was okay last year, definitely very good. But this year, the Bravia 9 beats it. That brings it that much closer to OLED. So I think it's fine for film and streaming, if that's what you watch. If you watch yeah. film and streaming, Bravia 9, rock your world. Well, and, and Willie Fama, if you remember the, um, the blue, was it an orchid? What was the flower that was in the demo material versus the S95D? Remember, it crushed completely. So what it's going to do mm. for you, not only is the local dimming going to control blooming, the shadow detail is going to beat any OLED out there. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be that, that trade-off. The demos they showed us where you would see the orchid. And remember that um, the Chinese lantern? Yes, yeah, I remember. So it they, kept better, that, um, they kept yeah. that bright, but the OLEDs got rid of that detail. So we're going to really see shadow detail is going to be the conversation again, M more and, than blooming control. And not near black shadow detail, more like colorful shadow detail yeah. near a bright scene. Now, if you will you compare the G4 against the Bravia 9 the shootout? So the problem is it's pretty clear. In a shootout, LCD TVs, doesn't matter if it has mini LED or not, will always lose by a wide margin. So the judges even request a look. You're just kicking this poor victim of old technology. Separate the two. We will we would rather award the best LCD mini LED TV and 
the best OLED. But when you put it together, the worst OLED in that group beats the best mini LED C LCD TV. And we expect that to happen this year as well. And even Sony said, that's don't do that because in those scenes, it will lose, right? Which is critical viewing against a reference monitor where all of your content is under a thousand nits. Now, maybe a 4,000 nit content where I have special 4,000 nit content designed by studios to show off these TVs could be a different matter. And that might be two years in the making, right? We don't have that content yet. But for now, we're gonna separate them and maybe we'll bring them back in the near future, but it's not gonna be close given the reference comparisons. But sports, gaming, who knows? That might be different. So Foma, real quick. So right now at this, we're paused here. G4, S95D, Q900. They're all standard out of the box, meaning they've been all reset. Nothing's changed. The G4 is brighter and even retains the color. We're at 2,000 nits. Mm -hmm. The advanced contrast or enhancer is on high on the both, both of the Samsungs. On the LG, it's actually medium. And it's okay. doing that on medium. Now, adding it to high to match the others doesn't change it much, but it does show you how impactful it is. Now, some of you guys like advanced contrast enhancer. Um, and it's at medium. I put it up to high. It gives it slightly more punch, but it's actually brighter than the other two. Yeah. And retains the color. And this is where the matte does hurt it. It does look dull compared to the G4. Now, I'm noticing there's some color banding on the G4, but I think it's because- That's the content. Of, You're seeing this? Yep. Yeah. I see it, you see it. It's the it's content. On, it's on the stream. Yeah, it's on, it's on the, the, the content, but it's, it's but interesting. Interestingly, the 900D has it the least. Yep, it's good, but it arguably has less color as well, even though it's a quantum dot. Right. And real quick, the 900D's screen uniformity, the ones I've seen is good. So mm -hmm. I haven't seen a lot of bad from it. And I think this goes to the limited color gamut of the G4. This is when you see the bangs. When you get bright enough, even 2000 nits, right? Get bright enough. When it is unable to render all the colors, you're going to have a little bit banding here and there. There's less of that on the S95D, but not, it's not as prominent, right? But maybe because the G4 is just so bright, it makes it more obvious. All right, next super chat up. Sean, thank you for your super chat. Thanks a lot for taking such pains, shifting settings and listening to people, even if some can be harsh. No, so it, it's not our first day on YouTube. <laughs> you know, it's still it's still very toned. Years ago, we would have ran home crying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't pleasure. even like me. He doesn't like me. It's my first day on the job. I, I will say I like static tone mapping better on the 900D, though. Yeah. Definitely yeah. model specific. Hey, Matt, I can pick up the S90D for 2200 Canadian this weekend. Good deal to pick it up, or should I wait for the LG and Sony OLEDs? Prefer Sony colors, but good price. So Matt, here's the good news. The deals, because it's so early in the year, will only get better as you get closer to Prime Day. So this deal may go away next week, and may go away next month, but guess what? By July, boom, it's back and even lower. So if you already have a TV, you're not in a rush to get a TV, wait for the G4 and the Sony, maybe the Bravia 9, or the Sony A95L, Prime Day is when both the G4, the G3, and the A95L will hit their first major price drop, as well as the S90D. <clears throat> so if you can wait, wait until Prime Day, which is sometime in July. Sean wants to let you know, in that horse scene, the Q900D processor is giving legitimacy to the Samsung processor. Yes, I definitely, we saw good tone mapping in 10,000 in content. Has Samsung new processor come close or on par with the Sony? Maybe even better with less brightness. Is Samsung becoming Sony and Sony Samsung? So, Sony has always been weak in tone mapping, ironically, and they've told me so, which is they're great up to about 1200 nits. Above 1200, they start clipping. Now, the Bravia 9 hopefully addresses some of that, but the A95L struggles above 1500 nits on the that spears and muscle, right? So Sony has never done well with tone mapping super bright scenes. Now below that, it's great. So the Samsung has always done well. Today, we saw the 900D beat 
its OLED flagship, the S95 D, which is what I did not expect. So there is something to be said about the new processor on the 900 D, which makes me a little angry why the S95 D does not have that same processor, because that is also better than the 95 C from last year. So I think there's a bit of processing tone, ma tone mapping magic that Samsung is doing very well. I think so. What do you think in a scene like this, we said scene by scene, obviously the 900D is brightest in this scene, just for the heck of it. But is that useful brightness? I think it's very useful in this room. But what do you think, I mean, it's clearly, what we talked about on certain shots, they trade, the 900D is a lot brighter in this scene. Yeah. That, it could be also you're losing color in it. It's still inactive, it's still, it's still on a standard preset. But what I'm gonna do here is we should just, Stay in a so, scene. So I'll, I'll you want to switch out of this? The 900D looks the most natural, by the way. Okay. The 900D looks natural. The 95D, it feels like the green is a little bit hopped up. And the G4, is that standard mode? Yeah. They're it, all out of the box standard. It, it feels oversaturated. The G4 feels like every color has been pushed up to max. Like the little sliders. They're boosting the yellow, they're boosting the red, they're boosting the yeah. red, the green. What's right? funny is the S95D's color booster is off. And the S95D, it looks like they boosted the green for some reason. Let's, but boost, let's actually boost it up and see what it does. Right? Well, because contrast enhancer is on high. Yeah, but it's on that too, though. Oh, so the contrast, the contrast enhancer on All right, the... Buckle up for this. Ah, well, it didn't that? do anything. Well, that's why, right? Oh, oh yeah, I, it does. Oh, I see. Just a little bit. Uh, the 900D's contrast enhancer does, I mean, does what it can do, but it stays natural. It, it, you really have to take that, tone so it here, down let's, let's look on at the S95D. So let's turn off contrast enhancer. We only have, guys, we only have them on bright because we're trying to give everything an equal shot here. Yeah. It's oh, very yeah. impactful. Um, but what's interesting here is it actually is purposeful it, on it low. It doesn't change the color. It, it only doesn't. changes the light contrast. But I would say in this, even though it's brighter on, look what it does on, on off though, foam. It almost looks, it loses the color. Yeah. So I would say on, on low, it's a I nice, like it on low. nice mixture. Right there, it's almost too bright. It's washed out. No, keep it on low. What does the brightness look like there? Does it still look brighter? Look how washed out it is if you go to high. Take contrast and have to high. See, that's washed out. And then high is washed out. Yep, That's low. weird. So contrast enhancer so on a, low. Yeah is what we want. Yeah, so our, we're, not, we're not really losing brightness, but we are losing color. So I think it looks best here. It still looks the brightest. Then on the S95D, why don't you turn off contrast enhancer? Because that's just- The detriment. The, the color is hurting my eyeballs. The, the, the green is soaked in. <laughs> and, and that's another thing, guys. Every TV setting, every setting is unique to the model. So even though we have two Samsung TVs, two flagships, so to speak, Different but their settings do completely different things. The contrast enhancer on the 100D does something different, and uh, the contrast enhancer. So per oh, yeah. perfect Take, example. Keep it off. So guys, look the, the contrast enhancer for the 900. I think I'm teaching a class. All right, class. The 900D contrast enhancer loses color at high, loses color at low. I'm sorry, off, off and high loses color. Low has the most color, best image on the and brightness and it preserved brightness and preserved That's brightness key. on the S95D. Even off, it's still very colorful. Low actually looks more, which one, you like it off all the way? Yeah, to keep it off. All right, so you wanna take it off the G4? Maybe that comes back to. Let's see, um, active. Yeah, let's see what's happening on the G4, because that G4 is just way oversaturated. I'm gonna turn up the exposure here, you can see what I'm seeing. So now we're on the G4. Dude, how much is this like being in a freaking toy store right now? At an amusement park. Yeah, so standard, correct. Oh, hold on one second. Scusi, scusi, scusi. There you go. What's funny is that I was say LG's, the load, the screens load slowly. I've noticed that this year. So you have dynamic tool mapping on, I assume. Oh, it's that auto dynamic contrast on highest. So why don't you take it off and see what happens? Nothing. A little bit of color. Well, it does change the look. Not much. Uh, not much. Well, you lose it. Look in the background. A little bit, yeah. Actually, it's pretty interesting how it Barely. just changes the shadow. You want it on um, on off? Yeah, keep keep dynamic contrast off because it doesn't add. It doesn't make the picture brighter. So dynamic contrast does not help in this scene at all. No. Yeah. 
But now with tone mapping, what happens? Just to see. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, keep it on. That's just too dim. So thank you for that super chat, Sean. See what you did? One question, just a rabbit hole. Good job, though. We look forward to those questions. Ahmad, thank you for the super chat. Accuracy battle scene. That is what the shootout is for. So when you have an accuracy battle, all the TVs need to be calibrated to death, which means a team of calibrators, Classy, Dwayne, whoever, right, Jason Dustal, they compare notes. They're here, and they literally spend 48 hours you know, eating here, practically sleeping here, perceptually matching, measuring, rematching, re-perceptually matching, carrying their special monitor from one TV to the next where they got the reference monitor. Then they have to perceptually match again because they want to make sure that all these TVs are as accurate to the reference monitor as possible. Then they start comparing the TVs to each other to see, okay, how do they look compared to each other, right? So actually battle is not soon, meaning it's not today. The best we can do is put in filmmaker mode, but that's not an accuracy battle. We don't know which TV is accurate. Yeah. Without a reference monitor, I can't say, oh, that TV yeah. looks accurate, yeah. right? <laughs> I can say they look different. Well, look, oh, look at the, um, oh, look at this. What happened? Okay, let me, hold let on. me Did I match. Hold, hold Let's go back right Hold on, on hold one. on, hold on. Uh, here, Panasonic. Oh, let me, I'll go through the settings. Let's go back. That, <laughs> that's a great <laughs> dude, what, that, what happened here? Yeah. The 900D oh, took dude. all the way out. <laughs> Yeah, the 900D it. took a powder. It thought nobody was looking. I know. I went to the restroom. It was like a bodybuilder that exhaled. It's like, oh! <laughs> what? You're that still was, watching? Do you what? remember the scene? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... Uh, oh, we go back to the honey one. That's the honey, honey, the honey one? The honey one did it, too. What was it? That, what did it? The honey one did it. No, it was... It was, it was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> That was awesome. Okay, so wait, let's talk. So I did well here. Okay, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's so for everybody watching, the 900 yeah, right, do that, the body, <laughs> yeah, <body>. it was, <laughs> he was like, yeah, then he was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> almost still on camera, <laughs> picking his nose off camera. That was awesome. Uh, All right, so it was brighter in this scene. Yes. Okay, let's, let's, let's continue. This is why M Wave is so fun. And, and this looks good, right? Yeah, this looks good. Actually, it looks the most natural. So, so far, it's as bright as the other TVs, and it had the most natural looking colors. So, let me adjust. Well, what's funny is the 900D now has clouds, and the other ones don't. We're at 2,000 nits? We are. All right, so the 900D actually, no, you're right. It's the, it's, I think I talked to Stacy, man. Look, he's got yeah, like 2,000 nits. And this yeah. one, it looks the best. The other two are oversaturated. Okay, so right now, 900D is and also the brightest and the most realistic right. looking. It's flexing. flexing. Yep, it's flexing. It's like, yeah, come on. Good morning. All right. That looks good. What I don't see from the 900D is extra color from the quantum dot. I don't see that much. No. Oh, there okay. we go. What happened? <sighs> this doesn't make sense. Tony, it doesn't take that much energy. Tony, what happened? All right, so. Okay, wait. I'll tell you what happened. Here's my interpretation. The... G4 and the S95D is over brightening in this scene. The 900D is trying to be accurate, but guess what, buddy? You're in standard mode. You don't have to be. And yeah, that's the, so, it. so let me it's, put. So I wonder if it's still trying put to control. Put one of them in filmmaker. Put the 95D in filmmaker and see if it drops that same brightness. Because I think that's what the 900D is doing. Well, it looks like it's. Well, look, look at it. it came back. Watch this. Well, because now, now because the menu's up, guys, it's it's back to flexing. Now watch me turn. Now look, the menu's up. Mm -hmm. It's still standard, okay. but look, it's blooming. So take it, maybe put it on, on But just watch high. as I pop back out of it. It is darkening to compensate. To avoid the blooming. This still is a blooming it. algorithm, guys, yep. because it is yep. so bright, it will result in blooming. Yep. That's exactly right. So it gets caught with its pants down when the menu's up. It's like, oh! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> someone's oh! oh, oh my God, wrong. right. So let's go, let's, what do we want to do? We want to put it in, that's in standard. Maybe if it's not as bright. All right, you got, you got to stop. You sit over there. All right. So this is a dimming zone issue. Uh, it's the technology where Samsung is hoping you're not noticing this, but in a scene where it might bloom, it okay. will aggressively dim the highlight. So the, man, the menu's still up. Let's see if it... Dynamic. Let's see if it maintains. Nope. 
dynamic will hold. It will hold. Okay. So there you go. You have to keep it dynamic in these scenes. But so in full screen sense. brightness where a blooming is not an issue. I wonder so why standard was doing I wonder why standard was doing that though. Because that doesn't Because standard is trying to be closer to accurate, whereas dynamic doesn't care. So I can live with that. I don't like how it dimmed though. So well, we learned something with Q and ED. This the, is, I know on, I know that it is blooming. It's not terrible for what this scene is for for dynamic. Yeah, Neil QLED, definitely because it's an LCD oh TV. Oh my God, okay. See, this is fine. Right, let's pause that one. Can you pause this one? Put it on standard and see what happens, yeah. All right. And guys, I will tell you that as much as we worry about, um, and FOMO can confirm this, as much as we worry about Samsung and their firmware updates, they do improve AK over time. I will tell you that. Well, that's their flagship baby. I mean, it, it always gets better as the year goes on. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Standard release. So you got, if you guys have dimming issues and specular highlights, you have to watch in dynamic. I think that's... Look, look at movie. Oh, wow. Look at movie. So standard... So it's just standard. It's, standard so it's, it's an issue with standard. Even eco mode is bright. <laughs> Come on, it's right. So the recommendation is don't watch right. in standard on the 900D or maybe on any Neo QLED. If we're to extrapolate. Okay, so, so this is great. I don't, wait, I don't dislike that. Can we pause this? Let's pause this one. Yeah, yeah, I'll pause it. Thank you. All right, so in standard, that's a bug. That's gotta be a bug. Is why would it try to do that in standard or not? Maybe. Local dimming, contrast enhancer, static. Well, that's pretty bright. So in, so in active, it's still not dimming. Hey, me. Brian, while you're there? Still not dimming. Yeah, I, I think it's standards broken. Look how much brighter it is though. Brian, while you're there, let's do, you no, know, now the TVs are broken then. Uh, default filmmaker mode static for all TVs okay. at 2000 nit. We don't have 4000 nit. So KG has a super chat. Default filmmaker mode for all TVs, 2000 nit, Spears and Munsell. Unfortunately, the latest Spears and Munsell kicked out 4000. Now it's only 2000 or 10,000. So, so we want, we, what? We we want filmmaker to re, re add, add that 4000 back in. So we want reset re, uh, filmmaker out of the box and then because it's going to be static out of the box. Yeah, just put it to Filmmaker. Filmmaker static. I'll okay, do, so I'll we're do static. Filmmaker for the G. Filmmaker dynamic tone mapping off on the G. Or rather, put it in its most accurate mode, right? So guys, we just learned. So standard isn't working properly right now for the uh, 900D, which I actually am happy that that's the case because I don't want them all to look like that. Right. So in the other presets, movie and the others, you're fine. Robert, can, um, we should hook up one of your guys from Samsung and let them know. Standard is broken. The standard's broken. Dimming zones aren't working properly. They're aggressively dimming They're, they're dimming the whole image. I think that's something they want to know. And I've put it in filmmaker mode and put it on static. I'm just going to reset it. Bit of on static, right? Okay. Let me go to slow mo. I'm just going to reset it. That way we have no other. So now what are we doing? Accurate? Yeah. God, they're still so right. punchy. So let's see. And they all look pretty close, except. And we're not going to say which one's more accurate, guys, because you honestly don't know without Excuse a reference me? monitor. That's yours. Oh. All right, so let's, uh, let's start with 2,000 at content real quick for you guys. As you can see, there is no 4,000. It's either 2,000 or 10,000 on the new Spears and Munsell. Now, the older one is 4,000, but Stacy Spears likes the new one because the way he created it, he felt it was even better. So we're going to have to ask him to maybe add a firmware <laughs> disk update. All right, let's run this through. If anything catches your eye, oh, you know what KG has said to me? And I didn't notice this. There are some scenes or most scenes where the G4 just looks sharper. Just a touch, something yeah. special, right? It's all mapping is off the chart. Now, 
It could be SDR, it could be whatever. So when you see a scene that really pops out at you, let me know and I'll pause it. Well, I'll say right from us uh, starting, seeing them all in Filmmaker, the 900D looks good. Okay, guys, I cannot tell the difference between a 900D and the OLED in this one. <clears throat> let's, let's just give the 900D its applause. <clears throat> this is a difficult scene. And it rendered it exactly like OLED. Who would have thought that the, the, everything we try to give the mini LED a shot at, it's actually performing better right now. Mm -hmm. We crippled it by trying to make it stronger. I know. <laughs> Josh AK, filmmaker mode, 900D. Not yeah, yeah, Josh, since you don't know how to set the TV. Oh, wait. <laughs> I think there's more grass in the 900D than the G4. Is there not more detail? You need, me, you need me to count some blades, baby? Yeah. <laughs> I, I counted 899. I think there's only 677 on the G4. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> right? Let me lower the, the exposure so you guys can see the, the, the blades of grass. Because I know you're all counting at home. You know, it's funny for a second, Fumble, I thought that the 49 was only visible on this. I'm like, it works! <laughs> it works! It's visible on all of them. So this is 2000 nit content, and the 900D, phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. And the G4 yeah, is barely, I mean, I think it's at most missing 50 blades of grass, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, unless phenomenal. you're a landscaper, you're not going to care about that. You know, there are landscape artists here. We have some, no, that was landscape architects. Architects, not artists? Yeah, artists, come on. <laughs> they're going to paint, they're going to draw landscapes? Well, actually, no, you're right. What am I talking about? If you draw on landscapes, that would make you a landscape and artist. guess what? Leo's letting us know. My not to see dims only in standard. Sometimes. That makes sense. Mm. So, so it is a standard mode issue. Maybe it's something they need to fix. It's a signature. The There's no reason to dim in standard. Which would be fine if it did it on, you know, Leo, I appreciate that. But the fact that the actual OLEDs aren't doing that shows you it's not a, a global thing for them Wait, as a company. I'm going to pause this right here. Look at how bright the center of that cloud is on all the TVs. Normally, Mini LED cannot do it as well. But the other two are slightly brighter, but the Mini LED, I think it takes into account this scene very well. Can we just stop for a second and realize that the S95D is last year's like hot check? <laughs> I mean, the 95C <laughs> and now the 95D, And now right? the D is there, known and proved. And it's like, can somebody please talk about me? I'm right in the middle. <laughs> I mean, the camera is like, out of the way. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> if we put it, I mean, we put it dead center and nobody cares. And I think the TV is awesome. Wendy's one. We got her. <laughs> well, how come we didn't get her? Oh, you're in the, oh, that camera. You know what? I didn't even realize that camera's not even to capture you. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy gave me um, avocado. What are you drinking? You got avocado? The avocado. Smoothie. Cheers. Look at the health group. We are. This is our dinner, by the way. We had a breakfast, and we're going to run straight. Dinner? 3, 3.30. We're going. We're going. Oh, actually, we're going to go until my battery runs out. I'll tell you what my battery is at right now. I only have one replacement battery. That's at 80%. We're good. Okay. So let's continue this. But yes, the G4, slightly brighter, larger window. Slightly. Wendy, this is strawberry. It's banging. Look at the brightness on the G4, by the way. The 900D. Not as bright. So can't keep look at this rushing up. There you go. <laughs> so here, <laughs> in the mountains, look at the beautiful the sunlight. Now we we, we can say though, FOMO. Now we're at 2000? 2000? 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. Now we're not losing any color on the G4. No, we're not. That is very good color. So this whole like it's only pushing but white. Look at the S9 and the G4 is slightly bigger TV. That's what is that over there? Inch. <laughs> it's another G4, isn't it? Mm -mm. That's a that's 895L. Uh, come on in, baby. Let's get you in. <laughs> it cannot do 2,000 nits. 895. Oh. You're laughing at it because it's an 895L and it's struggling. 895L was last year's girl. Like, I won the pageant. I argue that G4 has the most color in this scene. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying the 83-inch size, by the way. For those of you who don't know, that, 80, that G4 is an 83-inch size. Heavyweight division, everyone. Mm -hmm. 77 is more cruiserweight, light heavy, maybe. Another good scene here. Do you feel like you've been to all these places? Yellowstone? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to happen? We're going to visit Yellowstone. I've been here my like, whole life. But put, put me, KG, you, Brandon, Classy. What is this? We'd be like, oh, I, no, I've seen this before. <laughs> like, I don't even know where this is. Yeah. 
this place? He's like, oh, that's a, that's a Western Hemisphere. What are you saying? It's like CGI, CGI created? Oh, does it exist? K KG testing the carpets at Yellowstone. Like, oh my God, his lava is burning my face. <laughs> you would say, you okay. know, it's like, remember the aquarium in Vegas? You're like, the blue is not as good in person. The dynamic dome mapping on a real aquarium was too blue, right. not blue enough. Wait. Is that a real aquarium? You need to <laughs> wipe the glass. The <laughs> you got to contrast this crap. Okay. What uh, about you, Brian? Uh, this is where specular highlights. You would think Niagara Deep would bring out some of that brightness. It, it can't. I don't know why. It should be able to. Well, let me actually stay, stay there. Let me, let me see if I can if I can just cheat first. Yeah, help it Let, out. Let's see if I can help it. We, we want to help out the Nahru D this scene, guys. We're not placating, Josh. Oh, not you, honey. You sit down. <laughs> I love the S95D. Why too, does too. the 900D have a green tint to it? So for those of you who don't know, first, we did not calibrate these TVs to their best mode. And number two, the camera, my camera sensor, also is hypersensitive to certain colors more than others. So at times, one TV will look more blue than the other, but I won't see that here. Like right now, the, yes, the 900D is a bit more blue in dynamic mode, but the subtle color differences, don't buy a TV based on what you see here because none of the TVs are calibrated. Out of the box, there's always slight panel differences. So if you want a TV that's more blue and you see it on YouTube, you might get a TV that's more magenta panel lottery. So that's why people calibrate their TVs, is to get it to that standard that's on a reference monitor. Now, filmmaker mode on all these TVs are very close, but standard mode, dynamic mode, all over the place. Now, we are in filmmaker mode, so the differences you'll see is slight panel lottery differences, as well as the difference in my sensor. The W OLED sensor will always show a little bit bluer, and on the QD OLED, the sensor will show a touch more magenta, and then <laughs> On the 900D, it's the most neutral to my sensor, right? So, although they may look the same to me, it will not look the same on YouTube. You know what's funny is the, the Eco only looks really heavy. Well, it does, but it's because the standard is just not f functioning. Yeah. Hey, Sean has a super chat for us. Thank you, Sean. Everything happening so fast after the horse scene. The 900D was my honey, but after the honey scene for a while, it was not. <laughs> but overall, in fact, it's holding its own. So, Brian said, no. Okay. <laughs> Stay away from standard mode, my friend. It's, it's, if it was 85 inches, story could have been different. So, so Sean is like, it's in the car. Bye. It really, no, refund. Yeah. Bye. Cancel. Bye. So it really depends on if you like the horses or the flowers. He's like, oh, with, the, with that one moose, I was in love. And then we went to the honey. I went and returned it. You know, that, that is so funny that you say that. I'm thinking, how many people buy a TV on one scene? Mm. I'm buying it for the moose. And then yeah, two scenes later, it's too late. It failed the horses. So on an eight-hour live stream, you bought it at minute 20. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I should stay for hour three. That's what, how we roll. When you got to the moose in filmmaker mode. <laughs> the mooses. Come on, the All mooses. Right. Oh, hey, actually, what did you do? It looks a little bit better. No, <laughs> it's still a filmmaker. It's placebo, baby. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. I think it looks great, though. It actually looks really good in a lot of these shots. And and I, I want to repeat. It looks, a bit, it looks in filmmaker mode. If you want, as Josh has said, if you want the 900D at its best, in terms of brightness, not accuracy, brightness, yeah. you need to put in dynamic. And it will do better than the <sighs> S95D in dynamic and better than the G4. It has yeah. the best tone mapping in dynamic. But it just loses all its color. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Dynamic is not its best mode. Yeah. Its best mode, I think, is Filmmaker. And, but it's because of its size that has the advantage. But now that the G4 exists at the 83 inch size, it's hard. But I, I would tell you this though. But it's, if they, if they, yeah, if they were 80, if this was 85, but I will tell you for the, um, for Samsung, that's the best Filmmaker I've ever seen for a mini LED. Usually it's a detriment at Filmmaker for like the S90. Remember the QN90A in Filmmaker? Oh my God. I want to congratulate the 900D. Look at how indistinguishable it is from the S95D. <laughs> Poor S95D is like, please, I'm right Why are you comparing me to mini LED? I want to be compared to the, the, yeah. the prom queen. <laughs> oh my God. Well, look, there's no mention of the 895L at all. It's right behind us. So the last year's prom queen has been cast <laughs> She's not even in a conversation. Master series. And that's oh, man, Sony's you want to see the Bravia 9, right? And then with just exposure, but ah. some scenes. All right, guys, how are we doing? How are we doing? 
I hope you guys are having fun. Well, I know we are. Here's the moose. They all look great now. And in this scene, so mini LED has come a long way, or LCD TVs in general. Most definitely. I mean, if you look at these scenes and you walked into this room and I didn't tell you what was what, you could not tell me which was an OLED, Brian. No, and I would, I would argue, I think if it was, you know, Robert and Wendy here and Leanne just with their customers walking in, I, I guarantee you some people would look at the Q900 and, and like it more. Just because it looks more natural. It looks, but it does have a little bit of a plasma vibe to me. But look at the local dimming on the Q900D, guys. I mean, it really off the charts. Yeah, let me just pause right there. I'm going to turn up the exposure. That's very good. Excellent. What's incredible, though, let's talk about my girlfriend in the middle. <laughs> the S95D's blacks are so black <laughs> that it looks like it's like felt. Right? It doesn't look cheap at all. It just looks... Yeah. Now, would you say if I'm more like with those blacks, they look lifted to you, or they're just a different color black in a way? It's a, it's a grayish black. It's a lifted black because of the reflections. I see it here now. I turn out the exposure, you guys can see it, but yeah, it's not as black as even the 900D, but the 900D has reflections, right? It costs a little bit of clarity, though. Yeah. It does cost. I would love to have seen the S95D, like you said, AK processor, glossy. I think that really flex the third gen panel. Now, would you guys lose your mind? This isn't happening, but would you guys lose your mind if the A95L had a separate lot of QD OLEDs at third gen? If they look identical, I don't think they would care, right? What if they say it and say, hey, look, this is the A95L Max? Oh, well, then that's a whole new TV. It's a whole new TV. I don't know why you wouldn't just do that. <laughs> Call the A95L Deuce. All right, see, so you guys got some great questions that could cut up all my questions. And if we missed your questions, obviously, uh, go ahead and ask it again. Is it possible to take a 20 minute break and swap out the S95D for the A95L? And so let, let me just... We're not doing that. Just to tell you why we wouldn't do this. Keep going. Uh, Cooley, it's because we've done some extensive comparisons, myself and many others. But if you watch my channel, I have the S95D and the S90D compared to the A95L and the G4 compared to the A95L. And ultimately, the A95L's biggest advantages cannot be seen on a stream. True. Which one would be motion. But the G4 is caught up. I thought the cinematic movement is there, but you couldn't tell the difference in motion on scene. YouTube. And second would be its XR clear processing. But unfortunately, it, it's such a subtle contrast. You have to be in person. Contrast. Least, yeah. You have to be in person, just like the G4, right? So the A95L will look indistinguishable from the 95D or the 95C. And yeah, then when you G4 get to 2000 nit, you'll see all that clipping issue, right? So I can tell you right now, the A95L, on this 2000 nit content, there will be some scenes where you're like, oh, that's terrible tone mapping. And that's what's going to happen again. So just cutting to the chase, it's not going to uh, do a good account for itself against the G4 and the S95D in 2000 nit content. A95L is when we do movies, right? So I'll do some of those. Uh, we have some movies here. I brought Alita. I brought, we're not going to watch the entire Alita. I don't want to get shut down. <laughs> <laughs> but I brought Alita, I brought Blade Runner 2049. It's like two hours. <laughs> yeah, the whole, it's not watch Alita. We got, we got time. <laughs> Popcorn. We, I wish we could do that. Do a watch party. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Alita 2049 and, and... Greatest Showman. Greatest Showman, right. So, well, Oppenheimer right there. They have Oppenheimer. Yeah, Oppenheimer. So, and I'll just give you the rules so you guys know. So, when we do these comparisons, I keep my scenes to under four seconds, right? So, YouTube will give me up to three to four seconds to show a scene and then I have to start pointing and start saying technical things so that when I do get a copyright claim I can explain look I'm education look at my fingers pointing and it's only three or four seconds right? it's a polymetal alloy and you do play fast and lose baby I know <laughs> you're like Circus Soleil at TV reviewers well, I enjoy it, right? <laughs> and well, that's why I have Kaleidoscape. It allows me to pre-program those. Oh yeah, those that's dude. Ten thousand dollars to be able to pause. I used to do it with this in my mind. I have this little clock. I gotta pause, <laughs> and then jump to the next one. So I bookmark everything. The only, the only movie with good bookmarking is Greatest Showman. Other movies, you have to memorize the timestamps. So I used to have these timestamps memorized in my head. But okay, I think we're done with Spears and Munsell. Uh, you want to do, 
You guys want to do movies or sports? Let's, let's do movies since we have, we're using this. Because we're going to do gaming. So we'll do gaming last because we don't want to switch back again. So You want to shut the camera uh, for the switch? Or yeah, 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 yeah. So put on your, what, fire? Or no, I mean, you want to you do um, movies? You want to do actual movies from a disc, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to turn this camera? All right. Because on the menu might trigger something. That is true. Thank you, my friend. <sighs> you want to do Mario Brothers if we did it anyway? No, <laughs> I, I have the selection here. Oh, she has it. Did you bring it? I have it. Oh, we got it. Wendy with the quick so disc. It's been a while since we've seen Alita. Well, actually, yeah, I like Alita because it's good color, and I know the scenes in Thank Alita. Thank you, Wendy. I used to use Alita all the time. Wendy, you're like, I'm not finding that Atmos disc, though. <laughs> I saw your face. Like, I ain't trying to look for that. <laughs> what are we doing, Alita? Uh, we're doing Alita, FOMO? Alita, yeah, let's put in Alita. It's got some good scenes, but I, usually, I used to use Alita a lot until I found out that it topped out at 400 nits and made me cry. <laughs> You're like, it's like, the brightest movie I've ever no seen. No wonder the A9G looks so good with the leader. <laughs> topped out at 400 nits. <laughs> I, I, clearly, I was not challenging it. Okay, let's catch your super chats, my friend. Okay, Ahmad. Is an out-of-the-box accuracy battle possible, more relevant to most people? Yes, it is possible. But that would be for... If we can get a reference monitor to M-Wave, that's what we'll do there. So the problem is when it's out of the box and out of the box, few reviewers will rent or buy a reference monitor to out of the box. We're gonna try to do it M-Wave. I believe we can get a reference monitor for M-Wave and we'll have out of the box as well. So not here, because we don't have a reference monitor here, but at M-Wave we should, and that is, June 19th to the 21st. So, are you jogging over there? Where are we at? Where so, we at? if we're, well, I'll, I'll reset it. I'll turn it on. So okay, so. We're not, we're not showing any favoritism. This is the guy, right. so we do our like. Our shill videos. Our shill videos, wait, uh, admitting we're shills? No, we did that, sh shills. when that shill video, <laughs> foam and I were gonna order a bunch of different props and be like, LG. Okay. <laughs> I feel like, Should I don't know what you're talking about. And do like a thumbnail like this. I have an LG hat. <laughs> Panasonic t-shirt. And oh, <sighs> think about a super chat. I used to watch 1080p sports on my dish. Filmmaker mode, it looked great. HDR Netflix, I watched on dynamic mode, it was good. That was Maybe a great shake, Wendy, thank you. Upscaling will only help, it's rocking. Yeah, I, I think you'll enjoy the 900D in filmmaker mode, honestly. Okay, let me let you answer this next question because it's up your neck of the woods. Thank you for the super chat, Chris. Confused between the QD OLED versus G4 PS5 gaming. Don't be confused, what baby. Don't be confused. Today. Everyone says the G4 is great. Concurrently, I read QD is best. 80% gaming, which is best? Brian? Well, I mean, so it's, he's, he's gone through this. So two thing, years now. Things change year after year. So I mean, there's an argument that maybe the, the QD OLEDs could be a bit brighter in game mode, SDR game mode. I don't really notice a huge different cr difference, Chris. For me, the G4 is better than the QD OLED right now. That's just my thoughts. That's in gaming as well. Um, I'm not concerned about the dropouts from, though I've never experienced it, Chris. I just like uh, with the G4, not that it matters. We do have Dolby Vision Gaming, which the um, Samsung does not have, if that matters to you. I do like HGIG when it functions correctly on the uh, on the G4, so I would say this year I like the G4 better for gaming. You know, the, they both have equal game bars. Arguably the Samsung maybe has a better game bar, more presets to customize, but I do like the ability on the G series or any of the um, LGs that if you do have some banding or lifted blacks, you can go in and lower the black level or deepen it. I do like that ability. Um, it's better for me on um, LG for that. So for me, I would give LG the nod this year in terms of gaming myself. Hopefully that helps. Okay, well, um, but, but back we said, everyone says that QD is the best, again, year after year. The G4 to me is pulling away from both um, S95D and the S90D in general. So I imagine in gaming that would translate. Okay, so Brian, this is the scene. And I wanted to use the scene to make an example. Wow, there you go. Now, does the reflection or the glare bother you? So, 
because this is a dark scene. You're watching a <sighs> subtitle, and they're all bad, right? So on the G4, you know, can you, you see reflections? Can you see it? I can't see it on camera. If oh, you, let me you know, why don't you? How about that? All right. So, well, can you, you guys to... see the reflections on? Yeah. So you have reflections on the G4. They can't. You really have lifted. Can you see it? They really can't see it on the camera. The G4. They can see the floor of the G4. They can't see them on me. Like, so if you look in the G4, can you see back in this corner again or no? Oh yeah, I can see you. If you stand in front of it, you can see your reflection actually. I can see you walking back and forth. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Let me turn up a little bit more. Okay, there you go. And so this is the issue, is this is the complaint. The 95D, oh, come sit down now. Then here, you have no reflection really. Well, you do actually see my Well, you hand. can see a bunch of boxes in front of the 900D, right? So, most of us are okay with either the G4 or the 900D. Are you okay? Because we're used to it. We're used to it. This is the complaint that people have that in these completely black scenes where you have words, it's an issue, right? So and the sun. And the well, sun. Well, it came back. In pause, it definitely disappeared. Now, here, looks fine. So let me. It does look dull compared to the G4, though. I'd argue the 900D almost looks brighter. Nine hundred D's got more brightness in the, in the um, sun. The nine hundred D. Hey, look. But look at it's not resolved as well. No, it's more detail in the others as There's far as the circle. In the G4 more detail, more detail, guys, in the G four. So if you look at the G four, you guys can't really see it. The G four is clearly it circular. It's more of a blob here, and it's gone here. Yeah, it's a larger blob. And on the A95L over here, <laughs> it's actually perfect. And, and, and this is the movie for the A95L. So yeah, the A95L so, kills it here. So if you want to turn the camera to the A95L, it's sitting over there. Yeah, let's do that. So you guys want to see the A95L. It feels like I'm at a sporting event. Now we focus on this player. You're like, oh, got it. All right. This costs more than those put together. You guys yeah. can see that? Same exposure. I haven't changed exposure. Wait, this is not an A95L. This is a now, Is G it in the right mode? Is it a vivid mode or something? This is a G4. Oh, it's a G4. Never mind. Turning away from the fake, <laughs> the fake A95L. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's very bright for A95L. Dude, right? I tell you, that's where you're low-key the funniest guy in the world. Turning away, turning away, turning away. <laughs> fake. I think the 95 l is behind you, actually. It was an 95 l here. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> Turning away. <laughs> Fake 95 l <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, good times. There's a great scene coming up. Okay, so these little sparkles, right, on this scene. So I say that's true specular. That's specular highlight right there. <sighs> so if you look at the S95D, it's funny that the black bars almost look a little bit lifted, just because the sun's hitting it in the corner. Mm -hmm. And there's no glare. But I think that's also, guys, what we say is that what's the glare like? Are you used to the glare? I think I'm used to it if you don't focus on it. Right? Where the G4, if you look at the G4 from Obias glasses, where there's no glare, I mean, it's unbelievable how beautiful that image is. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. So to me, the trade off there is not worth it. No. Because I the feel like. The black bar looks like mini LED type black bars. Here. Right? Mm -hmm. But now. The 900. But I do see the reflection of the chairs on the bottom of the G4. You can see my legs, too. Yeah. And him. See, wherever it's black is where you're going to see it a mirror. But 
you know. But it does feel a little washed out on the S95D. Yeah. Again, the Which it was, we knew it was going to. I just think that it's the trade-off. No doubt. I will tell you, though, selfishly, I'm very happy the 83-inch. We did say we did have um, LG, as reported, we have a strong enough um, power supply, correct? For the larger TVs, Mama? They did talk about that with us. Better power supply this year for the 83. So this is one of your kind of critical movie scenes. You have color. You have shadow. They all look pretty good. I saw the anime of Battle Angel smokes this movie. Look at the blues. <laughs> the anime kills this movie. Filmmaker mode is, is pretty good in this one. Actually, yes. Right? You know what? Can we stay here or no? Yeah, Because let here. me try and um, see if now the filmmaker is different on the uh, S95, S900. Maybe it handles movies a bit better. And the reason why they, they look the same as far as the W OLED and QD OLED guys is because this movie is a very a low luminance movie. So even though it's HDR, quote unquote, it's this scene is like 100 nits at most, right? So Maybe standard's clearly broken. Ooh, eco mode looks great. Hey, put it back in eco mode. Look at a blur that comes with movie is that a blur look how much detail is in eco oh yeah look at how it pops put it back in eco it's like her metal is popping it's coming out the metal chain around her neck so guys the reason we're in filmmaker for the 900d is that it's actually doing well we're not hurting it normally you guys know i don't love filmmaker but it's actually doing well so i don't want to standard i don't know what's going on with standard yeah standard's broken What does Eco have that's making it do that, though? Eco is... <sighs> Eco seems like it's the... I bet you they have them switched. How much am I going to bet? I'm sorry? I bet you Eco is supposed to be standard. I bet you it could be. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me because I've never I seen guarantee. such a bright <laughs> Eco mode before. <laughs> I guarantee you they mislabeled that. Hey, Sean, thank you for that super chat. Before we go into sports and other content, how much has Q900D impressed you both? For me, surprisingly, it's been very good. So will you buy it? So, Sean, I'll tell you this. Number one, I'm getting the 900D next week. So next week, I'll be getting the Hisense U8N coming in, and Samsung sent me the 900D to review, as well as Hisense, right? So Hisense sent me the U8N 900D. And I know you're thinking, wait, is that a shootout between mini LED TVs? I guess we can have one, right? I will have the QM8 from last year. So we're going to have a mini, mini LED comparison, the best of last year, which was, in my opinion, the QM8. And the X90L was my favorite LCD that was mini LED. And we'll have the U8N and we'll have the 900D. All in the 65-inch size. Well, I hope. I hope Samsung it's some 85-inch TV. All in the 65-inch size. So we'll have a four-way shootout where... I don't want to call it a shootout because it's not, you know, there's no, there's no calibration happening here. But it's a comparison between what is literally the most expensive TV you can get at 65 inches, that would be the 900D, to the most value-minded, which would be the QM8 from 2023, and the X90L. And then you have the U8N, which is this year's most likely value leader. Yeah. So you guys will want to watch that. And of course, we'll have that G4 as a reference to what they hope to be one day. And, you know, we won't be surprised. So, Brian, has the 900D impressed you? I I'll say that it's impressed me for what it is, but I cannot say that it's beaten the other two TVs. But for the price, uh, it's getting harder to justify because the G4 now comes at an 83-inch size. Yeah. Whereas before, I had no choice but to get the 900D at the 85-inch size. Yeah. And so will you buy it, Brian? If it was 80. If it was 85 versus 83, then you can say, well, for the extra two inches in the immersion, yes. But um, I wouldn't buy it over the G4 anyway, even before today. So to me, it's one of the best TVs in the world, but I, I prefer the G4 over everything right now. So um, the real conversation would be over the S95D. And in some of the shots, yes. But it doesn't seem to be as colorful as I'd like in comparison to uh, the OLEDs. I'm looking for a certain scene. Now, real quick, the reason you're seeing the brightness, and this is where I think it is a, a, it is tangible, is the brightness in movie mode is much better. 
Oh, we're in movie mode now, FOMO, for the... Uh, oh, look at how that pops in the scene. I just had to stop here. No, that's movie mode. That's movie mode in the yep. 100D? Yep, so I'll go back in the filmmaker. I was gonna say, what is happening in the 900D? But filmmaker... I'm enjoying the movie more in 900D. So, but 900D, filmmaker... Actually, you know what, it's better to do it this way. Let's leave it this way. Let me change them into something else. Well, I, I would be active, right? Put the, this put is, the S95D in active to see if it can catch up to what the 900D is doing. Because 900D looks really good in this scene. As a matter of fact, I prefer it best in this scene, given what I'm seeing here for this movie. Because this is, this is an action movie, right? It's a fantasy science fiction movie. But try and active and see if it can make up that difference. And we're in a bright room. So in a bright room, Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. It nailed it. The, you know what? The 900D still looks brighter. So it's going to movie. Let's we'll just see if it, if that, if it's just setting for setting. Yeah. Because right now it's winning, but I have a feeling it's going to change in a second. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you have to put it active, though. That's not an active, though, I don't think. Oh, no. I think that's in its perfect setting. Whatever you have on the 900D. That's a close match with the 900D. Specular highlight still a little bit brighter. Yep. It's it's. This is a great scene. It's still better. And you, well, well, the, hey guys, this is what it's all about now. No detail here, at all. Shadow detail is here. Let me just make sure that the toe mapping is. Oh, look what, at that. What am I here? Am I active? In, in this one, I didn't remember. This looks really good on the 900D. You got shadow and you got color. You, yeah. Good. So it's right now it's the. And the shadow detail is completely going on the G4. Well, the G4, let's give it dynamic tone mapping yep. because you have active. Or let rather, me, um, let's put a cinema home. Let me just check the uh, movie. So the tone mapping so there is active go. on. So in the G4, cinema home is the equivalent. Look at how good it looks, Brian. Yeah. Actually, you know what? The G4 cinema home, or rather just the G4 in general, there's more clarity in that text, that bright text. You see that? So I think second. you guys have been waiting for me to use my gloves, so I shall use my gloves here. Right here, there's more clarity because I think the, it's not the matte screen either. I no. just think this, this is, is the this actual. Is, I'll call this the KG effect. So KG says he sees a certain brightness, sharpness that if you look closely, you don't know if it's there, but from a distance, it really but does. But that could well. be the gloss. I mean, glossy has always yielded higher contrast ratio. Yeah. Anyway. Like, like every specular highlight on the G4, and this is a dim movie, so it's not like we're hitting the limits of the brightness, right? It feels like it pops just a touch more on the G4. What do you think? I still like the 900D. And the 900D looks good, but the G4 looks pretty phenomenal in this scene. What I love about the 900D is the black bars, for you guys that care, this is movie. So if I'm, let's just go for one sec. You're talking about 900Ds in movie, tone mapping is active, and the black bars are midnight black. So I mean, they've really solved that. I'm going to turn up the exposures to see more of that detail. They really solved it. I think the 900D for an LCD TV Looks great, it's and excellent. most yeah. people would think it's an OLED TV, by the way. Yeah, that's excellent. It's just the G4 exists. I mean, look at the contrast of yeah. the G4. I mean, I think back in the day when these were sub 1,000 nits, it's a different conversation. The problem is they're so bright, they, they can match the brightness and the contrast ratio. I'm going to leave it in movie with the active tone mapping. Oh, yeah, no, it's... It's a good setting. I, a good that setting. would be my preferred setting to watch movies. And so like. just for you guys to just to review real quick. Um, okay. The G4 is in cinema home because we are watching a movie in a bright room. And, and what I always, always tell you guys, I, I will do the same. When it's in a bright room, filmmaker is not the best mode because that was designed to be watched creator's intent in a dark room because when it was graded, it was graded in a very in dark, dark room. room. Yep. We're not in a dark room. So the best is cinema home, in a home environment. And on the s 5 d filmmaker mode active, which is literally identical to cinema home and i think I'll, I'll check to see if dynamic tool mapping is on that one i think you could do to taste because cinema home is is pretty bright as is but let me see if it's on because i really like what i'm seeing here in cinema home is the brighter one right yes cinema home is the is lg's bright 
bright. That's another thing I'll say I like about LG is having on. dynamic tool mapping is on. Is so. even in their even in their Dolby Vision foam I was having just a couple extra presets helps. You know, Cinema, Cinema Home, User, they have a lot of different ways to flex to change so the image. So if you guys own an S95D, S95C, S90C, S90D, you can get that same effect or close to what you got in the Cinema Home that I'm a tone mapping on, keep it in Filmmaker and just turn tone mapping from static to active and they're almost spot on. See how similar they are? Yeah. And of course on the 900D, what was your setting? That looks really good. That's movie, movie with active tone mapping. Any contrast enhancement? I think it is on. So this is, this is a good scene. This is a really good scene. You've got shadow detail. But if we were doing a 900D settings video, this would be what I would have on. Yeah, this would be my movie setting for 900D as well. So it's movie mode. Local we'll dimming high, contrast enhancer on high. Do you want to turn that down? See what happens? Yeah, let's play with that. No, you're going to keep it on high. It's a bright room. Yeah. You get more shadow detail out of it. So I would not get to low in a dark room. I yes. would still use it, though. The tone mapping it needs to Ooh, be... Oh, yeah, way too dark. Definitely active. So I That's think we've warm. got the setting for the 900D for movie watching in normal room. I don't want to say this is because the sun is starting to set, yeah. <laughs> moving the other way. I know it's 1 o'clock, but it's no longer directly overhead. It's 4 o'clock. So you know what's funny? Doesn't the 900D look more like the G4? It does. It does, yeah. I would think this would be the, the, the LED in the middle. Yeah. Uh, you would think that the S95D is a mini LED TV in this one. Yeah. And I think, and I don't know why. That's, that's so odd. Anyway. The S95D does have a cool look to it, though, even though whether you like it or not, it does have an interesting look to it. I think we're, we've seen enough of Alita. I know you guys love that movie, but let's move on to, to something with really good specular highlights, The Greatest Showman. Let me turn this off. But, oh. Let me get to the next super chat. You can answer that while I do I'll take it out. Here, I'll switch it. Yeah. I'll switch it. I'll turn the camera off. Does that matter? The camera? Oh, yeah. Let me turn off the camera. I'm already playing with fire here. As KG says, FOMO's playing with fire. And Ahmad wants us to know his Magnetar 800 arrived today. Congratulations. I have a Magnetar too. No, I have a Revon. Before it was Magnetar. Well, oh, the Magnetar is awesome. And I do not like my Revon at all, by the way. It's just, the, the UI is really slow. It's like, I prefer the UB820 slash UB9000, personally. Magnetar should be better. I think they improved the Revon and called it a Magnetar. Same company owns both. So I always want to get the, the, the 9000, but the UB820 is great. Oh, it's great. I've gone through four of them already because I use it so much. And that's why I switched to Kaleidoscape. I'm saying, you know, for the number of UB820s I go through, I might as well buy a Kaleidoscape, right? Hey, Chris. thanks for the super chat, Batman. Hopefully, we'll get your question. Christian says, was the Samsung 98 inch the fourth secret unreleased TV model you guys couldn't talk about? Yes. Let's talk about that real quick. The U900D, okay, so it's a Crystal Series 9000, 900, 9000. Yeah, CU, is. is it CU? It's the Crystal Series 9000, and let me tell you why I liked it so much. So they had it there next to the TCL. S5, right? That's TCL's current 98 inch affordable TV. I think it's a $2,000, maybe just above $2,000. And next to it, the 9000 obliterated it. In terms of clarity, it was as if it was an 8K TV next to a 4K TV. And it dimmed, so, didn't it dim? What was it? It was little? slightly dimmer. It, it, the contrast was slightly better. Yeah. So they're both edge lit. They're both edge lit TVs, not mini LED, no dimming zones. But on the 9000, Contrast was better, the resolution was better, even though they were both 4K because of that super scaling processor they were using, phenomenal. And Samsung told me that it's on all of their 98 inch TVs. It's just they put it on the least expensive one this year. I was so impressed. Now, the only thing is it's $4,000, the TCL's 2,000, twice as much, I don't know about that, but I know it will drop to 3,000 at some point. At 3,000 guys, that is the TV to get because you're getting noticeable improvement over the 2,000. Most definitely. Yeah, and we were, you know, we saw gaming on it. KG was there, he was gaming on both. We did a splitter through his the, the switch. It looked better on the 9000 as well. So, affordable, $2,000, S5, great. But there is a noticeable improvement. And when it's that big, if you're sitting seven, eight feet away, I was 12 feet away, by the way. 12 feet away from 98 inch TV, I noticed the clarity 
on the 9000. Yeah, I wish we could have filmed it. I, I wish we were allowed to. We weren't even allowed to film it. We weren't allowed to film it because yeah. you would have seen it. First of all, I need, I need a picture like Christian, man. Like He looks so chill in that picture. It, it looks like the cool guy. It's like AI. Your picture, it's like AI. Picture, cool guy. <laughs> yeah, my picture's like, dar. Okay, Brian, <laughs> this one is for you. Let me switch out. You look like someone who appreciates a good quality fragrance. All right, hold on a second. Let me let me screenshot that real quick. <laughs> you look like a man. I don't know if that shirt. means I look good or I look. <laughs> it looks like a quality fragrance. <laughs> uh, thank you for the super chat. That is the most interesting super chat we have ever received. <laughs> thank you, Ahmad. I will definitely look at that. My friend, I'm all about fragrances. <laughs> That's, is that the first Kalagana based super chat we've ever received? Thank you, Ahmad. I'll definitely check it out. I'm glad he wasn't like, you look like a guy that smells really bad. <laughs> Why don't you get something better? You look like a guy who enjoys his BO, right? Uh, well, we got two thumbs down and 322 thumbs up. You can't beat that ratio. I can't even see the, the comments. I'll check out the comments on my phone. Here we are. You know, it's funny, I've actually never seen this whole movie. Let's see some of the comments here. FOMO has this like Star Trek freaking track ball. When I go to touch it, it freaks out. Lisa, how are you, darling? I haven't said hi to Lisa yet. What's up, Julio? Actually, that's a great one. I'm going to do that one right now. This scene. I hope the Cosmo family thinks I look tired. Hi, Lisa. Well, if the Cosmo family's watching right now, um, I haven't seen them in the chat yet, but they did mention that I look tired, so Mrs. Cosmo is definitely watching. I want you guys to send uh, as much love as you can to the Cosmo family. Our friend Cosmo is... Uh, is in a fight right now, so please send him and his entire family uh, your thoughts and uh, all your positive energy. And I'm sure he'll be back with us very soon, but much love to that whole family and a lot of thoughts to them. So, thinking about him right now. All right. Because if he was in the chat right now, he'd be kicking our butts about the 900D, that's for sure. <laughs> because the family loves the 900D, but they, then again, they have micro LED, so... So Cosmo family, much love to you guys. Everyone send uh, him and his family, their, you know, our love. There I mean, Cosmo's family, literally, his daughters literally counted the, the uh, zone count on the Bravia 9. <laughs> They're like, Brad, because they, they watched our videos. That, that was on the stream. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, Cosmo, I mean, on my video, Cosmo's daughter, uh, Shauna, or, or uh, yeah, they, they basically said, uh, maybe Beth, one of the daughters said, yeah, it's a, it's a, how many zones? I was like, wow, they counted them. So they're, they're more passionate about TVs than anybody I know, but uh, much love to the Cosmo family, really. Great people. And uh, we're going to see him as soon as he's, uh, he's healthy, Fulmo and I are going to go visit him. So. so, Brian, what do you think of this scene? So I'll say this real quick. Now that we're out of Spears and Munsell, I really like the 900D a lot more. So if you mm. ask me about that, that uh, question about appreciating the 900D, no doubt um, I would say uh, it's more impressive now in film. In real con I can't say not real content in film because Spears and Munsell is real content. But I, I would say I like, the mo I like how it's performing in movies much better. And to be fair to Stacey Spears, he created content that reviewers and calibrators could use to double check very specific things, which means that it may not be content you watch, but he's giving specular highlights at a certain brightness, background brightness, all of that, but that's not a real movie, right? Here you have a real movie where the creator is only concerned with one thing. Is there a story being told? How does the lighting affect the story? And I think that's very important for us to review using that kind of content because do you feel the emotion that comes with this scene? Because it may not be about a specular highway, it just happens to be there, but what about the rest of the scene? So here, I think it's about that spotlight shining through 
And on all the TVs, it's about the same brightness. Uh, I'm turning on the exposure, you guys can see. I think the, now, G, the G4, though, has a, a, it really does. If you told me the G4 was the QD OLED, I'd believe you. Would you say that in the color? It seems like the G4 yeah. really just has a bit more color. Now, do you think that saturation is just, it's got to be just more saturated. Now, signature. we have it in Cinema Home, Dynamic Tone Mapping. Mm -hmm. And we have the Samsung's in Active. So, it looks... Are we, what are we on um, on the... the DS95. I think it's film. Uh, is it movie? Movie with active. Did I keep it in that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Movie active is fine. Most people will see movie and they'll put it in active. I mean, there is an argument that the contrast on the Matter D is slightly less, but then it's closer to older than it's ever been before. But yeah, the contrast in older is undeniable. It sounds yeah. absurd, but the 900D looks like a plasma. Oh, is that great? Just has it a does natural compliment, right? It does, yeah, yeah. It looks like an. It, I mean, guys, the black bars are very, very black. I was going to show you the scene, the sparkling scene. Has Samsung fixed the sparkle? <laughs> you play fast and loose, baby. Oh, you are stuntman with the content. <laughs> what kind of hair? Look at the white haired chick. Look at that hair. All right. Oh, she got a beard. So, I forgot what movie I was watching for a the minute. Sparkle, the blue sparkle in her, in her hair, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? It's glowing on them all, though. It's, it's, it's pretty good. On the 900D before, it did not spark, sparkle that brightly. So... This is what they used to dim down significantly in mini LED. But here, it's only slightly dimmer than OLED, but it's a lot brighter than it used to be. That to me is a big win for mini LED. What do you think? Isn't the brightness so close? Better than it's ever been? But if you look now, go stand on the G4 though. Oh wow, yeah, that G4 is a touch brighter too. But you know what pops up for me on the G4? It's the woman holding the binoculars. The theater glasses right here. This looks pretty bright, like gold. But look at the color. It's still bright. It just loses the three dimensionality. It's a contrast, and the yep. color and there's it's but some of that color is washed out. There's not as much gold. Yeah. But again, guys, is that accurate? Because we don't have a reference monitor. We don't know how much yellow there should be in there. Um, Zach Efron has to get off the juice, man. He was handsome as heck back in the day. Small Efron. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, just missed it. Here you go, this next one. Next one. Reach out for her finger. There you go. No, I think the matte screen is playing any part. Maybe. I mean... In that scene, yeah, the G4... Wow, and that's so in that scene, this is the specular. This is specular high. See so, here on the monitor, right? See the 900D. Can they see it? Bless you. They they, 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 will, they will see that difference right so, there. So um, let me illustrate. So these are glowing. So there's there's two of them that are glowing on her. Mm -hmm. They're still here, but I will tell you that if you look at the pixels closely, they're still flat on the S95D. This is what KG and I saw at, at, with the Starfield. And then um, here they're, they're actually flat. Yeah. The smaller specular highlights before popped. So a little bit larger, they struggle. And Sean, did you read Sean's Super Chat? No. Sean Sean I can't keep know. up with Sean. Spring Shootout is the number one from today. It's so immersing. We all watching feel like we're there along for the ride with the remote. <laughs> that feels like it, right? It'd be wrestling. q and with what it's giving along with the One Connect box for HDMI is winning. And hey, you know what? You've earned Josh's respect. He just gave you a pizza. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Josh, we stopped eating pizza about two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, thanks. Hey, Josh. This used to be a pizza. Used to be then, a pizza. Right now, you know, like, also, I'd like be sweating like a hostage so i would say that the specular highlights in this scene specifically they, they look like they're 
this is where the screen is going to hurt the S95D a little bit. And I would argue in a dark room, it wouldn't help it. Yeah. It's, a, it's always been Specular Highlights, though. Yeah. So the question for you all is Bravia 9. This is the scene I used to test Mini LED. Bravia it 9. is a torture test for Mini LEDs yeah. because they want to keep it from blooming. If the 900D gave each of those sparkle the same brightness as the other TVs, mm -hmm. it would bloom out the hat. Bravia 9 claims it can do it. And so can Bravia 9 yeah. pass this test? So if the Bravia 9 can do this, then, which, which I think it can. I think that's its point. Um, That'll be very interesting. What I like about this versus a star field is it gives you the star field effect, this but it's, is but it's, re, it's real, it's real, real, it's real content. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Well, so the, the Q900D just looks like a more filmic TV, which mm -hmm. doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does. Independent Dream says, amazing discounts. Thank you so much. That's, that's what Robert here is for, is to give you those amazing discounts. You're not going to get anywhere else. Yeah, let me show Robert. Robert, you want to check out this scene real quick? Sure. This is the scene, Robert. Well, Leanne, you might find it interesting, too. So we talk about the specular highlights. Okay. They're actually, you, you can see up close, they're actually oh. glowing. That's the oh, difference nice. between OLED and mini yes. LED. Yes. See how it glows, Leanne? Yeah. They're like lights. I'm still here. A little less so. Right. And if you look at a mini LED, they're flat. Oh, okay. But this is why people used to get mini LED TVs because they didn't come in an 85 inch. Right. So that amazing right. specular highlight stopped at 77 with MLA. Thank you. But now with the G483, but you're paying a premium. The G4 is over $6,000, but right. you know, there's always a trade off. Like if you're afraid of burning, People yeah. are like, ah, oh, I don't care if it's an MLA, I don't care if it has a heat sink, I'm still gonna get an LCD TV. But it's just knowing that what the trade-offs are. There are yeah. no perfect TVs. So Robert, we're trying to think that maybe the Bravia 9 brings this back to where we would get both the shadow detail and right. still sparkle. Right, I do expect that. I do too. Yeah. Very good. Very good, nice, interesting detail here. But if you think about it, the specular highlights on a very bright LED yeah. I think the bigger explosions show up, but on that's right. We mean on specular highlights, they're brighter. So brake lights, stars, things like that, jewelry. Yeah, and even just look at the shadow detail in the lower right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd argue Bill Fomo, same thing though. If you look at his face, there's more shadow detail on the 900D. Yeah, that's right. That's I'm right. Up exposure, so but the 900D does have almost a plasma-like look to it. Yes, really I know. I know. And. And so the people who are saying, well, you know, the colors look a little bit off, this and that, it's because the LG is for a bright room setting. It's cinema home with dynamic tone mapping on. I see. The filmmaker or the movie mode on the SNA 5D has active on. And so this is the differences when it's not in its perfect, most accurate setting. In That's the accurate right. setting, they'll all look identical. Mm -hmm. But in a brighter room, this is where the differences come. And this is what we've been telling. Hey, is there something shining on top of that? Yeah, what is that? Feet? That just happened. That's from the... Uh... Is it from the light above? Yeah. So this is what we've been talking about, right, yeah. right Robert? So oh, wow. <laughs> this wow. is happening in real time. Brian, you want to point out all those reflections in real time? <laughs> like, where did this come well, from? Well, I think it's only because the light is only hitting that one that's, spot. That's the point, right? Okay. It is. It's, it's, not, it's not hitting the other TVs. It's not, but it, it's... But, but the other TVs will have a different issue. Yes. So what we're saying is that if this was over here, mm -hmm. you would see a crazy reflection. That's right. But unfortunately, right it's center right. right there. Because it's actually hitting the screen, you see nothing. Yeah, the light is directly on the screen there. Nothing. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, it's not on the other TVs. The yeah. light's not touching the other TVs. Right. So that's a bit unfair. But then, <laughs> but then the G4 is going to have to... That's the one place where it is a problem. One, it has to hit the screen. Now, all TVs look terrible in that position. Absolutely. I know. But, but so know. don't have direct sunlight on your TV. This is what happens. The Bravia 9 will manage that well. Uh, we'll see. That's why doing it it well, has that we'll, new, something they just developed. We'll, we'll the put that Bravia 9 right there with the s And it's a VA is. panel with a wide viewing angle as well. Now, this is a good comment, Brian. I don't care about creator's intent. I care about my eyes. So. Right. It, even what if they, they want to give you 4,000 nits, he's going to take it down to something that's right. it's going to handle, that's right? So right. yeah, it's, it's also, sometimes creator's intent is not always right. Oh, look, the sun's moved on. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's like a planetarium in there. <laughs> the sun's moved on. 
I still like, in this scene, I like that 900D. Mm -hmm. oh, now I'm starting to it's like the G4 better. more filmic look, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it has more detail in the image as well. That extra peak lumens adds a lot of contrast depth. Very nice. Yeah, it does okay. look like my camera is picking up a bit more red on the LG, but again, when you're in cinema home, yeah. it's not necessarily accurate. It's just them trying to increase certain luminances and certain color spaces that they're thinking is offsetting the ambient light, right? If you don't mm -hmm. like it, then you have to play around with that, maybe with a calibrator to get it to the setting you like. Let's remind everybody that the Vanity D is the smallest, which is not optimal. We'd rather have it be an 85. I know. I'm sorry I didn't have the 85. I agree. They didn't sell them. They, they leave. That's, and that's what happens. Mike has a great comment. The, the coating got caught with his matte pants down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, with the body builder, I was like, oh, I never. And for many, Cinema Home is his go-to, which, correct choice. If you're mm -hmm. in a room that's relatively bright like here, I'd be watching a Cinema Home as well. Yes. Um, Vivid is a bit too crazy. Standard is, you know, it takes too much work to get it to look good. I think Cinema right. Home, dynamic tone mapping on. I so agree. And then you just play with contrast enhancer to see how much of that richness yes. you want. Yeah, I, I think they nailed it with that. And on the Samsung, it's similarly easy. Static to active in either filmmaker or movie mode, and you're there. Very similar to Cinema Home. But then we have mini LED fans who are saying, it's safe to say that the era of OLED is coming to an end. And, and I'll tell you why Flexner has a point. When you can get this quality, like the 900D, now I know the 900D is 8K, so it ends up being very expensive, but you could have something that looks so much like the 900D, TCL, Hisense, Sony, let's say the Bravia 7, yeah. right? Yeah. Suddenly you're saving $1,000, but you're so close. If OLED TVs cannot sell enough of it, they may just move to mini LED just to sell more TVs. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they just want to sell you guys TVs. And if you can't, they can't move a million TVs and they end up moving 100,000, whereas Hisense and TCL and Samsung are moving a million because the mini LEDs are good enough. The question is what is good enough? I think the 900D, well, this is 8K, super expensive, but the 95D would be very similarly, yes. or very similarly, as well as the 90D. Uh, we'll have the U8N in for review, so you guys will see how close it is to the 900D. So I'll show you side by side how close is the U8N to the 900D. Thank and you. If you are getting the 900D, what is that extra processing getting you? Because you're really paying for that mm -hmm. motion resolution, which we'll get into today as well. Very good. All right. Come on, different moving. And yeah, we could, um, I'll move on to the next one. Okay. Oh, or we could do, we could do, uh, you want to do s streaming? You know, Jennifer Gala stuff? I don't know where I want to put the switch though. As as I have, uh... Oh, I know where you can put it. Because I, I fixed it, I'll show you. Back here. Where it says number six, Brian, you can stick it right in there. Here, let me. You want to put her something? Actually, I can plug it in for you. I know where it is. So I'll have you answer some of that. Okay, Sean, thank you for the super chat. Is AI on both the Samsung and LG? The lady's forehead is much more natural on the 900D, more sparkle on LG. Oh, so the sparkle is coming from the OLED, right? There's no AI work there. And I believe Picture Pro, AI Picture Pro is off on it's the off. LG. It's off? Okay. We, we're going to stream and we'll have it on for streaming, just for, for kicks, right? Because mm -hmm. it's very subtle. It's not like it does. It makes a big difference. And on the Samsung, I believe it's on so mm -hmm. it is it'll be great what are you plugging on here? Oh, what's that brian what are you plugging in oh i'll show you look okay. behind let's turn the camera off though oh yeah i don't see the menu there we go all right i'm gonna do a quick source switch here let me play this Okay, so let's kind of turn this around, if you can. Gonna hold for you. Uh, or maybe turn that, it's easier just to twist it out of the way. 
or maybe the other way she could fit in there you go okay can okay, this can you turn it a little bit more maybe another two inches oh perfect ah yeah there we go. all right Uh, first thing is first, where I plug this thing in. I mean, an extension for I see the AC in my building. Okay. So. It is plugged in, my friend. All right, it's plugged in. Now, extension cord. Okay, here's your HDMI extension. I need to put that one in right here. I'll put it in. All right, so while we connect our streamer, let's see what kind of questions we got here from you guys. Jeffrey asks, thank you for the super chat, Jeffrey McLaughlin. I'm bringing my LED Samsung 3D8000 to the shootout. <laughs> because 3D, you're gonna win. I hope I won't be shot at with jokes. I desperately need to buy a G4. It's going to be on sale guaranteed by Black Friday. Just hold on. The question is what size? It comes up to 83 inch. That's where it makes its case, but it's super expensive because it's the first year of MLA. Now, what we will know for sure is this. Come Prime Day, when all the specials come out, Robert will price match That's right. plus bundle. That's so if right. you plan to buy the TV with something more than just a TV, you want to add a soundbar or whatever, Robert will give you the price match of any retailer. That's right. And then throw in a credit that applies to a bundle so you can that's get right. both less than what everyone else is offering. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. One thing about the future prices Yes, they will have promotional periods, uh, but right now they give the dealers a little bit more mock-up at these higher prices, and that's how FOMO and Brian were able to push me hard to give a 10% store credit. We won't be able to do that when the prices go on sale because we don't have the mock-up available. So right now you can get it and start enjoying it, get free delivery, get an extra 10% store credit, and start enjoying it now. Um, it makes up for it, yeah. Yeah. And I got Game NJ. What HDMI cords are you using? Well, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, I actually got, I use this. Pearl. Is it all good? What's a Pearl? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We use AudioQuest. And I as the use the brand. Rude, and then they have several Pearl. different levels. So and, uh, for, we, for the people who where cost is no object, Audio Quest. Yes. And for people who go on Amazon. Yes. Rui Pro. Oh, Rui, yeah. Rui Pro. I've had my, opt they're all optical cables because I like it thinner. Sure. Because on these long runs, like I'm right. connecting, you I'm need connecting it. You my need cameras. You need it for a long run. You need a digital HDMI. optical HDMI mm -hmm. if you're going past 15 feet. Yeah. So when I do these shootouts, uh, yeah. I always bring my opticals. Yeah. And they tend to break if you keep on bending them. So the only one that's lasted this long is Rui yeah. Pro, yeah. R-U-I-P-R-O. And right. they, they've they sent me cords before the review. And yeah. after I reviewed it, I kept it. My first cord that I received was from Rui Pro back in 2019. Yeah. I still use it. It's, it's Beautiful. a very good cord. Beautiful. Now, they do fail eventually. So I'm not going to say it will last forever. Yeah. But it's optical that's why i like it it's relatively affordable it's under hundred dollars around hundred dollars for optical if you go non-optical it's a lot cheaper yeah. so it really depends on your use case but that's what i use personally and brian what hmi cord do you use i use the ones from here the uh, uh which ones are audio quest, is it audio quest? Yeah, yeah we audio use quest. we use a lot of the forest ones yeah, I get them all from we use Pearl well, the H forest. also the hmi cord in the back is the ones from jason dustel as well. Oh yeah, they are AV Pro. AV Pro, right? But they only provide it to installers, so you can't. You're not going to be able to buy that. Yeah, AV and those Pro. are optical as well, digital mm -hmm. optical. And, and I also use those as well. I, I've been using those. Those are really nice cables. Yeah. Very. They're yeah. the full 48 gigabits per second bandwidth. Guaranteed. No matter what your length is, you're getting 48 gigabits. 
and they're very reliable. So a good question I got. And Sean, thank you for the super chat, my friend. So when he comes so late in my country, he lives in India. Oh. It comes on festivals here, which is yeah. October, November. Oh, the wait boy. is too long for someone looking for a TV. That's yeah. why Samsung LG sell more. Yes. I yeah, agree. That is true. I know. We told Sony all the time. Now, I know. Sony used to release their TVs in June. Like this year, they are. Right. So yes. the good news, Sean, they, oh, wait, but in his country, it's coming right. so late. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, last year we were like yeah. you. We got our A95L in October. Yes, huh? yes, I mean, that's what yes. That was crazy, huh? We had to wait for the shootout. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so right. We had to push right. off that long. Yeah. Yeah. You can turn the cameras on whenever you like. No, we we'll wait for. Okay. Brian. Yeah. yeah. On. Yep. Yeah. All right. So Brian's got his magic working now. Oh, very nice. All right, let's see here. Ooh, that's bright. Turn on exposure a bit. Much better, yes. Okay, so tell us, Brian, what are you watching? What's the content you got here? Oh. Yeah. So this is the one and only Jennifer Gala. Jennifer Gala. Yes. Clap, clap, so, clap, clap, clap. Best on the platform. Yeah, that is beautiful. Handmade content. So what Ooh. always to note with with this shot is shadow detail, specular highlights. And you know, can you see the building back here? Can you see the detail in the back? Uh, modern OLEDs you can. It's gonna be more prominent on the mini LED as far as the shadow detail in the back. The Bravi 9 is gonna excel here, but you can see the background is still visible. Wow. But the specular highlights of, say, the 900D don't always appear brighter. But now, can it looks... you replay that again? I'm going to turn down the exposure so mm -hmm. you can see the fire. Because that thing just, boom. There you go. OK, that looks really good. Hold on. Let me let that, uh, whatever that. I'll say the 900D looked amazing there. Mm -hmm. But going back to it. Hey, Othman, so you're asking FOMO, put shadow detail comparison in filmic mode. I can tell you now, because you're in a bright room, it's not gonna be good. Uh, shadow detail comparison has to be done in a just pitch black, right? Just dark, dark room. Because my camera is gonna pick up the reflections before it picks up the shadow detail. And that's the issue. So shadow detail is really for dark room watching. In a brighter room, you're gonna see shadow detail, you know what's gonna happen is cinema home, active, whatever setting you have for a bright room, you're gonna lift everything super bright just so you can see the shadow detail. But then, of course, that's artificial. That's not how the creator intended for sure. So then it comes to, well, how bright do you want to push your TV to see that shadow detail? Because that's very inaccurate. And then it's no longer shadow detail, right? So if you want native shadow detail without having to push it, then you have to decide, okay, if it's out of the box shadow detail, definitely dark room comparison, right? You're not going to calibrate it. But keep in mind that shadow detail near black, coming out of near black, is where calibration helps the most. That's how they fixed the G3 last year. That's how they're fixing the G4 and the Sony A95L. OLEDs struggle coming out of black, and calibration really helps that do better. But you won't even see that difference against a mini LED or Bravia 9 unless it's a pitch black room. So we... Thankfully for me, we won't be doing a shadow detail here because we cannot get the lights dark enough in here. So good question off man, but unfortunately the viewing environment today is for normal room watching, right? Now that it's getting darker, it's not as bright as it was earlier, but it's never gonna be dark enough for me to do a true shadow detail comparison. So I don't wanna misrepresent how these TVs do. So but now we're in dynamic on the 900D. Dynamic so, on the 900D? Yep. Just Why? to see. The S95D looks really bright. It does. It looks great, actually. Mm -hmm. And S95D is unchanged. 
Mm-hmm. It's same, in, uh, same as it was. Movie. I just active. want to see if the if the if the bright. But you're gonna see you're gonna see blooming from the from dynamic. It's kind of unwieldy. Well, if you pause it during the blooming, I will turn up the exposure so you can see it. So, oh, that's a good one. There you go. Oh, oops, my bad. Got it. There you go. Okay. Hold on. I'll put it back. Nice. All right. So let's look. Let's do a study of blooming for you guys. And oh my gosh, look how well the Nahir D is doing. That is really impressive. I have never seen such deep blacks on a mini LED before, Brian. Honestly. Yep. Still. This well. is really good. It is not blooming. It's just different, but not blooming. I don't see... It just pales a little bit. Yeah. It's a little pale. And if you guys notice some artifacts on the 900D, that's actually a reflection. <laughs> it's just the, the glare, unfortunately, because I turned up the exposure so it would be more noticeable. Now, if I stopped and said, you guys know which is an OLED, overexposing it, normally you'll be able to point it out based on the black levels and stuff. But here, the black level on the 900D, it did a good job. It matched the S95D. Where it struggles is the little tiny black bars that are showing mm -hmm. are struggling a little bit. I have a oh. feeling that because the contrast ratio wait, is wait, so... Wait, come here. Look at it. Because it's a bright room, the S95D black bar looks the same. Yeah, you know that's I mean? true. Right? Let me move it down a little bit. Look. I'm both a little bit lifted. Well, I'd say the 900D, I have a feeling the TV doesn't know because the aspect ratio is so high, it doesn't know it's black bars. Mm -hmm. It's kind of letting its pants down again. And it's so subtle, though. It's like you... It's not an issue. Yeah. Not an issue. Excellent, excellent. Oh, look at the black levels overall on the 900D compared and to that's the... that's in dynamic. Yeah. So where I would prefer it is in movie. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now this doesn't answer your shadow detail question, but it does answer black levels. So the black level 900D, rock solid. On the G4, rock solid. And the S95D, in a bright room, compromised. And we talked about that, right? The, the bright room raises what should be black to more of a dark gray. So this is filmmaker. Filmic mode. Oh yeah, put it. Oh yeah, put in filmmaker. See what happens. Since we're here. Oh, it was in filmmaker. It's in filmmaker now. That was in dynamic. Oh no, I think you put it back in dynamic. Try it again. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a green look to it in person it, as it's well. It's not as bright in Filmmaker, obviously, as you can see, but I think it looks, let me turn down the exposure so you guys can see this a bit. You know, where you are going to see some blooming is here in the corner, slight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Let's check your questions here real quick. Thank you for hanging out with us today, man. Clark Kent says he thinks the S95D is sharper and brighter, and the lava scene, the 95D is the clear winner. Yeah, it, it looks phenomenal in that scene. Uh, what scene? The lava? So, um, here. And Othman, as long as the OTF is following the standard, I'm fine with the 900D. Samsung has been very good with its premium TVs following EOTF. I haven't heard complaints yet, so you should be okay. Definitely. So, FOMO, there's the lava scene. Oh, that's a good one. Do a pause there. I'm loving that brightness and contrast in the hot lava scene. So I would say that without, without doubt, the movie mode is the best on the 900D so far for itself. More than out. standard, I think. Or I'm sorry, more than um, any of the other ones. Okay, I think I have exposure right now. So what are you seeing, Brian? I mean, again, the 900D looks like a plasma. It almost has a more natural filmic look to me. Mm -hmm. um, I do like its movie preset the best um, in terms of its overall image quality. I think in a vacuum, you'd be very impressed with the 900D by itself. What do you think, FOMO? 
If it was by itself. By itself, I would have no complaints. It's because it's side by side. With two OLEDs that are bigger actually, so I think that's, that's interesting. And that's why we do it though, because it doesn't feel like there's more color richness, color luminance in the other TVs. It does, yeah. What's funny is the G4 has no business being more colorful, but it is, so. Yeah, they've improved the G4's color saturation in these scenes for sure. Now, thank you for the super chat, Chris. One flagship OLED to own for the next five years, which one? I'll answer first, for sure, G4 because five year warranty. And now again, I'm in the US, I don't know if you get the five year warranty, but the minute you said five years, I want it to last five years, right? So let's put performance aside. When they're that close in performance, where you know it's minor room, environment, ambient differences, the five year warranty makes a difference. So I would choose G4 because of the five year warranty. You want it to last five years. But let's just say that you want to quote unquote future proof your TV. If you're a gamer, well, you know that the G4 has 144 Hertz nailed down. Whereas possibly the 900D and the 95D may need some formal updates to make that a smooth experience without dropouts on 144 Hertz gaming. Or then you have the other issue, which is the One Connect box. Will the One Connect box last five years? It might, it might not, I don't know. But at least, you know, there's no external boxes on the G4. However, if you have a room where there's a lot of reflection, right? it's a bright room, kind of like this room without the, shine, the light shining directly on your TV, then the S95D will be less distracting. For me personally, if I was living here, I'd get the G4. Brian. Yes, my friend. Five-year OLED, what would you choose? G4. Brian said the G4. G4 is better, it's the best OLED I've ever seen. Yeah. Now, if you waited next year, who knows? Maybe Sony will do something special with fourth gen. Well, the A95, that was the best OLED I've ever seen. The A95, A95K was the best OLED. Remember the S95D caused us to And the C9 away. was the best I'd ever seen for a long time. The A95K went out the window. So, Chris, in five years, you know what's going to happen? You're going to show up, you're going to come back in five years, and Brian will be like, where have you been, Chris? Like, these guys think I'm frozen in time. Like, I'm not going to change my mind. Like, hey, you told me five years ago the Z9D was the best TV ever made. Look what happened. And it was five years ago. Maybe so I want you to check out this scene when it gets white. Okay. Let me turn up the exposure touch. When it turns into the snowish kind of white. See, this is, all the TVs look like OLED here. The 900D looks amazing in this scene. The 900D looks like a Panasonic. It's OLED. great. Now, to give me balance about my fear of the One Connect box, Maso Wells says, my nine-year-old S8000 with a One Connect box still going strong. Yeah, but they, they had the, those were upgradable. Oh, I think they were supposed uh, to be so, HDR. So Masa, you had the best of its generation, the Z9D of One Connect boxes. This is a beautiful scene. Oh, that is a beautiful scene. Okay, let me adjust exposure on that one just a bit. That is a great looking scene. Wow. I think in this scene, now again, these, this is Cinema Home, dynamic tone mapping on on the G4, and movie mode with active tone mapping on the S95D, and the 900D has active in movie. It's movie, movie active, the dynamic contrastor is on, but that's our best. And best, and, and best in, in the contrast enhancer is on what? High? It's on no, high. high. It's on okay. high. Just perceptual will match. Perceptually, it's the this best. is the best for the 900D. Yeah. So in this scene, Brian, which, which one are you buying? Just, just for this scene. I'm still, I mean, I still love the saturation, but that's, that's, I wouldn't mind it. I'm saying if you want the most natural, accurate image, the 900D by far. I thought the 95D might look a little bit more accurate. Then again, it's a very saturated shot. Yeah. If it's a saturated shot, it is. It's, yeah. it's hard. It feels like the G4 is oversaturated in this scene. But then, truly, yeah, it's much, much. Yeah. And but the S95, quite, yeah. the 900D has looked mostly like a plasma, mm. and in the nicest way I can say that. They all look good, though. They do. But they're side by side. My personal preference is the 95D in this one. What do you guys think? What are your favorites here? Who likes the? Oh, the G4 looks Photoshop enhanced. Brian, do you agree with that? It does? It does. Othman is right. G4 looks a little bit uh, 
Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm using CGI. Uh, why do Nahru D colors look less saturated? They, I, it, it, it's, uh, that's just what it is. So it, you're not seeing it wrong. Now, it's not warm. It's just less saturated. Should you want me to try to put the, the, the live color on for it, the booster, and see if it does anything? Live color? We don't have a live. Well, they have color booster. So try. Right? try color booster on that? Yeah, good idea. So we're going to put color booster on to bring back some of that saturation for you, Piagmatic Dreamer. We, 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 this is probably where color booster comes into play. So let's... Let's see. Hopefully it's not already on. Yep, it's off. <laughs> That's the worst when you're like, hey, it's actually... All right. Wow. Now it looks like the 95D. Okay, so in this scene, you need color booster. So as you guys can see, color booster actually does something for certain scenes. Oh, wow, it looks really good, though. It's actually. a match now. So color booster for this scene. And definitely, guys, you got to play with settings. And, and I know people don't like to play with settings, me being one of them. But when you see the differences here, it means that... These things do something, but it doesn't always do a good thing in every scene. It's almost scene specific, and this is what I don't like about settings generally. But let's let's see how it goes. Let's rewatch the scene. And again, Jennifer Gala's content, if you don't know already, she shoots amazing natural scenes that are not Photoshopped. This is because the TVs are so powerful they make them look Photoshopped, right? Wow, you know Color Booster looks really good. I think it does. Jennifer Gala. On Nahru D. So guys, if you're watching Jennifer Gala, definitely leave your color booster on high on the Nahru D. It's my capture. Okay, now Gamer wants me to turn color boost on the S95D. Can you do that, Brian? Sure. Let, let's see what happens when we get to that scene. So as soon as yeah, you get we'll to let, let's let this run and we'll get to, to that part of it. Yeah. Is this camera in your way, Fomar, or is it okay? Nope. You're perfect, man. I set it up so that you would not be in the way. Because I want to shoot some, get some daytime. Oh, yeah, just keep it running. So, Sean, finally, he's feeling good about this. Sean, thank you for that super chat. The QN900D is looking what picture should be natural in a movie hall. Samsung has almost achieved what I wanted. Yeah, the 900D, it took a lot of, of attempts, right? So I, would say, so I would say, Sean, you're right, but I'm breaking all the rules of accuracy by doing it. So you're talking about advanced contrastor is on high, you have active tone mapping on, and you have color booster on. So if you're okay putting those things on, then yeah, let's do it. But and it's Sean, not though, in a bright room, you've already broken every rule of creator's intent, right? You're in a bright room. <laughs> so you're okay. If you're, if you're in a, if you're <laughs> in a okay. normally lit room, I got cinematic home, cinema home on the LG. And we, we have the S95D with active tone mapping, God forbid, right? So yeah, this is what you do with the Q900D to match the other two TVs, old, excellent OLED TVs, the best OLED TVs ever made now in 2024, that her D is blow for blow. Look at the scene. Brian, this scene is indistinguishable. Yeah. This is a great scene. It looks fantastic. And it has shadow. Oh, there we go. Let's pause right there. Can I do a color boost on the S95D? Yes, we can. Let's see what happens. Right now, I have to say, the 95D and the 900D are very closely matched, very closely matched, with the G4 looking a little photoshopped orange. But remember, G4 fans, you can always go to filmmaker mode and take off dynamic tone mapping and it would look natural. This is because it's in Cinema Home. So you would probably have to get Cinema Home recalibrated if you plan to get it calibrated anyway. Calibrate Cinema Home to your liking. This is how it is out of the box. Now, contrast enhancer's off. It's on, on the n 9 Yeah, yeah, keep contrast enhancer, enhancer off. It doesn't benefit. It. So color booster is now on high. And oh, look at that. It looks just, it looks more like the G4 now. Yeah. So uh, color no. booster overdoes the boosting on yeah. the S95D, I believe. So I'd say maybe dropping it to low? Yeah, drop it to low. Oh, it's only low and high. It looks the same, huh? Yeah. They just keep it on low. So low and high in this scene looks the same. We'll just keep it on low. It looks like G4, if there's such a thing called color booster, that's what happened to the G4. It got color booster on hyper. Yep. So Thomas Han says, watching an OLED, watching on an OLED TV, 
there's no comparison. The G4 all the way. But do I need it? FOMO. And that's why we're here. It's to stop the FOMO because your TV is so good. Why do you need a better or a different TV, right? I'm not going to say better. Why? So Ursup asks, and this is a good question. I'll answer you shortly. Why don't you play with Expression Enhancer on the G4? So Expressor, I'll tell you right now, Expression Enhancer, bright, not good. I would, maybe in gaming you might want to use that. But in bright, it just clips everything. So it makes everything brighter and clips the color. I would either keep it on detail or turn it off. In detail, it brings out more detail by lowering uh, the brightness in some areas to bring out the blacks. And I do play with contrast. I do play with contrast enhancer or expression enhancer in standard mode, in vivid mode, right? In certain modes where everything feels washed out, I will add expression enhancer. So if a scene feels washed out, that's where expression enhancer comes in play. Now, up to this point, G4 doesn't have any of those issues, so I have yet to find a need for it. I think of expression enhancer as an enhancer. If it looks good already, you know, don't add more salt, right? If your soup tastes good, don't add salt. Now, if it's bland, meaning, huh, it feels like this scene, maybe it's the scene, maybe it's the creator, or maybe it's the mode you're in, adding expression enhancer will bring out more detail by slightly adjusting the contrast to that scene, right? So I did play with it earlier. It didn't see a big difference because these are high quality content. But as we get into other contents, well, actually, you know what? Why don't we stop here? Go into a scene where there's a lot of detail. This is a good one, actually, Brian. Can you pause on that ice? Because that ice had a lot of detail in it that I think Expression Enhancer would bring out. It's a nice shot, too. So we're going to go to a scene where it's just most, there we go, pause right there. So here's a scene where I think Expression Enhancer will make a difference. So Brian's going to go to Advanced Settings, Brightness, go down to Expression Enhancer, and put it, uh, it's already on detail. Oh, already turned it off. The brightness clips some of that detail. Doesn't do anything. Can you, can you toggle, continue toggling through it? I'm going to change my exposure. Because I normally, in these settings, I like it on detail, but let me turn it up a little bit. So it doesn't do see. a lot, if anything. Okay. Yeah, in this scene, it didn't do much, right? So you want it on or off? Toggle between detail, brightness, and off. So, so they can see. Okay, in so this bright, shot, it so doesn't brightness. do a lot. I go to detail. Maybe in the more saturated preset? Yeah, maybe. Go to detail. Yeah, I didn't do much. Oh, uh, the go. water. So if you're complaining that it looked Photoshop with detail, you go to brightness, it would look terrible. And then turn it off. It looks like, yeah. So if you go off, it's slightly darker. The color doesn't change though. So you it's want the detail? More the luminance level. You want detail or off? Keep it, you know what? Because there's nothing on the same. Well, there's clarity. Keep it, go to off and then go back to that mountain again. Because they saw that detail with the mountain. That, Which mountain? The saturated one? The, satur the oversaturated mountain. The Photoshop one. That one? No. That one. Oh, wow, you're getting better at this, man. Is it this one? Yep, that's the one. The Natural Wonders. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay. Come on, that's better. Okay, so we have a lot of detail in that mountain on the right. So we're going to toggle between off, detail, and brightness, and we'll tell you what we see. Hopefully you'll see it too. So off, detail. Look for a little depth. Yeah, there's a little bit more depth, barely, but down there. Yeah, brightness so raises, like raises the mid-tone brightness, which will then dilute some of that detail. Yeah. But it doesn't do a lot, and it shouldn't, right? It's very subtle. Yeah, it brings back some of that detail. So, you know, we would imagine that it would do some work in here. It didn't. It doesn't. It really just kind of brightens it. Right. Hey, is AI Picture Pro on? Let's turn that on if it's not on right now. So we're going to leave it in detail because we're having fun in Cinema Home anyway. Go for clarity. Mm, you have to go to uh, AI services. Go down to the wrench. There you go. AI service. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to turn on AI Picture Pro and nothing much. It does clean this up. Why don't we wind and play a little bit? What, you see more detail there? Yeah. Okay. So, Brian sees a little bit detail with that grass, but it's so subtle that I'm going to have to spend more time. Well, so we, we, can look at, well, we can look at it right now. Hold on. Let's, um, it should make it much easier to toggle on and off, though. I know. Okay, yeah, picture So pro. let's look okay. at the grass. All right, look at the grass. From here, I cannot tell the difference. Can you tell the difference from over there? No. Yeah, from, what is that, 12 feet away? From 12 feet away, AI Picture Pro doesn't make any difference at all. No, it's not doing anything. It doesn't do anything, right? Uh, I'm going to have to give LG a call. Well, I mean, it's paused. Maybe it has to be playing. I don't know. And Thomas wants to share. I took your advice with the C10. Wow, that was a few years ago, wasn't it? Haven't regretted it. Hey, it's going to last you. And when it breaks, guess what? We'll be on the C6, C7. Imagine that. And Sparky says, I'm not going to be sitting in my room looking at all of these, but I am impressed with a 900D. As you should be. 900D is not inexpensive either. So it's, uh, it's making a good showing, guys. So this is natural content. This is all food. This is where a filmmaker is your friend. Oh, they're good. So if you're into fruit, well, this, this has like the natural colors with Jen does. So I love this for filmmaker mode. Now, Ahmed wants to share that the G4 and the S95D are trading blows in different scenes. Some scenes I prefer the G4, others prefer the S95D. I'm with you. Um, like <laughs> that last one was a bit oversaturated. I liked the S95D the most. But in this scene, they all look good, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, this is, but this is all salad, real, but great. this is real stuff. These are, this is not any kind of enhancement. Right. It's not enhanced, right? Like the grapefruit, all that looks very natural. Although, do I want, do see a no, little bit of- Do you want of, them in, uh, Filmmaker? See, see color banding, Brian? This. Yeah. And guess what doesn't have color banding? The 90D. Yep. You guys saw that? The 90D didn't have any. s 95 d had a little so. bit, and, not, and the G4 had the most. And that's just cleaning things up. Oh, stop right there. You're going to pause right here. This is the AI in action, my friends. Look at that. I'm going to have to lower my contrast so you guys can see the banding on this. This is what we call banding. Oh, you want this on? We want the AI on or off? It should be on. Hopefully, that could clean it up. We're going to give it a shot to clean things up. Because I do know that 900D has all of its AI processing on. So I don't know if it still has oh, it. I might have turned it off. Yeah, let's turn it on. I... Okay, turn it on. And rewind and play. Because sometimes you have to play, the picture has to be moving for it to work. So right now you see that the... Nine, the G4 had the most obvious banding. And it could be expression detail, Brian. Maybe we're expressing the banding in detail. Okay. So we're going to turn off expression enhancer because maybe it's that detail enhancement that's doing it as well. What, was, see, the, what was it on? Uh, what was the uh, optimizer? Oh, uh, it's under... It's off. Do you want it on or off? Turn it on. Yeah. That's brightness. We don't want that. Yeah, keep a doctor picture off. That does crazy stuff. And, and turn off expression enhancer. I think I have it off already. Uh, yeah, turn off expression enhancer. I know it's on detail, and it's possible that they want, they think you want to see the banding, so it's expressively enhancing the detail of the color banding. So let's see if that fixes it. So we're going to turn off expression enhancer. It was on detail. Let's turn it off. And we're going to rewind the scene and play it so that all TVs have a shot at reprocessing that feed. Now the noise, now the noise reduction and that stuff is still on. Yes. So, what noise reduction is on? I is believe it? it is. I think it's in my home. I don't know. But whatever the default is. Well, let's turn it. it. Let's turn it off because sometimes that actually hurts it. Okay. And and whatever is on the Samsung, keep it because it's doing a good job. So yeah. noise super resolutions on low. Wait, put it on high. Let me see if it does anything. Yeah, that didn't help or hurt. No. So we're going to turn off super resolution. And noise reduction. Huh? 
in theory, go, go to go to auto. That, that's in, in trust that the Alpha 11 knows what it's doing. We'll put on auto. But the smooth gradation should help it in theory. Oh yes, yeah, smooth gradation should help it, right? By definition. Okay, we're gonna go to smooth gradation. It's on low right now. Let's go to high. It does less than that a little bit. It just barely does. Yeah, it should do more. So toggling it, we see there's a slight subtle change. Okay, all right, I'm gonna play through that scene again for you guys. So smooth gradation is on high in the G4 and it does have the worst banding. So although processing is better in some things, specifically in this case, it's not better. So there is no perfect TV. And it's the 900D has thing. nothing. What? The 900D has nothing. 900D it's just the technology. It's got, I mean, it's got nothing. No, but also this could be fixed in a firmware update if they adjust the But there's process. nothing. I mean, it's... Oh, it looks great. I, I can tell. Yeah. It looks better than the S95D. 95D has some, and the G4 had the most. The most, yeah. All right, it's hit, which leads to this great segue. How, thank you, Swirling Dragon Mist, for the super chat. How can I clean up the banding on my C1? So there are two types of banding. If it is the vertical banding that you see when you're panning, and you have this gray banding, and it doesn't move as you pan, it's just these gray lines, right? then that cannot be fixed. So oftentimes, if it's a new TV, it doesn't sound like it's a new TV, but for those who are just buying a TV, you're seeing it, run bright scenes for hours and then do a pixel refresh, that often helps. Okay, that helps at least clear some of that up. Now, if it's color banding, like what you're seeing in that last scene, the green, there's nothing you can do really. That is a processor weakness of the TV. And if they fix it, they would fix it in firmware at some point. But if at this point it's not fixed, that's just what it is. And that's been a complaint of WOLED in certain scenes where it cannot completely capture all the color gradients. So where it doesn't capture the color gradient properly, you have banding. And QD OLED natively eliminates that because of its wider ability to cover more colors at a higher luminance. It's more gradient, right? So color processing does help if the processing is good enough. And that's where Sony wants to show off is, you know, we have the best processor out there. Ours look the cleanest. And so you have these different themes from different TV brands. But the C1, this was back a few years ago when they still well, clearly haven't perfected it. So it's a work in progress, but they've perfected other things. So thank you for that question. Great segue. The standard on um, on the S95D works though. Totally different on the 900D. Lisa says, I don't like the banding, but I still think the G4 is good. There's no perfect TV, right, Lisa? It's good in most things, but in that one scene there's banding. If you can live with it, and you don't watch a bunch of green grapes flying all over or green cucumbers, <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? There is no perfect TV. There's always something amiss, but as long as you can live with those compromises and you love the strengths, you're good. But so, what are your thoughts on the banding? Because uh, you know, your camera, the colors do look very different when they're green, right? They do come out? Well, it came out. Uh, I was focused on showing off the banding because, you know, the color differences, there's no way my camera is going to capture. Yeah, but see, even on my camera, it really looks like light blue. Oh my doesn't gosh, it? it's pink. It, <laughs> that's sensitivity to, that's a magenta sensitivity right there, my friend. There's no way to fix that, huh? Nope. It's a sensor difference. And Brad has a great point. I want to repeat what he says. Personally, what you see in stores and on these reviews isn't always indicative of your environment and content. You can make it work. A legit credit card on file could charge for damage. So ultimately, the best this will do is give you a collective knowledge, right? If you watch enough of these in different environments, so you have this Valley Electronics environment, you have Pitch Black environment, you have Classy's environment, you have Brian's environment, you have my environment, KG's environment, you have the shootouts. All those environments, if you look at the conclusions and what the judges are saying, what we're saying, 
You're going to have a collective wisdom about the feel of the TV. Again, when you bring it home, it may not look anything like what you've seen, but you get closer to the answer. So if you know you only watch in a controlled brightness, right? Then avoid reviews where it's a bright room because guess what? They have to adjust that TV to the bright room to even shoot the TV properly because then it'll look too dim. But what do they do? Do they put it in cinema mode, cinema home, uh, IMAX mode? Are they putting it in cinema home with dynamic tone mapping on or off? We don't know. And so our hope is through these exhaustive playing with the toggling with the settings, you get a feel for what the settings does and maybe you could think, you know what? I'll give this TV a shot. I think that setting could work for me. But it, it does take a lot of research. Now, for those who don't care, look, I only have five minutes, what should I get? Then there are certain standby TVs that do most things right. Whether it's a Sony, a Samsung, or an LG, most things are right in the dark or right in the bright. So right now, I think the G4 does most things right, but then the S95D and the 900D, I don't think they did anything wrong, right? It's just slightly different. Like this B scene, they all look the same. Except it's a little bit more orange on the G4. I think it has more color, it feels like. It's just be the saturation, it's is, saturation. Up, is higher. It's a higher saturation. Amon, thank you for that super chat. Would it be safe to assume the AI on the LG would gradually sort the banding and will look better in a few months? No, it depends on why it's doing that color banding. If it's banding because of algorithm, software processing and not doing it right, then yes, that could fix it. If the batting is the limit of W OLED, meaning there is a color at that luminance it cannot cover. So it's making a sudden jump from one color to the next and you see that jump as banding, no amount of software is gonna help. So we don't know why it's banding, but depending on why the banding is, it may or may not be fixed in firmware. And if LG doesn't know about it, they won't even fix it. Because that's just that one scene up to this point. Yeah, they're not watching the scene over and over. Yeah. It's just that one. They don't know, right? Isn't self-learning what AI does or must we wait for a firmware fix? So there are many types of AI, my friend. And right now it's just the word. This is not self-learning AI, trust me, because someone's got to train that AI. So the, tr the person training, first of all, is this an AI that is using new training data? Or is it more of a neural network? that they call AI, where they feed it such a large amount of data. And then that system goes to that data and finds the best match. And the closest match is this, but it still results in banding. Unless someone's starting to add more data points to eliminate the banding, then the AI cannot fix it. And so it goes back to the human being. The AI itself does not go out to look for those correct images and then bring it in. That's our job as humans. So I don't think LG is doing that. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Um, maybe next, maybe they do it every now and then. They just dump a whole bunch of stuff, but someone has to be there to make the corrections, right? So yeah, AI is not a not a end all. Someone's got to train it and correct it. That's the key. So you're gonna have to wait for a firmware fix, though. Uh, it's not that kind of AI. And false hope, talking on firmware updates, if you guys don't know, LG will update their WebOS every year for five years for every model since 2022. Absolutely, they definitely update their firmware frequently, sometimes two or three times a year. Now, over the period of five years, their support is right around five years, right? That's good, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to switch over to your DJI. They feel them? Yeah, I'm starting to lose mine, and so are you, I think all the... So we're gonna swap the microphones real quick. So we're gonna take a quick two minute break to swap our microphones. Be right back. Your bag is where we are. Here's the bag, you have a case? Oh, you see my microphone somewhere? Right, the whole, the whole case and everything. I just have this one. Yeah. Oh, it's in here. It's in my, my holder. There's my microphone. Can I put it in here? Okay. Oh, those are, those are yours? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is my one. This is my microphone case. Oh, well, just stick it in there. I'll find it later. 
Ivan, druga And we're back. So we went through one set of DJIs. Now we are on pair number two. Look at us. How many hours was that, Brian? We started at, so we started at one something? One. Well, 20 after one. One, yeah. Okay. Making sure audio, you guys, can you guys hear our audio? So it is two o'clock. We start at, well, it's five o'clock. Is it five o'clock? Yeah. So we start at one. So the DJI Mic 2 lasts for four straight hours. Congratulations, guys. That's pretty impressive. So we're on a second set of the DJI Mic 2s, and we're back. So thank you for that false hope. And Sean, thank you for hanging out in India with us. I know it is very late for you. He's doing an all-nighter, man. <laughs> is ColourPop on or off on the Samsung? Sports section I am waiting for. Hope it's next. It's 3 a.m. here. What is he looking, what's he looking for? Uh, let's do sports. So um, I will, let me see. I have YouTube TV, Brian. So you want to talk and answer questions, I'll put on sports next. That is a good idea. And Color Pop is on the 900D, Sean. We put Color Booster on high. It is so on 900D on high. Color Booster looks amazing. It actually looks very natural. On the S95D, Color Booster on high. It's off now. Depends on the content, so it's not always good. So let me. It's off it's, on the S95D now. It's off on the S95D now? It wasn't so, really helping it, it was kind of hurting it. You don't have YouTube TV, do you? I do. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. So let, let me, let's switch to YouTube TV real quick and and I'll play with the pause, so um, Let's pop and, and we'll avoid the NFL because that's where we get in most trouble. You want to shut the camera down? <laughs> yeah, we shut the camera right now. But maybe college hockey won't pay attention to us. Good? All good. Oh yeah, I tell you, these micro batteries, I'm at 75% still, it's great. <laughs> All right, JW asks, what's the record for a live stream with 300 viewers? We've got oh, 300 okay. viewers still? You guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with me. So the record is last year, we had about 300 viewers last year, and oh, okay. we so went sweet. for almost look 11 hours, I think, on the next day. So last year, <laughs> doing the same thing like in the spring. So, so, yeah, definitely. You guys are going to kill the record this year, though, because Brian, we haven't even started gaming yet, so Brian's going to do some gaming, and it'll be PS5, and we we'll see what happens time? then, right? Are we having dinner? Please. All right, I'm going to let you uh, find And we're you. much louder, too. It's because it's Brian's DJI. Oh, I had to adjust mine downward a little bit. Here, I'll take it down a bit. If it's a little too loud, let me know. But that should be better, right? I'm reducing my, all of our loudness just a touch. Let me see here. Oh, Brian has his loudness up by three. Brian, what's up with that, man? Okay, hopefully loudness is better now. Okay. Let me see. How about nachos? You have nachos? Yeah, nachos with like Squid or chicken or something. I'm going to try and challenge Wendy to find me squid nachos. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just take chicken. She's like, are you guys ready to eat? I'm like, well, okay, the smoothie is good. Let's move on to nachos with squid or chicken. Come on, I'm in the middle of New York. We've got to have squid nachos, right? 
All right. How is VRR flickering on the G4? So we're going to be testing with the PS5. And unfortunately, through a splitter, VRR is questionable. So we're not going to test VRR. It's going to have to be, Brian will do a dedicated test on the G4 with no splitter to make sure you guys get an accurate perception of that. And he will do it with PC gaming as well. So there's no PC gaming today. He'll do PC gaming, 144 hertz, VRR, all that good stuff. And he has the NVIDIA 4090. So he'll be able to test all of that for you guys when the time comes. But it's not today, unfortunately. But we will, we will have PS5 for you guys though. So Michael has a great point. I have to bring this out because I think Samsung got caught unaware. I agree, the 900D you would think would be much brighter than the OLEDs for all the money you're paying for an 8K TV. This was supposed to be the year of AI, AI resolution, right? Improving the motion resolution, AI upscaling. And then Sony comes in at the last minute in November. Guess what? 4,000 4, nits, it's a thing. <laughs> We're gonna do 4,000 nits. Everyone, get on the 4,000 nit bandwagon. Hisense, I'm on, I got 5,000 nits. TCL, I'm on, I got 5,000 nits. And, LG at the last minute, I think we could manage 3,000, right? And Samsung's like, wait, 4,000? Yeah, it's a quick thing. I was worried about the clarity. <laughs> clarity. I thought you guys wanted clarity and processing. Where did this come? <laughs> a little behind. So needless to say, I expect all 4,000 nits from Samsung at CES 2025. But they, they missed the boat on this one, mostly because Sony surprised everyone. They thought that Sony was done with the brightness with game. With many LEDs in general. Oh, yeah, done with everything. And suddenly, yeah, 4,000 nits. And, and then everyone's proclaiming 4,000 nit HDR is the thing. All right, let me turn on the TV. We got some sports going. And I will help. Okay, Brian, let's see. How about, I'm trying to think. You're DJing, right? You you know what to play. That's that yeah, I do. To. I'm wondering, golf or oh, oops, there you go. Golf, there you go. I think golf. Golf is the least likely to get us in trouble, and you get to see <laughs> the ball fly. Okay, so we're we're gonna watch some golf, and <laughs> let's let's turn on. I'm gonna turn on the. The AI, the AI is on the Samsung, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. And since it's on my channel, Brian's okay with it. Let me double yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just double check, make sure it's on. All right. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm, I'm going to wait for this guy to, let me see if I can fast forward it. He, he has to tee off, right? I got to see that ball fly. Okay. All right. I'm going to rewind that because that's the perfect one to do right there. So as soon as Brian confirms that, I'm gonna turn up the brightness a bit. You want the contrast enhancer on, it's off. Uh, keep it on. Low, right, put it on low? Yeah, keep it on low. I want as much detail as possible. All right. You know if they have an auto HDR remastering, you can play with that. Yeah, just turn that off. So what's funny is it's SDR. It turns back into static. That's well, what it uh, is. Picture mode. Put it in dynamic or sports. Put it in sports. I want oh, the right. word there sports. Is sports yeah. isn't there? That way we know if there is a sports mode. There is, is there? there. No. Then put it in standard. Is oh it? wait, standard's broken. It's put not, it in. I'll tell you, it's not broken in SDR. Look at that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Keep it in standard then. That's fine. And then I'll put. Then let's put the other TVs in their appropriate modes. Then we'll do the G4 in standard or sports. G4 has its own sports mode, so we'll give the G4 a sporting chance. <laughs> Vivid. Does, is there a sport mode? Oh, there it is, found it. Okay, so, so the, G4 uh, is in sports mode. The 900D loves SDR, I'll tell you that. Oh, here's your, here's your uh, thing. Oh, there it is. I'll put it on, go ahead. Okay. And let me put the S95D in maybe standard. What mode do you have the 900D? Um, it's in standard now. SDR, it seems to be better. Okay. So we're putting the S95D in standard as well. Ugh, how are we doing, everybody? And I'm going to give it max motion setting.
Oops. No, we're talking about steaks. Who's eating ribeyes? We got steaks in the chat? You talking about steak? What was that? Yeah, Lisa talking about steaks in the, in the chat. Steak? We're going to have steak? I don't know. Did, 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 did I receive enough uh, super chats to get steak? No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Scott Cope, you said five see. bucks. Let's see this. Okay, I think this will do it. We're playing commercials like the whole the whole thing. Okay, yeah, that's that's how they're making their money with commercials now. The whole screen. Right. He's gonna <laughs> tee off. Okay, look at the motion, Brian. Just a little commercial. Oh. Look at the commercial, the whole screen. Why is that the whole screen? Oh, there you go. There we go. Okay, here we go. Let's see if the ball moves better on the 900D. 900D looks bright, though. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It looks good. Yeah. Now, does it look better? Let's All right, it looks the same. Let's rewind that again. Okay. That ball is in motion. Looks the same. Let me turn the exposure down a little bit. Okay, let's rewind this scene. So we're watching live, almost live golf. They, they all look actually pretty good. So yeah. let's try it one more time. And there we go. Okay, so apparently they don't need processing here because all three TVs look very clear. Yeah. The motion resolution is excellent on all of them. So maybe hockey? Which is funny because golf was the, expand, the example they gave us. That was the example they used at CES. Maybe that ball has to move even faster. Yeah, he was just chipping it. Yeah, who's teeing off next? This guy. Why is the saturation so crazy on the GF G4? Uh, it's in sports mode. Oh, okay. Who's watching Young Sheldon? Oh, my kids love it. Is this a commercial or is this a real thing? Oh, it's a commercial. Man, that sports mode was loud on the G4, huh? Yeah, that sports mode is a bit overdone. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay, so he's going to tee off here. Okay. Funny, I would think the G4 looks like it's the freaking Mini LED. <laughs> Doesn't it? Doesn't it? The G4 is the sport mode is super saturated, guys. That's oh, a great shot. Was that a drum? Here we go. That laser ruins it. Yeah, why are you putting lasers on it? Okay. Find the ball. I can't see the ball anywhere. <laughs> oh. Hit those people. I, oh, man. Of course, it, he flubbed it, it. It knocked someone out or something. Hit somebody. Damn. He's like, oh, my bad. Okay. Okay, now I know where the ball is. I can look for it. Oh, yeah, I, he hit it so bad that the trees were coming. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the fairway, baby. All right, how about this one? Oh, did I miss him? There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. This is how golf is. I normally don't watch golf. Yeah, you have to lie, but their editing is terrible. <laughs> you play by the editors, right? Okay, the here we go. The okay, here we go. 
If I cannot tell the difference in this scene, we're done with golf. Yeah, and he's just chipping it too. Uh, we're going to do baseball. I'll be lucky to get it in before I get shut down because I think MLB is a pretty, pretty aggressive. Okay, all right. So let's look at the ball. The ball is, is definitely an issue here. Brian, which ball looks more clear to you? Doesn't look like a ball in any of them. I thought the 900D, yeah, this ball's not impressive. I'm not seeing the motion resolution improvement. And remember guys, this is YouTube TV. Okay. YouTube TV has the worst bit rate. There's not a lot of information there. So not even Samsung 900D can save that ball. Uh, they all look long and oblong. No clarity at all. Can I stop and say we are probably the only TV reviewers doing this? We were definitely live not. golf, catching a ball as it as distorts, it falls, as it distorts, oblong, <laughs> and it just bounced off the green, and all the TVs look the same. Mm -hmm. um, the 900D does have an advantage, so we'll we'll stop there and go to the next sport. Ah, New York Mets, Dodgers, great. All right. Pitching? Oh, hit them. <laughs> all right. We've so. seen all the screw-ups today. <laughs> <laughs> the last two sports, we've seen people get hurt. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Here we go. I had to pause right Let's here. See if he hits him, too. I like the 900D's image quality, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It looks more true to life. All right. Is this where he got beamed? Is this where? I don't know. Yeah. Who is it? Have you rewinded it? Here we go. He's like, here you go. Got a bug on your back. Ow! <laughs> nice pause. Is that the there actual ball on his so, so the ball, no, that's not. The ball is right there. To I was going right. to say, what's on his back? That circle? So the ball is right here. Right? So we're going to see how it looks. So that ball that bounced off of him. It looks more clear on the G. No, it looks very similar to G4S95D. 900D. Yeah, you got him. Uh, you know what? In this one, it might actually look worse, Brian. Here. Really? Yeah. Get out of here. Samsung, man. You, you got to look at this, right? Look at this game. So you see that ball? It bounced off his shoulder. See that? Oh, it's gone. Right? Yeah, it's kind of gone. Right here. I mean, I can see what they're doing. They're trying to, but it's most clear on the G4, don't you think? Well, here it's like blurry, flag fragmented. Mm -hmm. I think they'll do it in slow-mo next because that bean is a good one. They're going to replay it. <laughs> Poor guy's like, please. Yeah. There we go. Got it. Right before it hits him. So, so, so far it looks okay. What is that white spot? They put it there? Yeah, they put it there to see where he got hit. Oh, okay. Okay, so I, I think we can confirm the motion resolution thing. Either I don't have the right setting, which... Just possible. What setting should it be, right? So I'll talk to Samsung about that. I'll have the 900D to double check. So I think we've done enough. I, there's nothing more I can do to get it to the right setting. So let me see what comments you guys have about the motion resolution real quick. You know what? When Lisa says this, it tells you all you need to know. And you guys have to know Lisa, only Sony's. Only yeah, Sony's. Doesn't really, yeah, she's Lisa Sony. says the G4 looks clearer. That's it. The queen has spoken, my friends. Thank you for the super chat, Sean. Play cricket. <laughs> Bro, what do you think this uh, is? Can you fight cricket on your channel? I'm not on my channel. I mean, you can try finding it on YouTube. YouTube TV. Sean, for you, I will do cricket. Uh, I'll have more time with the 900D when I get it next week. So I will, I promise you, I'll have cricket on mine. Uh, we're going to have, well, it'll take us too long. I'm going to type in cricket and they're going to literally show me cricket. That's how <laughs> yeah, Americans are. Praying Mantis videos. <laughs> 
Uh, I love it. Uh, play cricket. It's great to check motion. Ball travels really fast. And that baseball traveled really fast too, right? Samsung in intelligent mode. Picture mode optimized. I can't tell if this is sarcasm or not. <laughs> From Zinuit. And, you know, and let's just talk about the G4. So obviously the color is all wacky and stuff in sports mode. But the, the 95D and the G4 looked as good as the 900D in these motion sports where it yeah. was either the golf ball or the baseball. But sometimes G4 actually did look clearer, right? So still, my favorite TV for sports. The G3 was my favorite TV for sports last year. G4 has taken that mantle by being brighter and having better processing. So, yeah. Definitely. The G4 is baking the colors because it's in sports mode. Now, you could watch sports in other modes. So, this is sports mode, which is kind of nuts. Probably just lower the saturation of the color. Uh, I could. Let's see. So, if you guys like watching Ooh. in sports mode, can you do anything to kind of make that green less vibrant? Well, you said color. It should be under the saturation for vibrancy. Go under. Is there? Which one? It's on 80. Drop that down to like 60 or 50. Oh, see a yeah. color depth? Oh, no, I see. I see. And then lower that. There you go. So about 50. Okay. Yeah, it's closer to the other ones now. Yep. Okay. And let's see what kind of... Is it dynamic tone mapping on? Auto dynamic contrast. Oh, yeah, it's SDR, so there's no dynamic tone mapping. Okay. All right. It looks more manageable now. So, guys, if you have it on sports mode, take your color down to around 50. Yeah. And it'll look very similar to the other two TVs. I don't know why it's so high. 80? I don't know. Hmm. So, yes, we can fix the baked colors. Look, they're sharing cooking. They're sharing cooking recipes. Lisa, combine two tablespoons of sesame oil, <laughs> a tablespoon of soy sauce, rice vinegar, honey, a pinch of black pepper, and you're feeling fancy. Wait, wasn't he the one Maybe lost uh, the asking, plot. asking about, about your... How fresh you smell? Yeah, my husband did that. That's, so that's, the, that's a recipe that. for uh, for your cologne. Making some organic uh, yeah, cologne. Yeah, yeah, John. It is pushing the green, so we took the color down to fifty. So now it's good. <laughs> uh, we're taking requests. The Celtic versus Aberdeen Scottish Cup semifinal. And now we do have some fans of the 900D. Shane wants it, but the price is ridiculous. I agree. Wait until the year turns to 2025. That's when you get max discounts on the 900D, no doubt. Now, Michael is impressed by the 900D, as, as are we both. Now, maybe they overhyped that motion resolution <laughs> just a bit. Yeah. I'm going to have to call them and ask them, hey, I need to test this. Yeah, what setting are we missing? What content? Like, give me a source. I'm using YouTube TV. Did not impress. So as soon as I find clarity from them, then we'll find out. Was that gold outline just added? Yes, you like it? I, I added it. Let's try to be fancy. <laughs> hey, FOMO Brian, what HDMI splitter are you guys using for this TV comparison? We're using AV Pro, so it's it almost like dealer only, but I use it on my own personal comparisons. So I have a splitter at home that I've been, I used to use Blackbird by Monoprice, but they kept on breaking. Sorry, modern price, but it is what it is. It lasts literally 12 months and then it's dead. So every 12 months, spend another 150 bucks to replace it. This one by AV Pro Edge, I think, is uh, pro level. It's what we use for all the shootouts. It's what we use here at Electronics, and it's what I got from Jason Dustel. So AV Pro Edge, their splitters, rock solid. It's commercial grade. It's not cheap, but that's what we're using here. This is an eight by eight super splitter. It's awesome. I love it. I need a splitter that won't lose picture quality when splitting Citadel, and which you can do Dolby Vision to. Ah, if you want a Dolby Vision splitter, a good one, then I also use HD Fury. So I use their top-end Dolby Vision splitter. It also splits, I think, certain gaming resolutions. So HD Fury is my other one, but that one's limited to one by two, right? One source in, out two. But since I have like six TVs compared sometimes, I don't use that. But if I need to compare Dolby Vision, I do use the HD Fury one. So HD Fury is a good one. And they do support certain gaming features if you want to split the gaming part. Not VRR, but I think 4K 120 and stuff like that. Here's hockey. And was, oh yeah, hockey. Here we go. Hockey puck against white ice might work better. All right. Let's do it. 
YouTube is patient with me today. Here we go, hit, hit, hit. Can we find the puck? Find the puck? Oh, there it is. Oh, nice midair. Shot. Nailed it. Okay. Puck in midair. All right. You know, I should get paid to do this. <laughs> what do you do? I, my job is to pause and hold while the hockey puck is in midair. Okay, Brian, what does it look like? How's the hockey puck doing? They look about the same. About the G4 same. G4 might be a little bit more solid. Mm -hmm. But let's compare the brightness. Now, this is what I've said. This is where, let me put the, the S95D in dynamic mode so it can max out its brightness. Is this the one? Yeah. Yep. What do you want the other ones in? Uh, so this one is good for the sports mode because most people will watch the G4 in sports mode. I'm going to put the, this one in dynamic to give the S95D a chance to shine, pun intended. There we go. Yeah, it gives you cool and standard. That's it. it. Doesn't give you any warmth. Standard. Yeah, it doesn't give you anything else other than just. Oh, like there's no cool available in dynamic, unfortunately. Okay. So the puck, all look the same, on all the TVs. Let's see what resolution this is too. It is. Doesn't it say which resolution? That's interesting. Oh, HD. Okay, 1080p. So it's got maximum 60. Maybe 60 is too much. Maybe we should go down to, nah. If you don't watch YouTube TV, you always have it at 60, so I wouldn't change that. But as you can see, the S95D cannot keep up in white brightness. Nope. And I've only held it for a few minutes. Now, I think it may think it's a logo dimming issue, which, could be, so we'll just keep it moving real quick. It didn't come back. Still not that tight, right? I mean, it's not, okay, so the, the definitely the brightest, it appears, is the 900D by a touch. But the ice is still, there's still much dimmer on the S95D. Yeah. And it's blue. That's not even a camera sensor, that's just there. Oh, that's a good stop. Look at that, that's, no, that's ridiculous. What is? The S95D is so much dimmer. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. No From bueno hockey, hockey TV. No bueno. Well, the G4 has always been my hockey TV of choice for that reason. And this is SDR. Oh, okay, I see. There's that puck. Oh, they all look the same. The okay, I think, I think is, we're... The brightness is different, though, no doubt. Yeah. So the G4 is... So this applies to you, Sean. 900D, definitely bright enough for sports. I have no doubt about it. Motion resolution, could be hype, maybe not. I need to work on that. Uh, the G4 equal to the 900D in brightness, which many people did not expect. I did. The question is, can the Bravia 9 be brighter? Right? That is the question, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, let me turn it off. What do we do next... Oh, we we'll keep those. We should probably do some more gen. What? We'll oh, do more gen? More, a little Got more it. gen. Okay. So we're doing a little bit more gen here. I think that's, I think that answers the sports motion for many of you. I think so. Yeah. It answered it for me. It's Jennifer Gala content on the board. Let me answer some questions, take requests. That's what we got.
And so LV Production wants to let you know, the motion processing must have been turned off last year when comparing the Samsung models versus this year's Samsung models when we talk about motion improvements. So this is specific to sports. Last year, Samsung never made a big deal about sports motion, right? Now, they've always been okay with motion as far as motion interpolation. The soap opera effect, I think Samsung does a good job, as well as LG. But sports was very specific in their materials. We were shown the sports. We were shown a golf ball, remember? At CES. Well, they where, showed a golf ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, look at the brightness difference. Wait, we changed that. What are we, what are we on now? We have to switch these back. Uh, we are on sports mode or dynamic mode on the Samsung. Yeah, put it back to what you want it to be. So this year, they specifically showed us this replay of someone hitting a golf ball. We watched the ball drop, and it was showing how the ball dropping on the Samsung, you could see a round ball dropping. On all the other TVs, the, the ball was like oblong and long, like blurring as it fell. And so as we saw today, that golf ball was also oblong and blurring on all three TVs. So clearly, there is something amiss here with that motion, that sports motion AI. So I'll talk to Samsung about that. And, but other than that though, the 900D, what about its upscaling? So it's upscaling low bit rate and low resolution content. We don't have the low bit rate part with low resolution. I'm gonna have to play with that when I get home. So the Q900 D is coming to my studio this week. So I'll test that for you guys and see how much better it is on, on that. Hey, what, what uh, settings are you doing now? Uh, movie. Movie? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Cinema Home. Is it Cinema Home on That's the- That's the brighter one, right? Yeah. Cinema Home on the LG with active tone mapping. That's how most of you will have it, by the way, because it looks good with dynamic tone mapping on active, with dynamic tone mapping on. Expression enhancer, we'll put it on detail, Brian, because it, it, I think it doesn't hurt. It actually adds more to it. I do like it, so we'll have the detail on. In this bright room, I like the additional subtle contrast it adds without taking the entire screen down in brightness. And so on the S95D, we'll have it in Movie mode with active, with it active. Movies mode is slightly brighter than Filmmaker because you're in a bright room, so people just put a movie. And contrast enhancer is on low, HDR, They're, they're low on active. both, yeah, static. Oh, what about color booster? What do you have it on that? I think I still have it on, don't yeah, I? Put, it, put color booster, I mean, it doesn't need color booster, honestly. Take color booster off. Yeah, color booster is on low. I don't think it makes a difference. Take it off. Okay, so color booster is off. On the 900D, we highly recommend that you have color booster on high. Yeah, max it. It does look good, and it does match up to the OLED TVs. And so that's what it's on. All right. I love that they're still talking about cooking. Lisa's response is, I use olive oil as my daily oil. I love the toasted sesame oil for special things. I never <laughs> thought about it for dipping in steak. By the way, I fry my steak in a combination of avocado oil, and then I finish it with a sesame oil. When I roast it in the oven, right? Because only through the oven do you evenly get that medium rare. All right, let's see. Look at you, Fomo, getting 900D. Well, I learned my lesson. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to buy the 900D this year. I told Samsung to send it to me so I could send it back. Last time I bought a 900 anything, my parents yelled at me. So yeah, I learned my lesson. <laughs> not again. <laughs> All right. Got some questions here. John asks, how soon will you get the Bravia 9? Tell Rob your audience is waiting anxiously. So John, you heard that Bravia 9 is shipping at the end of May. So as soon as allocations are made available, Robert will have Sony send it directly to me from the distributor center, and we're gonna talk about it. You know, We're gonna bring Robert back on and, and share with you anything new, any deals that may be happening, but definitely you'll be on the list if you pre-order with Robert. There's going to be a 65 inch, a 75 inch, and an 85 inch, and the 85 inch is $1,000 less than the G4. That to me may be the reason why you get the Bravia 9, because the image quality should be pretty close.
hey, you know, Andrew came on to say yes. Is this the Andrew you and I know and love? I, I can't tell. So. Andrew, are, are you the person we know and love? Let us know in the <laughs> comments below. Now, now we have people chiming in. Brussels sprouts, olive oil, salt water. <laughs> you guys, I love you all. It's all true. Right. So, Brian, you want to go into... Uh, do you want to record a little bit or you want into sports or go into gaming? You can if you want. Because I think it's, it's throwing off the colors on yours, right? When you're recording it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, camera. let's just go to sports. Uh, let's go to gaming then. Yeah, switch the, uh, the what's it called again. Which one? I'm going to try and record again after. We'll have to plug it back in. But This? Or you want to do? The, um, you want to do gaming? Yeah. Let's do it. We have to go back to the splitter. Which one? Oh, your splitter? No, the splitter. We want to just. Oh do yeah, yeah. Give me the HDMI, and I'll do the splitter. Then we gotta switch it back when I want to record after. Yeah. But some so, of it, some of it, I should be able to record, right? Some of the content. On your PS5? No, with the uh, the camera, I should be able to get some of it. Oh yeah. Just not this kind of content. You want to show the camera? Tell them we'll be right back. Yep. You want me to turn off the camera right now? Yeah. So we're gonna switch this out. Okay. By the way, this scene they all look great. This is a great looking scene for all the TVs. Let me turn off the camera real quick. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. Go for it. You got to go back to the camera. Okay. Yeah, it sucks that a camera can't capture that. Yeah, that's a sensor sensitivity issue thing. Plugged in. Okay, we're moving on to PlayStation 5. And yes, I know, before you guys ask, when you split a PlayStation 5, you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to choose one TV to do the HDR level clicking. So at the end of the day, it's impossible to match HDR calibration between the PS5 and all three TVs, unless you have three different PS5s running and you have three different people. So we'll do what we can with a splitter and we'll choose one TV to do it. So it's just to give you guys a feel for it, I guess, because there's no way around it. I mean, what can you do? It's unique to each TV. So short of next time me bring, bringing my PS5, who knows, maybe next time will be a PS5 Pro, right, Brian? Brian, you gonna get the PS5 Pro? It's coming out in November. Yeah, Is Brian's it? first in line. I'm gonna have to go to the Home Depot again and, and, and meet some like sketchy left. guy in the, around the corner <laughs> <laughs> with cash. That's how I picked up my PS5, right? Me too, yeah, the police station. At the Home Depot near a police station. <laughs> okay, Geo Torres asks, for real people with real money, FOMO, how's the C4 stacking to these TVs? So Brian has the C4, right? He has a smaller one. And the C4 content up to 500 nits, it's gonna look identical. The C4 looks amazing as a TV. It's when you start to get into the brighter scenes, that's when the G4 takes over. So if you're watching, like we always say, oh, you're just streaming YouTube, watching Friends, whatever, you don't need that extra brightness because it's not creator's intent to be that bright. C4 is absolutely, bright, uh, absolutely fine. And for smaller TV models, 55 inch, 48 inch, whatever, and you're sitting close enough, Sitting that close actually is fine too. It's when you're in a large room and you're getting a larger TV. Let's say the 83 inch C4, not gonna touch the 83 inch G4 in brightness. So that's something that you have to consider. But if you're getting a smaller C4, 55 inch and you're sitting close enough, it shouldn't be a big deal. But remember, you're definitely losing out on overall brightness. Excuse me, as well, let's say sports. You watch hockey, you're not gonna get what you're seeing here today. It'll be very dim and a lot of people save up for the G3 or the G4 to get that brightness. So Gio, tell us what your use case is, right? If it's a lot of sports watching, I get the G3 for brightness, but if it's gaming and you know, you're not like a connoisseur of HDR, 4,000 nits, 2,000 nits, I think the C4 will do you fine.
So this is a good point. Brad B, no lie. I love my A90J. I believe it upscaled just as good as the A95L. And the sound is so much better on the A90J. So the point that you make, DP, where it's upscaling, it's been good for years now, all these TVs, right? I think we're beyond, oh, you know, how well is it upscaling? It's more low bit rate content where you're, the YouTube TV analogy is probably the best one. That, that it's just rough feed coming from YouTube TV. I don't care if you have a gigabit connection. And that's where the newer models are supposed to handle that a little bit better. But if it's just upscaling 480p, I think all the TVs have done a great job since 2021, right? So yeah, you're good there. And the sound on the A95K, I was definitely not impressed with either. A90J is pretty good, but TV sound, TV audio on the G3 was terrible. On the S95D, TV audio is not great. It's loud, but it's not full. The S90D had, to me, better audio. Now, Dan, I want to address this. It is, oh, hey, can I turn it on so they can see your, your clicks? Yeah, on game optimizer. Oh, that's fine. So Brian has the game up, so let's check out his settings. Why don't you walk them through your settings, Brian? We're gonna optimize it for the G4 because, well, G4, come on. If you're gaming, you're not getting the S95D with a matte screen, right? So go So for when it. you go into gaming, it's not enough to put it in game mode. You have to actually come into this general setting here and actually enable the game optimizer. So that one extra step, come in. I just want to leave it on, it's standard. Which one are we in? Standard by default, and the reason why it's locked is the game picture wizard, or the picture wizard is on, I think. So, see if we had this issue with the, see how it's locked? So we gotta do is come out to Regular settings. I was going to take a quick bio break, but I have to hit this question. Thank you for the super chat, Lord Sinos. Brian, check this out. I'm currently watching you on my 85-inch QN900D, which I thought would be an upscaling champ, but my 77-inch U8N in the bedroom looks better. Why? So just double checking with you. It should be a 75-inch, right? I'm assuming that's what you meant. So, but let, let's say you're talking about a 75 inch U8N. So the Hisense U8N is Hisense current flagship, shy of the UX. I think the UX only comes in the 110 and 85, but we're still waiting for official announcements about the details of that. But for sure right now, the U8N is the people's choice for flagship affordable value. Why does it look better than 900D? It depends on what's seen, obviously. Now I will have the U8N next week, along with the 900D next week and last year's QM8 and I'll tell you why as soon as I get it. I can only speculate right now which is, depends on the content you're watching, but 4K on a LCD TV with full mini LED, enough dimming zones in my opinion will consistently oh, you know look why? better so than 8K. Splitter. Because 8K pixel density introduces more issues that requires more processing to fix. 4K doesn't have those issues. You need more energy, more brightness to make it look as, or the same brightness as a 4K. So let's say both at a thousand nits. 4K density versus 8K density, it requires more energy for the same light output, but then you have to have more processing to control blooming and control all the stuff that comes with that additional energy. Why are we doing that, right? So. 
The Hisense, since it's, it's almost its flagship, it's putting its best processor there to match the best TVs out there. So 8K resolution does not make your TV look better. It actually requires more processing, processing to make it look as good as 4K. And so I thought it was the right move for Bravia 9 to not be 8K. It allows it to shine brighter with less energy, less processing, and still look good. So it's probably a 4K, 8K thing because natively, 8K might be high resolution, but it takes a lot to make it look as good as 4K. Not a lot of people realize that. But we'll see. Once I get the Matter D and the U8N for about a week or two, maybe three, I'll let you know what's what. Thanks for the super chat. All right. Okay, Brian, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to leave you for about five minutes. You good? Yep. So funny. This is like, yeah. It's actually shut everything off. What's that? The PlayStation completely restarted. Oh. All right, guys. So there is an issue with the game optimizer at times where it gets stuck and locked out, but that could be because we're using the splitter. So it says my... A lot of the settings are actually shut off in the optimizer. Kind of a pain with the new optimizer since the G3 is that some of this stuff has to be turned on in the optimizer itself, as you see in here. Hold on one second. So you can see the optimizer, go into the optimizer. And it used to be where these were all toggled on. Now you have to actually enable them yourself. So auto low latency is on. I don't know why it's saying that it doesn't have it. So you see we're stuck into um, standard for right now. So it could be again, because we're using a splitter. See how it's saying that our TV is in support, auto low latency mode, it definitely does. So we'll just try and see what they look like head to head. We'll try and put the um, S95D into its standard game mode. Resolution, let's do HDR, just HDR is off. Okay. Oh, you know what I have to do? Hold on, so hold on a second, guys. Oh, I'm in sports. Okay, what is that? So this thing is being funky. Is it working? Not really. I was trying to say I don't have HDR. My TV doesn't support HDR. It says it doesn't support HDR? I think it's something to do with the splitter. Okay. Because I'm not getting anything. No HDR, no, no. No auto low latency either. Why would that be different than the player? Hmm. Okay, I think I got it. So I'm going to hold on to this. Oh, 
So all the air, all, all the latency go on and HDR. Nope. And plus LG is locking me out of the presets again. Well, there's HDR. All right, okay. Let's make sure I'm in game mode. There's the optimizer. I'm see, but see what it does? It still it's makes, it hold on, let me see. It should be, but see how it, how it locks me out of that preset again? LG locks you out of that gaming preset? Yeah. Typically it's because a picture wizard is enabled. Or let me show my game mode. Hold on. It only goes up to 4K60 HDR though, just so you know. So maybe that's what was going on. Yeah. All right. So it's in. I have to say this magnet is incredibly strong. Okay, we're back. <laughs> John L. adds to the discussion. Montreal steak seasoning, by the way, I use it as well, I love it. And Dale steak sauce, marinated about 15 minutes in the Dale steak sauce and then grill. Everyone loves it, ribeye filet are my go-to steak cuts. I do like ribeye, rib I also like petite filet. That's also a tender cut that has a little bit more marbling than traditional filet mignon. But that, that's a good one. I haven't tried the Dale steak sauce, but I definitely use Montreal steak seasoning, and I marinate it in a soy sauce sesame oil combo. Since we're talking cooking. Look, Robert showed up to chat. Yes, Sony Bravia 9 will be included in our 2024 TV shootout. Yes, it will be against the other super mini LED TVs. We're lucky to host two 4K TV shootout events, one for emissive OLEDs, what you see here, and one for the transmissive LCD, which means the Bravia 9, the 900D, and who knows, Hisense's best UX might be there. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Oh, oh, and Robert's gonna take it to the next level. The two winners of this shootout on the mini LED, LCD TVs, and the OLED will go head to head afterwards and we'll see. Who wins what? All right, fun, good times guys, good times. All right, so FPS, super chat. Thank you for that, buddy. Will the Bravi now be part of the shootout even though it's not OLED? Yes, it'll go again. If it wins against the LCD TVs, as Robert said, we'll put it against the other OLEDs winners. Also, what reference monitor is used during the shootout? We are trying and we look like it appears we will get the BVM, the latest one, the 3110, which is the 4000 nit latest Sony HDR one. That one will be amazing. So we'll have 4000 nit reference to put out real 4000 nit content to see which TV can keep up. Who knows, that Bravia 9 may make the difference. And you're welcome. Thank you for being here, FPS. Beetle Menth, PIH. Thank you for that super chat. To you both, is there any use case you would pick an A95L over the G4? Both in the 77 inch. So I have the A95L and I have the G4 and the S95D as well. That's a hard one. I'm, I'm trying to envision it. Because of cinematic movement, I'm really liking the G4 a lot. I don't have to fiddle with the motion. Well, the answer would be yes, because if I am comparing and measuring luminance at a, above a certain brightness, the G4 cannot keep up. For myself, as a TV reviewer, it would be the A95L as my reference TV, because I need to make sure there's correct color at that luminance in that scene. I know ahead of time the G4 at that same brightness in that scene will be a little bit washed out, a little bit diluted. The saturation will not be there. So as a reviewer, the answer is I would choose the A95L in that situation. But 
as a person who enjoys HDR impact in my movies, right, where my goal is to feel the explosion, because uh, I like watching action movies, then it's the G4. The G4 accurately delivers that impact. The A95L more accurately delivers what the color grader intended for you to see. In the slow scenes, right, you got the flickering light, and that bright light happens to be 800 nits of yellow or something like that. The G4 cannot do that. It'll be mostly white with just a touch of yellow. On the A95L, it'll be bright, but with more yellow. So it's actually up to you. That's the use case that you get A95L for, which is critical movie watching. But action movies, that's not critical. And I watch action. So Brian, let me ask you, is there a situation you would choose the A95L over the G4? No. So that was quite, they required no thought at all. <laughs> nah. I love the A95L, but the G4 is the G4 is, level. Well, and, and like me, we, we get into these action movies, right? But, you know, maybe when they remaster on Golden Pond. <laughs> Sucking face. <laughs> uh, the A95L will make a difference, but that's the thing. It requires, so the A95L was awesome, don't get me wrong, it's but TV. we're into the latest and greatest, and the G4 yeah. is just different. So, You'll be happy with the G4. Well, oh, okay, you'll be happy with either one, honestly. The G4 is that good. And we'll take one more super chat before we do a little bit of gaming here. Cook with FOMO series coming soon. Dude, I would love to do a cooking series. You can see me burn myself. Oh my God, the oil. Who turned up the heat, right? <laughs> Anything with fire and oil and food, count me in. I'm so tempted. And can you imagine a live stream with that craziness? Actually, that could be good. We should do uh, grilling, grilling with uh, the bromos. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Brian, what are you seeing? Well, what, what, I don't. What I don't. I'm literally stuck in this. The game optimizer is not letting me change the preset from standard. So I see. It's. It's. I was able to fix that at home, but it's not letting me do it. Now. This is a G4 thing. Yeah, it's always been an LG. He's having a hard time switching um, out of the different presets are locked. I don't know why they lock, mm -hmm. but they're locked right now. So okay. I'm stuck at standard. I have this one on standard. Okay. I can't make okay. them look like themselves is what I'm trying to say. All right. Let me turn down the exposure just a touch. So there's a good relative comparison of general brightness. And these, this is an HDR right now, right? Yeah. Okay. The Which, 900D looks great, by the way. It does. I'm, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I would have thought the 900D was an OLED. Yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, they're not kidding when they said that they designed the 900D to have better gaming performance. Now, this is kind of like a fast-paced game. Are you feeling any latency on the 900D? No. So you could actually game on the 900D and not Absol complain? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, I know you're an OLED guy. Looking at between the S95D and the G4, what are your thoughts? I mean, the problem is that... I can make the, right now they're both in standard, so the G4 to me looks better, but the S95D is in like its most it looks punchy good. preset though. I like the S95D, or, or actually, look at the monitor. This is what they're seeing. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just more saturated. Um, I, prefer the, uh, I prefer the G4. Okay. So this one's too hot. Can we take out a static? Is it in static or active? It's, it's, it's supposed to be, I have the game bar was enabled and now it's gone. Oh, there it is. Can we put it in a mode that would give it a, oh, there we go. Huh, that's interesting. I like that piece right there. That looks very much like the G4 now. Well, this is the more most accurate. I'll just juice it a little bit because it's uh, yeah. it's dimmer. That looks very much like the G4 now. So what I would That's do? That's from the skin tones. So here I would go into. Uh, you guys, remote's killing me. They're both okay. All three TVs. If you're just gaming. Was this uh, Street Fighter? Tekken. Looks pretty good. So this is original, but it's got the tone mappings at active, so it's punchier. Wagyu A5, Lisa. You gotta get A5. I was in Japan, A5, so good. Okay, <laughs> enough steak talk. All right, what, what, is, what is your 
So right now we have the TVs in similar modes. The so LG. the LG's in standard preset because okay. I can't change it. Okay. Um, the S95D is in um, original, which is the most dull mode, but I put tone mapping on active to give it the, Looks good. the better look. Yeah. I'm looking on the monitor. It looks very similar to what we're seeing. Yeah. I do see that the reds in the G4 looks a bit richer, maybe more saturated, a touch more. And the 900D is just, it's right there. And tone mapping is on both. So the tone map, the diameter tone mapping is on the G4. I mean, it's, okay, so if you were to separate it, I'd say both the OLEDs has that slight contrast edge, but it's very slight. It used to be night and day in the past, but now it's only slight. And so that's pretty impressive. For the 900D, the, for the 900D to do that without losing latency is good. Yeah, I mean, the latency would just be in its pixel response, but its input lag is relatively low, I'd imagine. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty good. And look at the black level, where it says Brian, right? It's pretty good. And that's in um, standard. So I'm if I turn up the exposure a bit more so you guys can see the black levels on the 900D. So here you can see the slight differences in contrast on the 900D. By turning up the exposure, right, I know I'm clipping the highlights a bit, but you can see the shadow detail. It's actually very, very doable, the 900D. I would not complain no. about this game mode at all. Matter of fact, this feels like it's slightly better than last year, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a better TV. Try something a little less, uh, a little less saturated. It's a good looking scene. Uh, age, Ege, the Ege asks, is the peak brightness locked in game mode on the G4, Brian? The, the whole preset is locked right now. And the good thing is it's bright. So it's not locked, last year it was locked dim. They locked it, it's pretty bright, so my relatively pre so speaking to that. My preset is locked as uh -huh. far as its settings. Yeah, let's see. It's an HDR, so it should be maxed. It should be maxed. There yep. it is. Yeah, it's, see, that's, those are locked. All the contrast stuff is yeah. locked. How about dynamic tone mapping? What's that set to? It's on, uh, it's on. on. Okay. but there's HGIG if I wanted it. Oh yeah, keep it on. But I like it, DTM is better. How now. about the other one, uh, Expression Enhancer, does that do anything? Bright? Slightly yeah, brightness brighter. Slightly. Actually, I like brighter. I, I like the brightness on it. What do yeah. you think? So overall? Yeah. The expression it has for bright actually looks pretty good, guys. I, I kind of like that. Then we turn down the exposure so you guys can see that difference. Now, now smooth gradation is on. You can use it, actually. We're on Sony's. That was one of its strengths. Mm -hmm. You can use smooth gradation now, but we'll keep it off. I just don't know why the inputs are locked. I love that the 900D looks so much like an OLED right now. Yeah, it looks great. It does. And, it's, it? it's in, and that's in Robert? the foot. See, the 900D is in a, its punchiest game mode. Yeah. So if I knock it down to original, which I'll do right here. Here, we'll do that. Now, the lights sparkle a bit more than the OLEDs, of course, specular highlights, but it's, it's gameable. Very, very cool. This is really, really interesting. Hey, Cypher. You're wait I'm waiting for them to finish calibrations before I make comments. Yeah, that's going to be the shootout. So the shootout, all the TVs will be calibrated to match the reference monitor. And that reference monitor will be the BVM 3110, the latest 4000 nit one. So until that happens, you know, who knows, right? Because if you plan to get your TV calibrated cipher, wait for that one, because that will give you kind of like an apples to apples comparison with movie content meant to be watched in 4,000 nits. So we're gonna to have yes. to hunt those down. Yes. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting Sony, cause Sony needs to provide us with that movie content actually, yeah. because they're the ones pushing the monitor. Then share with us some content that we can compare. I'm hoping to get that one of Alpha, where it's uniquely 4,000 nit. It's the, it's the unreleased version, because the one for home, I don't believe it's 4,000 nits. Yeah. So this one will be good. Uh, so we'll see if Sony can provide us with some content that we'll be able to compare, and then you guys will see for yourself. Uh, can I add two quick things on this same subject? It. 
One is that we're also going to be evaluating and voting out of the box in the best picture mode. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll give you those results as well. But one more thing, which was my big takeaway when I went with you, by the way, with both of you to Sony headquarters uh, for the Sony Pictures and Columbia Pictures, was I met privately with the top engineer who flew in from Japan. Mm. And he was with the president of their division, that's professional products. So the BVM 3110, the new 3110. Mm, right. And they were explaining to me what they did differently with the backlight master drive this year. So what was always special about the backlight master drive is that it doesn't just control the local dimming area, which is a big area of the screen, it controls each and every one of the little tiny mini LEDs. Yeah. It controls them. And, and each one, the amount of light output, it's a fine gradient, the precision dimming. Well, That's... you're taking away my punchline. Oh, no! <laughs> I just robbed, I new, robbed Robert. New, new for the 3110 mastering monitor, and only in the Bravia 9, mm -hmm. not in the Bravia 7 or any other TV. Or, or not in any, any mini LED TV. Not in any mini LED. Well, no other mini LED can control each LED. Each, they yeah. just control the big, giant backlight. Right. Now they control the luminance level of each and every little mini LED. Mm. So the mastering monitor, it can go up to 4,000 nits. The Bravia 9 is supposed to go up to 3,000 nits and has the same backlight mastering system and the same processor. So when they come out with these, and every Hollywood studio is buying the 3110, yes. every single one. There's not one for and, me. And post-production houses as well. When they come out with these new movies that'll be mastered at 4,000 nits, your Bravia 9 will look exactly like the way they mastered it. Well, and they showed us that at Sony. Yes. They showed the yes. reference, yes. 3110, the 9, yes. and what it's supposed to look like, and right. the other TVs were next to it. I'm like, wow. I'm not sure I'm supposed to announce all this, but I just couldn't hold it in you anymore. Can. The embargo has been lifted. Oh, even for that? Yes, <laughs> oh, okay. all of that. Oh, okay. Anything we saw and heard and overheard. Oh, okay. I so didn't even know, if you were I meant to I was allowed to say it. that or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. And this is this is quite an upgrade year oh, for yeah. all the TVs. Yeah. Look how beautiful all these TVs are. Oh, look at the 900D. Normally, with against yeah. all that, you know, they will always have these conditions and exceptions. They have to do a phenomenal job. Hey, Brian, do you have these? VR? Are, these are world class TVs. Does VRR lock it? Maybe, Brian. No. So I just want to ask about the VRR whether it locked it in. Yeah, Brian will have to figure that out. Watch, this, this better not be the reason why it's locked. I got to tell you something. Check, you, this out. Check this out real quick, Robert. Follow yeah. On. Yes. Yeah. So hold on a second. Stay done with it. Okay, so here's... So if you big, find that, you're, if you find that your, your genre setting is locked... Yeah. All right, so I'll show you real quick. When you go to change the genre... It'll tell you that. It'll say that both gaming and sound need to be changed to game mm -hmm. optimizer. Oh, the okay. sound. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So with with this set to game optimizer, because I had the sound set the sports, it locked it. The sound locked it. It locked it. The sound. There it is. Okay. So now are you setting in, in what you prefer? I would still stay with standard, uh -huh. but I mean, we can, we have the flexibility now to match them, but I would still keep it at standard. Can you match it to the, its brightest, like give us the brightest pleasant mode to you, mm -hmm. and then we'll try to get the S95D to that. And I'm noticing that the vertical banding is phenomenal on this 83 inch. You'll it see is. When we go to a, to yeah, go to a light blue one. Yeah. yeah. We're going to test vertical banding what on the 83 inch. Is They're very clean this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're if very you guys clean. are wondering, the sizes are 75 inch Q900D, 77 inch S95D, and 83 inch G4. G4. Actually, yeah, I can put it in right now. Yeah, thank you. They're very clean, the panels this year, also. And I'll get to your question next, Sean. What's 
only is the HCID is not doing anything now. Hmm. Which is weird. Okay. Thank you, Chan, for staying up to 4 a.m. Today, my personal experience, G4 colorful, spot on. The 900D, natural, S95D, stuck in the mid. Yeah. <laughs> good night, yeah. good night, Sean. It's like 4 a.m. there now in, yeah. in India. Very good, and thanks Thank a lot you. for both, to both for the greatest show ever. Hey, it wouldn't be Thank great you. without you all and without Thank Robert you. making it happen Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. You all. And Sean is looking forward to my Q900D review soon. We'll decide after that to buy or not. Thank you, Brian, Robert, a lot. Yes, and I'm going to also test a few things uh, that I picked up during the year. So yeah, we'll make sure you make the right decision. Unfortunately, remember, at the 85 inch size, uniformity definitely is a risk for all TVs, including the 83 inch G4. No, nope, you're good. So mine will be a 65 inch. So that may make a difference for you, Sean. I know Unit 40 has been a complaint for everyone. So thank you for that. Okay, so this is a good one. I know you guys have limited time with the Bravia 9, but in all honesty, how do you all think it will compete against the G4, the S95 Deep? So, we were given the Bravia 9 right next to the Bravia 8. The Bravia 8 is essentially an A80L, right? Kind of like the C4 this year. And so in comparing the two, I thought the contrast on the 9 was very close. And in some scenes, I was telling Brian, I bet you cannot tell which is OLED. That is amazing because next to the Bravia 8 was the Bravia 7, which was last year's X95L. And you could tell that was a step behind both of them. And the X95L is an excellent TV in its own right, but now the 9 has taken a step where, wow, this is really close to OLED. So that is my honest assessment, the 9 next to the Bravia 8. That says a lot. Now, the G4 is super bright as well. The question is, can that brightness come close enough to the 9 that, huh, maybe I should get the Bravia 9 or the G4? I mean, is, is it that bright? We'll have to test that. So how do I think it'll do against the G4? The G4 always has that advantage in blooming control, always. And Sony itself said, look, we're not here to win the blooming war. We cannot. This is not a dual cell TV. Only a dual cell can come close. But even then, if you have a dual cell, you know how much energy you would be required to match 4,000 nits? Not possible. So the Bravia 9 is 4,000 nits at an affordable price in a normal lit room. The G4 takes you a next level in a completely dark room. Creator's intent, all from shadow detail, no blooming, all the way up to over a thousand nits. But from a thousand nits to four thousand nits, the Bravia 9 takes over it. But then what do you lose? You lose that no blooming. But it's such a bright scene, does it matter? So I think it's more of two TVs with two different purposes. You just have to choose which one appeals to you. And where they cross over, I think they're going to be very similar. Brian, what are your thoughts? How do you think, honestly, it will compete against the G4? What's that? The 9, Bravia 9. Oh, I think it'll do well because we saw it compared to the S95C. That mm -hmm. was their QD OLED. And, did, and the Bravia 8? Bravia 8 was next to it, but when they did their, their uh, shadow detail test, oh, yeah. it was just that it was much brighter and it showed things that were crushed on the OLED. So shadow detail, I think it'll be more impressive than 900D versus them. Where I think the 900D is hanging with these, I think the Bravia 9 will surpass it in some shots. Mm -hmm. The question is, those some shots, for us, are they maybe, useful? Right, frequent, is George free? Like, your use case will determine whether one is the right one for you, for sure. So someone mentioned Ghost of Shishima. Here it is. They want to say that the 8K one was going to beat everything on it. So okay, here, here all right. Go. We'll see. Hey. If it does, we'll, we'll shout it out from the I top of the gone. mountains. I think Josh is gone. And Crypto Color Lights just joined us. Hey, buddy. What's up, Crypto? Brian, what's up? What's up? All right, here we go. So we're All looking right. at the brightness. Yeah, Cho choose your beauty scene and pause there and I'll adjust the exposure so they can catch the subtle differences. It's very interesting the color science between all of them. 
The G4 looks like it has a touch more magenta, and the S95D has a warmth that's similar to the 900D. There you go. All right. Oh, you have to pause one. it, just let it run? Yeah, let it run. Okay. This is, what a great one. So I'm gonna go, we'll start with shadow detail real quick for you guys. So look at the 900D's black level. That's impressive, Brian. Terry parcel, yeah. Right, that is almost other-like. So, I mean, I'm turning up the exposure. So you guys can see if it's blooming or if it's washed out, and it's not. And then we take the exposure down so you guys can see the specular highlights. Is one TV brighter than the next one, Brian? I can see that in this, the way I, mean, I did exposure here, you can see that there's a little bit, just a touch better contrast on the OLEDs. Yeah. But you know, the argument is all the detail on the outfit for him is, a, is there, it where is. you could argue that a little bit of his is We took up the exposure so you can see that outfit you're talking about. Oh yeah, that's a good one right there. But everything's visible. There's nothing crushed. There's cor a coral, not coral, but um, all this is a, is a visible. Mm -hmm. I'd say back here, these rocks, they're more evident on the 900D. Oh, yeah. What I would say with the 900D is even though it's 8K, I wouldn't say I'm getting any extra detail though. It doesn't uh, look- Yeah, I wouldn't say, especially from here, like from 12 feet away. Yeah, really but I wouldn't say this is giving me a cleaner image. Yeah. And they're matched up the same. I could probably make the 900D a little bit more um, saturated, perhaps. By the way, they all look great. So if I change the, the genre to, say, standard, on the, um, so I'm gonna punch up the, um, the 900D a little bit. Enjoy the complimentary burning on your OLED, folks. Just take it down, guys, put it in eco mode. <laughs> You're still worried about burning in this day and age, my friend? Is he a time machine? I think it's from a time machine. What was that? He's worried about burning still? Well, he's talking about us having this bright scene. Oh, it takes, and it takes thousands of hours. Oh, thank you. I got the nachos. Thank you. Oh, with guacamole. I know. Where am I? Now, now I'm going to have to put on pause so you guys don't hear me chewing. And I can't wear my gloves to eat nachos. Look at this. Let me show you the nachos. Oh, look at that. So, Fomo, I'm going to put it in standard. Though it's brighter, you're, you're, you're losing a little bit of the contrast. Right. So I liked it better in this. You tell me what you think. If you like it better in that preset, Or that one. That's too dark. So you want it back in the standard one? Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Because it, it feels like there's more contrast in that preset to me. But definitely it's taste, guys, right? It's very subjective. Now, on the rocks is where I see that you're losing a touch of contrast. Nice, the reflection on the rocks. Oh, thank you. The snack, you're so cute. So, uh, so right, oh, right, that sword is very bright. So let's look right here, okay, guys. And Wendy, you can check it out too. Look, so look at his face on the on the LG. It's gone. It's kind of dark. Kind of gone. A little better, and then on a mini LED. Wow. The shadow detail is there. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's now back to specular highlights. Can they see? Fall. Yeah. So specular highlights, while his face is here, the sword is kind of a white light, and it actually glows on these two. So there's, that's, Here's what, your what's your poison, right, Brian? Choose your poison. So that looks like a lightsaber. This looks a little bit less lightsaber-ish, and this looks like a white light. So the shadow detail does come at a cost. Wow, that's perfect. 
Robert. Right, Robert, check it out. So, specular mm -hmm. highlights, his face is visible, but the sword is kind of bland. Mm -hmm. Lightsaber over there. Is this an 8K game or a 4K game? 4K. But then again, his face is missing. Yeah. So, you know, it's just one scene. Yeah. I can bring I, this. I think that's what they mean by detail, is the shadow detail on the face. That. Yeah. It's more filmic. That is amazing. Yeah. Now yeah, the cool, 900D makes a good case for itself if you look at the face, right? Now the best part about now the best part about the game optimizer is I can go back in, I can go in and actually raise the white level, so I can bring this up. It actually doesn't help. So that crush is there. So FOMO, maybe I can get into another preset and bring it back. Mm -hmm. Not really. So you do have the crush there, kind of no matter what. Now, I'm sure if I take dynamic tone mapping out, I'd probably get it back, mm -hmm. which we'll do. Sorry, we can't <laughs> No, Brian, recover that shadow detail. Yep. Put HGIG, that's what it's for. Doesn't really do anything, to be honest. It's still gone. Worse. DTM still gone. And then. Um, Give it H, the GIG love so that people say, hey, it's not accurate. HGIG makes it accurate. Actually, HGIG isn't doing anything. I already tried it. It works more on the G4, or the C4, I'm sorry. So HCIG. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's making me toggle it like that. I know you can yeah. actually, you can do it through the game optimizer. Can we see the face with HCIG on? Yeah, keep it on HCIG, but take the menu off so I can see this face. Yeah, but I don't know why it's making me go all the way out though. Should make me go all the way out. You know what I'm saying? Like this, it should make me do that. There we go. Oh, okay, let me turn up this. Yeah, HGIG didn't help, did it? Mm -mm. But in the optimizer, it should. What's over here? I can do it over here. Here it is. It's still blocking his face. So on, you can see it brightens everything. Mm -hmm. Off, it doesn't. But right now, it's not doing anything. So even if I get him out of the way, see the menu's like in his way. <laughs> the menu's following him around. Mm. Yeah. So right now, I would say it's HIG's not doing much. I would keep it on DTM. Now that's the only one scene, obviously, right here, it doesn't, not doing anything. So it looks good. But in that one scene, it was interesting that the, the sword was glowing. Now in another game, which will be a really big test for the 900D is this one. Get the mic going? Mm -mm. <laughs> Fumble's eating nachos. And I promise you this is going to hurt the, um, the 900D. That's not a nice problem. What's that? That's not a nice problem. No. <laughs> not going to hurt it. I'm going to just show a little bit of where it's going to have a hard time. Well, it just excelled. Yep. Well, here's our star field. So I'll show you local dimming. So what we're looking for is on the HUD, how's the blooming control? It should pop up in a minute, and there it is. 
And actually on the 900D, it looks great. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for peak brightness. This is the shot. FOMO. Oh, wow. Pull it right there. Come on, baby. I know where I'm at. So the question will always be, what's effective brightness? This is very bright. You don't lose the circles, which you tend to. Yeah. On any mini LED, it's, whole, it's actually tone mapping it great. So. In the S95D, we have the most color in the circles. What about the detail inside the circle? It's usually just, they seem to be, they all handled it really well. There's more saturation on the QD OLED. But typically on a, an LED, the circles aren't visible. It's just bright. Mm -hmm. So it's handling it well. So we get into a dark area here. So what to look for is on the heads up display, blooming. And the 900D looks great. So typically in an LED, this whole area here will bloom pretty severely, and it's not. So we'll aim into a darker area, which we are kind of here, and we're still good. It's not dark, dark, but you get the idea. Yeah, I'm overexposing it. And how does this look? Pretty good still? I'm trying to find a darker. I'm trying to keep up with your exposure, so keep on talking. I'm just trying to find it. See, uh, see now there it is. Can you see it, FOMO? Oh yeah, hold it right there. Okay, point out that, point that out. I can see that now. That's the blooming they're talking about. That's what you'll see in a very, hold on, let me just stop dying. So again, we're in the shadows here. Okay. And you can okay. see the heads up display. Oh my God, they won't stop fighting me. Oh, hold on one second. That was a good one. I'm hurt. So, I close this one, start a different one. This is a great test too. Mm, give me a fold. I just gotta check the uh, local dimming on the Samsung. This is SDR. Dimming's on high.
So again, what we're looking for is from darkness, much darker. The QD OLEDs and the LG. And what we're looking for is going from dark to light. So that brightness here is felt. They look very similar in that one. Yep. What I want to point out though is the specular highlights. It's bright here, but they do pop more on the OLEDs. You can see the kind of they are three dimensional. Now, so for me, the more I try to give the 900D a chance, the more it washes out. So I would argue that it probably does better darker FOMO, but doesn't really, it washes it out more. So it's kind of hard to mm -hmm. pick a preset where that's much brighter. We'll stay with standard. So in this area, you'd want to have it much darker as we go in. But people would argue that, you know, all the detail is lost on the bottom of an OLED, especially on the G4, and all the detail is present. So we talk about the Bravia 9. What the Bravia 9 is going to try to do is get this darker and keep this more detailed. So again, pick your poison. On the G4... Look at the puddle. Point out the puddle. Look how, how, how the puddle looks. The puddle just pops yeah. out. Yeah, so when you look darker. at the G4, again, what's director's intent? It's dark, but you are losing some of the detail. Same with the S95D, but on the 900, everything is visible. But what's the intent, right? Is the intent to be dark and black or swampy and green? Right, so... These are good scenes, too, because the it's dark. And any kind of blooming will show up through here when it gets dark. And it handles it pretty good. So we're not really seeing a lot of blooming through here. I like this scene as we come out into the classel. Now what I like about the OLEDs is that the flames really pop, you know. But the AK doesn't really clean up any of the aliasing issues that we have with any jaggies you see on the PS5. AK is not gonna solve them. The 900D is not gonna solve them. Now AK content is clean as a whistle. So on a PC, you definitely benefit from the extra detail. But as a mini LED, it's excellent. I think it's very good. And I think in short, what, you're, what we're seeing is contrast ratio of a mini LED versus an, an OLED. But I like that flame. I like the contrast on the flame. They pop, right? So you can see them here, here. Now, I, I promise you if this wasn't in a game mode, if this was in a different preset, it probably, well, we can actually do that. And actually it is the, so let's uh, get out of game all together. And we'll go on to that movie mode that we liked, FOMO. Eco. <laughs> Eco is actually, I think Eco is actually standard. But I would say that in its movie mode, that's infinitely better. What do you think, FOMO? Mm-hmm. I do too. No, I wouldn't play it with it in this mode, but... You get, you get the pop back of this, of the flames, right? So, now between the two, between the G4 and the S95D, I would say they're a tie. I mean, it's basically whatever it is you wanna. I would definitely not choose either one based on its gaming performance. I think they're both, this is SDR by the way. 
Now, why are you comparing SDR? Because the whole LG SDR brightness thing. Oh, right. Oh yeah, LG SDR has improved, huh? It's right there. And it's not on, um, what's it called? It's not on that uh, always HDR. It's not mm -hmm. on that, so. So this is the LG G4 in game mode on SDR, and it looks great. Doesn't look dim. Better than the G3. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's less bright or anything. Yeah. So I'd say the S, S, the, um, S95 DG4, we got a tie. I mean, I would say that they're, that's when you start talking about picking your, your favorite UI or, mm -hmm. or interface. HEIG isn't doing much. I know Classy said he can go into professional, you can toe map it easier, but, but you should be SDR, able to. HDR, HEIG should be irrelevant because yeah. it's not HDR. No. But in HDR footage, HEIG should do more. You shouldn't have to go into professional to tweak right. it. So I'm sure they'll change that with an update, but right now they're a tie, the two of them in gaming. 900D for a mini LED, excellent. What's your conclusion then between the S95D and G4? How would, why would you choose one over the other? For gaming, they're, again, they're a toss up. They both do 144 hertz. If you're afraid of the dropouts with the one connect box, then I would definitely go. And then I think it comes back to the screen FOMO. If you game during the day with lamps on, mm -hmm. The screen is awesome, but as we can see as it's getting dark, guys, the contrast ratio, matte screen is doing nothing to hurt it. Fomo, would you agree? I mean, as mm -hmm. far as... Can't tell. It's not hurting it at all. So... It's a dark room TV. Yeah, it really is. So I would just say whatever company you like better, whatever I would go for. They both do 144 hertz. I can't show it here because this is a, these are consoles. So, but they're excellent. So I think the gaming portion is pretty much, that's wrap, that's a wrap. But that said, I'm also very impressed with the 900D. Mm, let's do the uniformity. Anything with a blue sky? So uniformity, what is gonna... What is that, horizon? Something that's more of a gray screen is what we need. We you look up to the blue sky, you pan. Panning across a blue sky is what people are always complaining about. It's really gray, but you can see it here if you want. But this G4 is very clean, I'll say that. So I haven't seen any banding on it. Hopefully you guys didn't hear my crunching of the tortilla chips as I'm eating the nachos. Let me see here. So you can see here, FOMO, if you want to pan here. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. How's that banding look? It's clean. All right, let me turn up the exposure real quick. Okay. Yeah, looks clean. I don't see any, any vertical banding from the manufacturing on all the TVs. I would say that the DSC on the 900D is minimal if there's any at all, so mm -hmm. I don't see it. I mean, so what you would see on the 900D is where I think what hurts it would be the upscaling can create some noise. But other than that, it's very clean. They're both clean. So now if you look here for a so you can see the there's some just small faint lines. From this distance, I can't see it. No, and I'm about you can see it right nine feet there. away. Yeah. QD OLED, OLED's nothing, but I will say what the QD OLED does add is it will add a noise to the image. It does appear a little greenier. Mm -hmm. Clean. 
They're pretty clean. Nothing leaps out at me. Now, granted, like 12% gray would be best, but I don't have any games on the PS5 that do that. Canadian Atlas thought FOMO eating while watching Brian do all the work was funny. <laughs> well, he's done, all the, he's done all the work in other, other parts. <laughs> Crunching away. <laughs> But I think they, they all look amazing. But even the 900D looks fantastic. But I have to say that 900D does look good. And this is Samsung's strength, by the way, is LCD TVs in game mode. So, well, Brian, when you're, game, when you're gaming, <laughs> they, they heard me crunch my tortilla chips. <laughs> I suppose there was a mic off. I had Turn the mic on. I had my mic off, too. Can you imagine if it was on? How bad it would be? <laughs> He's just laughing so hard right now. Apparently, the, the tortilla chips was just too much. Uh, so now you're gonna have a tortilla chip. Uh, the nachos. Look at how much I ate. I don't think I left any for Brian. I don't think I'm about to That's eat right. steak. I don't eat cheese any. That's right. Oh, he doesn't eat cheese. You got, you got me none. Ah, oh, you're so. See, she was thinking of me. She knows I don't eat cheese anymore. All right, what do you got going, Brian? What's next? Street Fighter. Just something a little more colorful. Okay. No. Now we're waiting for Brian to have his nacho break. What is a nacho without cheese? Brian doesn't eat cheese anymore. I don't want cheese anymore. No more cheese. No mas. But he will eat the guacamole. Yes. I will uh, eat sour cream. I just have to... Rem <laughs> you won't eat cheese, but you eat sour cream? Mm -hmm. So I'll just have to wait. I have to put so quickly, my... What's funny is if you look at the menu, the menu on the G4 is completely black. It was gray on the S95. Mm. Interesting. Now, if we could mix and match these TVs. Oh, I, you know what? It's just a menu though. Yeah, that menu actually might annoy some people because they will not buy TVs based on the menu. Does the S95D not look like the Q900? Yep. Interesting. But it's just weird, you know what it is, I think. I think it could be a Samsung thing. We know what it is too, it's, I think it's the, yeah. Oh wow, okay, go back. That was oversaturated on the LG. That girl's face was like bright red, it was terrible. So what's funny is sometimes, you guys may see this, is that the video range, limited or full, doesn't always work coalesce. Mm -hmm. So what I find is that right now it's on auto, so it's completely black. There's times where when you put it on limited, which means the console's on limited, full, which we want, will gray out. It'll lift it. So which one of these is accurate? It should always be auto. The thing I do is, but my point is when you're playing a game and you see heavy banding, I rather crush, crush the blacks than have them lifted. So in this one, auto is your deepest, where full is brighter, but I would always go with the deeper one because it typically washes it out. The console set to auto, but there's times where the image will be completely washed out. You'll go into say full. So that almost never works correctly. Right. But that's why I think you're seeing that look a little grayer. It's a completely different color, Brian. Yeah. They're set the same too, or as close as you can. Yeah. I'm, okay. So that looks like it's oversaturated in the G4. Mm -hmm. That does not look natural. The red face. So does it? The, the dynamic tone mapping. Right. Because it's dynamic tone mapping? I think so. But we can always see what the what the color is set to. Mm -hmm. The color might, the kind of what you saw with the uh, the sports. I bet you the color. Oh yeah, set. the color level, yeah. No, it's locked, 55. Which is still higher. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's interesting, the color oh, is actually locked. right, yeah. I think it's the color space. You just, you nailed it. Yep. So probably if I go in into full, Let's see if I can change that. If I go into full, it'll be less crushed, but. Yeah. 
Oh, they had to cut off and see. HGIG, color accuracy, baby. Oh, that was What's not funny better. is, look, at GIG is, is doing something, though, look. Mm -hmm. It is. But on the game where it normally does something, it was doing nothing. So actually, HEIG behaves very much like DTM here. Is the 900D back on game mode? Yeah. It's back on its brightest on standard. But the 900D is in game mode, though. Yep. Yeah. So 900D is in game mode, guys. Yeah, it's back on game mode. So video range is where this can maybe be a problem. Doesn't really change, it just lightens it. So it's just kind of a saturated. Okay, so let's talk about this. What is accurate game mode? So seconds 84 says, please, for the love of God, set these all correctly to the most accurate picture settings in game mode for the comparison. So what do you what, think that is, filmmaker game mode? So, there isn't such a thing. So for the G4, have HGIG on. Just, just to satisfy, HGIG and, and so seconds 84, tell us, G4. Yeah. Instruct me. Instruct him. G4, HGIG is on. Which one? RPG, RTS? Standard, standard is the one everybody what? goes for. Here. Because I know you guys want HGIG on. Okay, so it's on. So let's put it on standard. I mean. I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Come on. Yeah. But accurate game mode is kind of a misnomer. Huh? What do you think accurate game mode is? I can actually do this from the menu. This is why gaming is so subjective. And on the S95D, you have static, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, nope. I can do S95Ds on uh, original. Okay, so S95D, we're gonna put on static. I'll put it on a more uh, VRR won't work, Chad, because we have it on a splitter. So to more, in order to match it, this remote, this remote's coming. On 60 hertz, which is what we're doing here. There's your more saturated mode. On 60 hertz, they want it in full. The, the color, space, the video, in full. Okay. It washes it out, but okay. Well, that's accurate, so, All right. because the PS5, you're winning 60. Well, I know you're winning 60, because the splitter won't let us go higher than 60. It's maxed, yeah. Tell the truth, guys. Did you come to New York City for the TVs or the nachos? So the funny thing is, you, want, you guys want it in full, but auto is the more accurate. Oh, hey, put it in full. Okay. Because they said auto is, at, or rather, 120 is what they're saying. I don't know. I'm just taking these requests. 121. Apparently, one, uh, 60 hertz is full on the PS5, and 120 is limited. But since we're at 60, we'll put it on full. Okay. So let's see if they match up. There you go. All right. So they look. Okay, so definitely there's a difference. Let me change my... So difference meaning the TVs look different, but I think they're all in their most accurate mode. So the LG HGIG is on. As you can see, it's a bit oversaturated. So... They both are. Is the color space on the Samsung on warm, two, and auto? So the color space should be an auto on the Samsung. Let's see. Samsung's not behaving as far as with the game bar. Yeah, put the Samsung color space on auto, which I think defaults to DCI-P3 anyway. It has its own conversion. And so it's on game mode. So color go to warm to. And then go down, color space, go to auto. It's on native. By the way, the default out of the box was native. We didn't change that. So, all right. 
it, it actually looks similar to what it was before, but at least we have the settings and we'll do the same for the Q900D. It's not gonna look much different. I still think there's something wrong with the G4. That's oversaturated. Hi, Duff. I'm able to do this because nachos. Hey, the Samsung Contrast Enhancer in game mode needs to be original in game mode. Is there a setting called original on the Samsung? It's off? Yeah, it's either off or it's on. There's no oh, you said off or on. So, contrast enhancer, off, yeah, so it's off. So contrast enhancer is off. So just so you know, seconds 84. Contrast enhancer is off. And what about the game mode in original? Can we set the game mode to original? So we're gonna do that, seconds, just for you, baby. Yeah, so the G4 is done, now we're setting the other two. So the two are in original? There isn't an original for the G4. No, but on the Samsung it's an original, right? No, that's original. Okay, so the 900D is now an original. Now we're gonna do it on the S95D. You gotta use the big one. Here. There's no play button on that one. It doesn't have the same button. Oh. Does it work? Not available. Oh. I think the Samsung's look actually, <clears throat> excuse me, they look actually pretty great. The G4 has issues right now for this particular feed from the PS5. <laughs> Lisa wants to know, FOMA, were those especially good nachos? The nachos are good. It also helps that I'm a little bit hungry. So after this, we're gonna go grab a, a bite at a local diner somewhere, if it's still open. But this is, see, all we had was like an early breakfast and then some nachos and now we're good. We're gonna ready to go on for another few hours for you guys. So game mode original. Not standard. It's not, I can't get it up, so oh, we can't get it up? Oh, man. I mean, it looks the game bar won't pop up with that remote? No, not anymore. Is, is it out of batteries? It's not available. It was working before, too. Just a remote. The most time. Is there a charging issue on the. Let me see. I need to do it from over here. Aha, at least the remote works. Okay, so this works. It will play down. It'll uh, just go over to game mode. Uh, the button is the game mode button isn't working. Yeah, if you just hold A, it's just not doing it. Try tapping it. Then hold up. Sure. Not available. Is this remote? That is so strange. I mean, the G4 it looks as it looks. There's really no way to really change it. So you can't access it through a normal setting, so you have to go through that game button, huh? Game bar, yeah. Sorry guys, technical difficulty. The remote died on us. So we cannot access the game bar in order to double check, but that's, well, the S95D looks good though. So even if we set into standard, I think it would still look I mean, good. These two, they look 
close. It looks natural. The G4 is, is the one that's stuck, kind of looking saturated. Well, so that's, let's say they go to you. Can we fix this? What is, what is the G4 setting? G4 is, is what it is right now. I can't. Okay. The color saturation is locked. So if you look at that, I mean, even in user, if you go to user, probably you can go to color. I, I got caught. Crypto says, FOMO, you need to lose some weight. You're eating too much. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh -huh. It's locked, so I can't even change the color. Well, uh -huh. color gamut, we don't even change that. Yeah, play with that. Go well, auto detect oversaturated. Dynamic, no. Nope. Adobe, nope. How about native? Nothing changes. No. Well, auto is actually the most. Auto is a little bit better, a touch better. So it does come back, guys. If you want to see them look accurate, those, it's those two. The two, Sony, the two Samsungs. Yeah, the Samsungs right now are the most accurate for whatever reason. I'm sure you guys will. Yes, the G4 does have something way off. We, we don't know what it is. I'm sure KG will figure it out. And <laughs> they're, they're listening to your crunchy. I don't even have their mic. The mic is over It's, it's that loud. <laughs> Comedy gold, my friends. Okay. So um, this is Tone Apping DP on static. Yes, the Samsung is on static. I know that for sure. And the G, <laughs> yeah, we are making those TVs. Yeah, the G4 again. is just looking at So the G4, I'm sure it's a color space issue. It's got the wrong color fee, whatever that is. But hey, it's for better people than us. Here's the question though. The common consumer, okay, like we're, we're spending a lot of time on this, kind of figure it out. The common consumer is going to give up. They're like, what the hell is happening? Then they're they're going like, to go they're online. Not gonna it's going to look like it's going to be just saturated. I'm like, oh, it looks cool. That's oh, it looks great. That's what it's supposed to be. That's creator's intent. We really don't know. So it, it is definitely, and this is why gaming is so difficult to review. Every model year, it changes. Literally. Look, it's not even doing, look, even me turning this up and down isn't doing anything. It doesn't anything. change anything, yeah. No, so, so it could be it's an 83, it's a new it TV. It could be a firmware update away from perfection. Yeah, I mean, but even it's the dark stabilizers aren't even doing anything. Okay, so, so seconds, what's to say? Look at how sick the SNA 5D looks. I agree, uh, not just the SNA 5D, the 900D looks sick. <laughs> the Samsungs look great. We're talking color in this scene, right? Color and all that stuff. And the G4 is oversaturated, a little bit over contrasted. I don't know what the deal is, but that's what we're dealing with right now. But that was in the intro title. Right here, it looks fine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the intro was not good in that title page. Yeah, it still is a little oversaturated. Let me change the, the exposure a little bit. So Brian, you're a gamer. Let's talk from the point of view of a gamer. Given what you're seeing with the G4 and the S95D, forget what you saw earlier, right? It's dark. We don't have to worry about the, the drop in contrast. Which are you picking? I mean, the S95D obviously is functioning correctly, so you have your shadow details gone on the G4. Yeah. If you look behind, it's all black. And I don't think you had this problem with the C4. No. Because you were playing this on the C4 as well. This mm -hmm. is not... Yeah, no. So, it, just, it seems like it's stuck. I mean, it's the 83. It's a new TV. Yeah. Maybe it's got it. Maybe it just needs another update. This is the 83 inch again, guys. Uh, maybe it just it, came out a week ago. Maybe it's performing differently for whatever reason. Brian loves the C4. He did not have this issue playing, mm -hmm. was it Tekken? Mm -hmm. Or Free Fire. Oh, Street Fighter. This is Street Fighter. They all look the same. <laughs> I don't know how you guys. Oh, look. So, let me see. Why is the G4 900C so dark? That's the maximum brightness, my friend. Leo, it's. What is dark? Dark? He's why is the G4 and the 900 C so dark? Well, the G4 is not dark. It's just crushing yeah. right now. It's it's crushing the blacks. Badly. The 900 D. You guys wanted it in original. That's why it's so dark. And it's not that dark. Let me turn up. Maybe it's my exposure. Let me turn up a little bit for you guys, so it's not too dark. Okay, so there we go. Slightly higher exposure. Now it makes the G4 look like it's even more crushed. Yeah. But that's what we're seeing though. That's the thing. Yeah, the shadow detail is very much crushed. It's gone. There's something about it that's very unusual. 900D looks great. So if you guys are in the market for the 900D as a gaming TV with this PS5 console, yeah, with the games that you saw, no complaints mm -hmm. at all. 
You're right, Ahmad. Uh, revisit after for more updates. So this is so let's let's yeah, give always, everyone a fair shot do. here. Yeah, we always. This do. is early in the year. Literally, we're on probably the first two firmware updates, and LG definitely, and they're watching this like, what the hell? And they're calling all their people at HQ, and they're gonna put out a firmware update if this is an issue unrelated to us putting on the wrong settings, but I cannot imagine. Brian is an LG gamer. He's got yeah, C1, I mean, yeah, C2, C4. But like the flexibility is just gone. Yeah. Now look at now the game bars up. Oh, the game bar's back. Was it static? <laughs> what happened? No, it's gone again. Are you sitting on it? What are you going It's, it's awesome. like a ghost game bar. I didn't touch anything. That's so crazy. Talk about delays. I didn't even get a chance to capture that. And hey, thank you for that reminder, Crypto. Don't forget to click subscribe or like. Either one. We're fine with it. Thank you for joining us. We've been here since close to 1 o'clock Eastern time. Yeah. And it's now... Yeah, we're close to wrapping up. We have not that much more to cover. Yeah, we don't have much more to cover. And we're going to you know, ask questions. So ask your questions, friends, because I know you're debating between the G4, the Bravia 9, we won't have yet, not until end of May. So again, if you just joined us, Bravia 9 release date is the last week of May. Yes, thank you, Sony. This is the first time in a long time Sony has released its flagship before June. Yeah. Before TCL on Hisense, like this is what Sony normally does. So congratulations, Sony, for that. As far as comparisons, we will be comparing the Bravia 9 against the G4. I think that's what everybody wants to see because the prices are so similar. And I think you guys have an idea what the S95D is. It might just be that game. Well, here's a question for Ephraim. Hey, I'm catching up with my Super Chats now, thanks. Let's see how these TVs handle multi-view. Have you ever reviewed multi-view? Do you even use It's not functioning right now. It's not functioning on any of the TVs right now. Multi-view is not functioning on any of the TVs right now. Even so. on the A95L, they haven't implemented it all the way, so. We'll compare when the TVs have it up and running. So how about the Samsung? Is it functioning on the Samsung? It's functioning the best it is, but I wouldn't risk doing it right now with the okay. splitter. And Ahmad wants you to know, S95D, again, looks better than the G4 in some scenes, but my eyes keep getting drawn to the G4. And that's been the theme today, right? It doesn't win everything, but it wins enough to keep your eyes getting drawn to it. it seems most pleasing to the eyes most of the time in gaming mode. It definitely depends on the game. Like, yeah, I mean, that? That, I, think, I think Street Fighter has issues. Yeah, it's just it could be a Street crushed. Fighter thing, yeah. But then Samsung got it right, so. Yeah. Like, the hair looks phenomenal. Yep, like, doesn't crush anything. No, if anything, the S5D looks a bit, just a bit oversaturated. Hey, Captain Solo, thank you for that super chat. I am finally replacing my beloved 2012 Samsung Plasma. Thank you, Fulma and Brian, for a fantastic stream. Well, you're welcome. With a special shout out to Robert. Yes, thank you, Robert, for keeping the doors open for us. The <laughs> G4 is the choice for us over the S95D after a close battle. And again, use case specific, right? I'm glad you found a great use case because I think in gaming, very consistent. I mean, the fact that 900D is keeping up with OLED in gaming, fast action game, yeah. I don't see latency as an issue at all. Well, especially in this game, when dirt, typically the HCR will really wash out on an LED, mm -hmm. and it's the, the details there. Now, Fomo, you can see the sky boxes. Do you see banding in the sky in the 900D at all? Nope. I'm looking at it. You know, there's more shadow detail in the Q900D than the S95D. Just a touch. Typically, this will clip pretty badly on a, yeah. on a mini LED. And it oh, yeah. Like, the 900D is not clipping at all. Oh. Phenomenal tone mapping on the 900D. Yep. Look at the detail of that cloud. That 900D looks very impressive. Now, the crushing is completely gone on the G4. Oh, look at the clipping. There's, it's clipping on the S95D, but not on the 900D. It's bright on the, on the 95D, though. This is definitely a great scene. This is a great track. Yep, like, because it, the dynamic weather really gives you the, oh, you see that, the sun yeah. right there? Oh, that's great. Oh yeah, just stop right there. Look at that shadow detail on the 900D. Excellent. Now look at the specular highlights are gone on an S95D. Yeah. See the middle of the cloud? And well, I wish we had access to their game bar so we can play with it some more. But this isn't static too. Now, maybe now, in a the dynamic tone mapping's off on the G4. Yeah. That's an HGIG. You'd be hard pressed to distinguish the G4 from the 900D in this one scene. Right? Oh, 
But that's what I love with settings. You can see now the game bar is actually helping here. When Street Fighter, this made no difference. Yeah. Was Street Fighter SDR? I thought it was HDR, but it probably is SDR. Well, you know, if it was SDR, then HGIG would not have made a difference. True. You're right. But now look at the with tiny tone mapping on. And thank you for the super chat. Cypher, thank you for all your hard work and your nacho inspirations. At the end of the day, you gotta eat something, right? Thank you for hanging out with us. I look at dynamic tone mapping on the LG. Mm, it looks looks good. I like it. Oh, look at that. I have to say that the 900D is very impressive to me right now. Yep. Yes, it's expensive, I get it, but in the past, it's game mode. You could see that it falls behind the OLED TVs. This year, they gave it some love. So Samsung should be proud of what it's done with their top of the line mini LED. And it better perform for that price, right? Well, best 8K gaming TV out there. That's for sure. I'll tell you that. All right, let's see what question you guys got here. Chad wants to let you know, S95D for gaming is my vote. And it's not a wrong choice either, Chad. G4 looks darker in game mode. Some will argue there's more shadow detail and some will say it's darker. I don't well, think In the last game, it was brighter and crushed. Yeah, so. last game was bright and crushed at the same time. So last game was too much contrast. This game, I think, it is, it does feel like it's a touch darker. I'm looking at the monitor and that's what it feels like too. But again, the G4 is better than the G3. I think the G3 was even darker than that. So it's an improvement, but the S95D, like the S95C last year, it's, it's a bright gaming TV. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, the new REC, the new RIC, the G4 does need checking. It's not set up right. We, we tried everything. And this is the 83 inch G4. It's possible that it's the 83 no, inch that has this. It's issue. only been like six hours, bro. You want me to, what else you need me to do? There's <laughs> nothing we can do. I mean, we tried everything. You're put welcome it, to swing by and, and give it your, HGIG, your expertise. Change the various settings, dynamic tone mapping on, off, HGIG, whatever it is. You know, sometimes, but it looked fine on. Um, and right now, look, it looks like it's washed out. The screen is washed out compared to the S95. Oh, yeah. Thing. Like so. Where did that come from, right? Because we're forcing full. There we go. Like it looks fine here. Actually, doesn't, it looks doesn't look washed in out. here at all. Well, it did for a minute. It's it's definitely game specific. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing is when you're reviewing TVs for gaming, it has to be always which game, right? One game that looked great, like Dirt Five, kind of to me looks kind of good on every TV. It's just a very well made game. But other games, well. Street Fighter, was that Street Fighter that you had the issue? But yeah. every um, every TV manufacturer... It looks fine right here, let's start right there. That looks fine. Okay. Let's... The G4 looks fine right here. But every uh, game manufacturer will tell you that, I'm sorry, TV manufacturer will say to you, gaming is the worst in terms of its tone mapping and consistency with HDR. They're just, they're really tough compared to movies, obviously. So, you know, we had this over five hours of TV testing. Massa wants, to know if there will be a five hour bar nine testing. <laughs> yeah, you can do about, I, 30, Herc, you can do it about 30, 30 minutes. I'll have to create so, it's a whole production. KG that the color is locked, so. Okay, so there was the problem. So see, this is exactly what we have. G4 game mode, best setting, default, go to Warm 50, turn on HGIG, you're good to go. It's so, locked. You see the problem with Street Fighter, it was not a good experience. We, it was oversaturated. But all the other games, it looks fine. Like right here, no complaints. In Street Fighter, check it out. That was an oversaturation, but it looks fine here. So I think it's game specific. Whatever Street Fighter has, it's toxic to the G4. Because if it was in the wrong setting, it would be consistently bad across all the games. But now look, it looks just like the S95D or the 900D. Yeah, that looks so definitely look, So check specific. it out, look, I mean, that's, but the colors are, tell him the color is locked out. I'm locked out of the color, I can't change it. As far as the saturation, I can't, I can change the right. color, I can't change. KG, the color. there's no black crushing here either. It's 
Street Fighter. Street that, Fighter. That, that just has Black Crush. So try it. Get Street Fighter, <clears throat> PS5, and let us know if you see the Black Crush. Like, we don't see it here either. Yeah, but I'm here in color right now. Look, color depth is locked. Mm -hmm. We're in auto. You have HDMI and auto, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just call it temperature it's game, here. It's game specific. Look, I'm locked. This game looks great. Actually, I mean, this look, game, I can, I'm changing it, but it's. Was it doing anything? Doesn't do anything. It's locked. So. It's locked. Oh, Wayne asks, can Black Crush be mitigated with about 300 hours of break-in? Um, no. Possibly, but in this case, you only have Black Crush in that one game. So I don't yeah. think it has no. anything to do with a panel. No, and, and, in. and typically in Game Optimizer, you can change that. You can actually increase the, the brightness. It's just not working right now on the 83. Yeah. It works on the C4. Yeah. I'll show up the exposure so you guys can see that there's no Black crushing on the G4 anymore, just because we changed the game. See? The shadow detail, identical to the, to the S95D. <laughs> just, just did a little, little chip crunch for him. Yeah. So KG wants to share that the Samsung's best game mode HDR basic, uh, color, yes, so we have contrast enhancer off, we have warm to color space auto, all of that is has been done, and HDR basic, so static, we had static mm -hmm. on HDR, yeah. so, yep. So seconds was late. And this is a good time for us to summarize. FOMA, I was late to the stream. Can you all summarize findings when watching HDR movies and streaming? So this is pretty good. So when we put in the movie, let's start with the one that was most obvious, which was The Greatest Showman, right? That scene where she has the bright hat with the blue sparkles. That's when the 900D shows that it cannot make it bright because it doesn't want to bloom. And this is what the Bravia 9 is supposed to address that. The Bravia 9 to, uh, should be as bright. The fire stick. Oh yeah, should be as bright as an OLED, but it isn't, or the 900D isn't, but the Bravia 9 should be because of that fine level dimming control. So in a movie like Greatest Showman, where you're the bright, very bright specular highlight against a black, dark background, the OLEDs made themselves obvious, and the G4 and the S95D both look great. And, but in other movies, like you know, just dimmer movies like Alita, they all look the same. The 900D looked great because it wasn't expected to go bright. Alita, somewhat a dim HDR movie, but the in the bright room where you have, the room is a bit bright, the S95D black levels did not get as deep as either the 900D or the G4. So if you're in a brighter room, it's ironic, I would not get the S95D if you value deep blacks. The darkest it can get will still be slightly lifted black, but you have no reflections. Whereas on the G4 and the 900D, you're going to have very visible reflections against that black background. So you'll have deep black with some reflections versus lifted black with no reflections, right? So that's the give and take that you have to decide. But the image quality is very similar. The contrast on the 900D is excellent. In many scenes, they look the same, identical. But in some scenes, you can say, oh, I can see a touch of blooming here, contrast slightly washed out here. The 95D consistently had the most well-saturated colors. Occasionally, the G4 is kind of weird and was a bit oversaturated. When we, without, now this is not in filmmaker mode. If you put it in filmmaker mode, they all look the same. When you put it in their standard mode for bright room watching, in that case, that would be cinema home for the LG. So in a bright room condition, you would watch cinema home in the LG G4. You would have active filmmaker or active movie on the S95D. And the 900D, we had, what was the 900D? Standard? Yeah. Standard with color booster on maximum overdrive and contrast enhancer. It made it look most like OLED and natural, it looked great. So we also tested sports. In sports testing, the 900D's much vaunted motion sports resolution 
nowhere to be found. We did golf, baseball, hockey, they all look the same. If anything, one, here or there, the OLEDs looked a little bit clearer, right? So it's kind of ironic. But the brightness of the G4 is undeniable. In hockey, the G4 and the 900D were brighter than the S95D. But it's shocking the G4 was as bright as it was watching hockey and the like. And this also happened with the horses in the snow. So ultimately, the G4 to us is still in the lead for best TV all around for 2024 so far. The S95D, it has its specialty, which is if you don't like reflections, no other TV comes close. It is so good in just rejecting reflection, but the trade-off is lifted blacks. I mean, in, in this room, this is a normal room. We don't we aren't doing anything special to shine a light on it, to make it super bright. And in those scenes, blacks are slightly lifted. The 900D is easily the best mini LED from Samsung yet. So they've definitely took a step forward in processing and dimming zone uh, with their dimming zones, right? They're controlling it very well now. The 95D will not be the same experience. It has less dimming zones and it has a weaker processor. So we're seeing this processor do very well with tone mapping, even beating the G4 in 2000, 2000 and 10,000 nit content with horses in the snow. It had about 50 more blades of grass in that scene. Hey, you, you got to count it, right? So, but ultimately though, it's a subtle improvement, very subtle. At the end of the day, overall, most of you will choose the G4, I think, if, if cost is no object. If it's value, then it remains to be seen how much cheaper the 95D will drop. But Brian, are, is your TV of the year so far still the G4? What's up? Is the G4 still your TV of the year? Yeah. G4 still in the lead for TV of the year for Brian. So hopefully that kind of summarized our findings. Now let's talk about the fine details. What am I missing here? Oh, what you see when I was uh, connected to? So Classy is saying that the G4 is an HDR and the Samsung isn't. How can the Samsung not be an HDR if they're sharing the same feed? I don't know what you're talking about, Classy. Are you talking about gaming? Or are you talking about, uh, because the feed is the feed. So if it's just normal content, then- You've been an HDR all day. It was on HDR, all of them. Otherwise, the static and the active would not even appear, so. Which um, HDMI are you hooked up into with the- uh, Six, fire stick? number can six. You, can you see it? I can't see it. Yeah, it's on the far, far left. Here, let me test that real quick. No, Wayne, it was an HDR. It's, it's the same feed. We have it outputting off of the splitter. Otherwise, active will not show up. So we made sure they were all, and the brightness would not match at all. And the black levels would not be so similar. Trust me, if one TV is an SDR, it would be very obvious that it's an SDR. They can, the black levels they match HDR almost all exactly. Day. Yeah. We, we, took, we took us an hour and a half to figure out HDR. What do you mean? We're in HDR all the way. All right, let me... What order do you have it in now? Just still in game mode. Still in game mode? Okay. 
Let me put on my microphone. Oops. So where's my microphone? So why did the 900D look... Let me make sure it's on. Why did the 900D look so dim in game mode? And the reason is that's just, it's just how it is. It's not that dim, but it's, it was like that last year. Now we're changing the modes now. So, but OLED can get quite bright nowadays, both the S95D and the G4. So, the ratio, not the in, and sometimes in other modes, like dynamic mode, sports, it'll be brighter. So that's, that's just how it is. It's a little dimmer, but not that much dimmer. So Samsung's the BT1886 with Street Fighter. LG was in HDR. So that, I don't know, do we, actively change it to SDR, it's impossible, right? So it's the same fee class here. You tell me how, so did we convert the Samsung to HDR or SDR? Isn't the G4 the best in HGIG? Mm -hmm. The G4 is supposed to do HGIG best, supposedly. I did not compare. So, but a lot of people like it dynamic tone mapping, but it's supposed to be the most accurate to HGIG. Supposed to be. And SD is saying that all these OLEDs are crushed out of the box and I had that problem last year with my G3, which was definitely crushed out of the box. And even after calibration, still crushing, uh, with, especially with the scene from Dune. So it was something that Sammy couldn't, couldn't fix. At the end of the day, it's panel lottery. Some, after all that fixing, you could fix the crushing away. Mine was unable to be fixed. So even then, if you are sensitive to black crushing, you have to make a choice. You could lift it a bit, but it's either inaccurately lifted or inaccurately crushed. It's that near black that all the TVs tend to struggle with. The classy says it's not crushing out of the box, so maybe they addressed it. Now, in watching my G4, I didn't notice any black crushing, but the, you're gonna have to make it very much content specific. So definitely what content are you watching if you think that is crushing? G4 or S95D for gaming only, based on gaming features. Shadow equalizer, latency, brightness, HDR, etc. I think that it requires a very thorough video, which is not today, obviously. If you're buying a dedicated gaming TV, like we're talking, this is your gaming TV, you really have to be game specific as well. So if someone has a stream that is only gaming, show up, make sure they have the same gaming device you're playing, whether it's a console or a PC, whatever it is, right? Like if you're PC gaming, that's a completely different TV than if you're gaming on an Xbox or a PlayStation, PS5, PS5 Pro. So you have to be very specific with both the game and the device you're using. But yeah, I mean, gaming TV review, not my thing. Way too much work. Well, there's consoles, there's PC, there's... Yeah, and what games? Like, you know, yeah. HDR games, certain HDR games okay. over Thank others. You. I think he's okay. We eating nachos. <laughs> Mrs. Cosmo says, thanks for the great video. Have a wonderful evening. Like, thank you for being here, Mrs. Cosmo. What time is it in California right now? It's 4.30. Love. Lots of love to the family, Mrs. and Mr. Cosmo. Thank you for watching.
The new Rick complains that black crushing and soap opera effect are his two greatest issues with TV picture quality. I think that's been pretty much addressed with flagship TVs. You should not have to worry about black crushing, especially if it's a quality OLED, beginning with even the C4. C4, G4, A80L. I mean, to a certain degree, what are you watching that you're experiencing the black crushing? I think those have been addressed to my satisfaction. Older TVs, it's, it happens a bit more, definitely. But if you're in the flagship arena, I think you should be okay. And the soap opera effect, well, that's a whole different matter. If you don't like soap opera, most people like the Sony because you can bring it down just enough to avoid judder. I think the G4 this year with cinematic movement has addressed that and matched Sony pretty well. So yeah, if you're buying a new TV this year and going flagship, you don't have to worry. They're on, they're on movie right now. They're on movie mode? Yep. Oh wow, they're great. Adjust this exposure real quick. That S95D is killing it. Well, the lights are getting darker. Okay. Is this Jennifer Gala stuff? No, this is just LG. Oh, this is LG uh, stuff. This is, or Sony, this is actually a Sony demo. Oh, this demo. is strange. You never saw that demo before? That was a good one. The red was weird. Okay. Hey, thank you for that super chat, FPS Lobo TV. I'm the Sony expert at Best Buy. <laughs> All right. We got the Sony expert here at Best Buy. And nice. I was going to ask about the blooming and black levels on the Bravia 9. You're already getting these questions, and no one's really seen the Bravia 9 yet other than these special events compared to OLED. What are your thoughts? So I'll just start with what Sony told us. The Bravia 9 will have the best blooming performance while preserving shadow detail than any other mini LED, including their own X95L. However, they recognize that OLED will be better in many instances, specifically the super bright, bright specular highlight against a super dark background. That's not what the Bravia 9 is designed for. What the Bravia 9 will destroy OLED is a relatively bright scene with an even brighter specular highlight. So let's say the scene is 200 nits, 100 nits, and then there's like a 4,000 nit 1% window. That Bravia 9 will do that and no OLED can do that. No OLED will hit close to 3,000 or 2,000 with a 100 brightness scene all around it. So let's say you're at the beach, it's bright, and then the sun is right there. That sun will be super bright and it's in a super bright beach. The OLED will just dim all around because it's too bright for the OLED to handle. That's what they're talking about. That's the use case for the Bravia 9. But if you're talking about dark room scene, what we just saw earlier with The Greatest Showman, where you have specular highlights on a dark hat, you don't need the Bravia 9 for that. The OLED will do better than the Bravia 9. The Bravia 9 will probably do better than the 100D, but can it control the blooming? Because if you get that specular highlight bright enough, you're gonna bloom because that's why LCD mini LED TVs don't bloom. They reduce that specular highlight, they dim it a bit to keep that black levels dark. Now, Sony with its new dimming precision control will do it better, but it won't be OLED-like. And so that's not what the Bravia 9 was intended to be. It was intended for that 4,000 nit daylight scene. So you have to keep in mind why the Bravia was developed. So to answer you, the Bravia 9 compared to OLED, what content are you watching? If you're watching content like that Greatest Showman, the OLED will always be the winner. But if you're, the new content or some content that's coming out, like Gran Turismo, bright scene, right? Race cars, and you have these bright highlights, chrome coming off the car, that will be the Bravia 9 specialty. So yeah, I think, and that's what they've been showing us throughout their demo is these bright scenes with even brighter highlights OLED cannot do that, but we'll see if the G4 can come close. Hey, did I miss something? I just went out for a couple hours and the S95D looks brighter. <laughs> Brian, what happened? It's called dark room performance. It's called dark room performance. What, so what happened is during the day, it feels like the contrast somehow dropped, but what, what is the settings now? You have them all on, on put them in filmic because it's dark. Can you put the LG in filmic mode? Mm -hmm. 
and then we'll put the, the other two in filmmaker mode. So now we're in a dark room environment, right? It's dim, there is no sunlight above. We'll go into filmmaker mode and static, and then we'll see how they do. And they should look very similar. So this is why we kind of complain is, they are so close in filmmaker mode as it should be, it's in the other modes in the daylight that things are a little bit different. But once you calibrate it, they come very close to each other. What's going on with the S95D? The longer it's running, the brighter it's getting. It's getting dark. <laughs> filmmaker mode, that's, you know, this will make it standardized, right? Once you put it in filmmaker mode, they will all look very similar. So and I take it off of active, put it in static mode. I think it's, did you put it in static mode? The S95D? They're off, they're, because they're in filmmaker. They should all be. But I left it in active last time. Oh, okay. I think so. Just double check that. So we're going to make sure that they're all in static, filmmaker, no one has the advantage. I think the s 95 d is probably inactive still. That's why it's so bright. And seconds. Hey, thank you. Thank you, FOMO, for doing this. Sorry I was late. We appreciate you taking community feedback and making changes to the TV. And that's our goal, is together discover all the settings that these TVs offer. The reality is, it doesn't matter to me which TV you guys get, right? I want you guys to get the right TV. Otherwise, when you come back, you'll be yelling at me, ah, oh, FOMO, you convinced me to get this other TV. So our goal is what use case, what examples, what kind of scenes do you want to see? And we want to tune the TV to make it look its best for that environment. So we're trying, now the hardest to tune is the 900D. Because it is an LCD TV, some of the settings we use on that to make it close to the OLED may throw something else off, but in spirit, it comes closer that way. So we're gonna make sure we take the S95D to active and we should be good to go. There you go. G4 is tapping out. It's getting tired. <laughs> it's been winning all day. It's like, you know what? I, I think I'm going to call it a day. Oh, there it is. Yeah, put that active to static. Okay, so were we setting the picture settings? They're all out of the box. Okay, let's go up. Make sure color booster is off. That remote just sucks, doesn't it? It just, it's, it's, it's not responding. It's not Warm to, correct. Static, okay, now they're all matched. Let me change my exposure. Okay, so they're all in filmmaker mode. They're the most accurate settings, which is the G4 in filmmaker, known at dynamic tone mapping, the Samsung S95D in filmmaker, static tone mapping, and the 900D in filmmaker. Is it local dimming on high, Brian? Um, it's not. That's not out of the box, but I'll change it. Okay. And they are looking pretty nearly identical, which is what it should be in Filmmaker, right? If you're accurate to a reference, then it should be as similar as possible. So I'm mapping off on the LG. Oh, let me turn on the exposure. That is a bit hot there. There we go. So now the S95D and the G4 look very similar once you get their most accurate mode, which should be the case. So local dimming is on high, everything else is off. You want Brian, don't forget, when you reset Filmmaker, turn off Eco again on the Samsung. Because <laughs> it turns on when you reset it. Not globally, it shouldn't. I don't know. If you have the, the big one? Yeah. Well, we'll make sure it's the power mode is not on. That's, that's or their weird, what is it? The pixel dimming, logo dimming, shifting thing That's not cool, that's and the g4 is back from the dead there you go
is the AI Brightness Pro on or off on the G4? The AI Picture Pro should be off, right, Brian? It should be off. I'll check it. We'll, we'll double check it. It should be off. It, yes, it was on earlier, though. We were playing with it because, you know, we're in bright room. But in a dark room, we will turn it off. We'll double check that. All right, Sam asks, do all OLEDs have issues maintaining full screen brightness because of ABL? All of them except the G4. The G4 has been incredibly effective in preventing the dimming over time, right? ASBL. ABL means it starts off a little bit dimmer because it has to manage the amount of energy that it can distribute. But I know what you mean. Like over time, does it dim? Like watching hockey, the G4 does not. The S95D does a little, and the 900D obviously is not OLED, so not an issue. This alone would make me consider upgrading to the Bravia 9 instead of the A95L. So the A95L starts off dim to prevent that dimming over time issue. But I think the G4, Definitely is something you could consider because I didn't see that at all when we were doing our hockey tests and stuff. And when I was at home testing it, I ran just different sports for literally hours and it preserved much of all, all that brightness. So the G4 is definitely a good sports TV if you're afraid of that dimming issue. And the S95D keeps getting brighter. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I'm, about, I'm all about the last round of the fight. Ninth round, all right, I'm ready. I've been warming up all day. And into further wants people to know you could fully turn off ASBL on the S95D in the service menu. So there you have it. If you guys go in the service menu, you can have fun there, which do it at your own risk, is what I always say. Whereas the G4, you don't have to go into any service menu. It comes out of the box that way. So I say try to play with the TVs within its specs, mostly because there's a reason why it's not that way. Yeah. The new Rick. I watch college baseball streaming through SPN apps, so quality is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see if the G4 can clean it up a bit. When the quality is that bad, any amount of cleanup, it's, it's not gonna be night and day. Any of these TVs, they'll look so close. I don't think it's an issue. Choose the one that looks good most of the time for you. Don't expect a TV to do the work of Major League Baseball if they're gonna give you a screwy source. Oh, college baseball, even worse, yeah. If it's a screwy source, it is what it is. Let me turn up the exposure and touch for this scene. So the TVs look pretty close now. Yep. Now that they're all, it's eco mode being off now, the S95D is legit. Yep, eco mode is off. And I, I agree with YJT. He's saying that Samsung quickly snuck in an update because as you know, if it's plugged into the internet, it's you never know. <laughs> During the stream to help out the S95D, it wouldn't surprise me. See, keep your TV plugged in my friends. Until you don't. Until it doesn't. <laughs> hey, FPS, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do you think that Bravia 9 has any chance of outperforming the G4 in the shootout, or is it safe to assume that the G4 will win? And we're going to separate the shootout, first OLED against OLED only, and then mini LEDs against the best mini LEDs. Then the winner of each will go after each other. So let's assume for the sake of argument, G4 wins out on the OLED side and the S95D or the Bravia 9 wins out on their side. The key is the content. I will make sure to give content to each that allows them to win within their specialty. So with the Bravia 9, I will provide content made for the Bravia 9. Let's see how the G4 does, but we'll do the same for the G4, right? Just normal streaming content and so forth. And well, at this point, we'll have a combination of both reference to compare, but in a bright room, subjective, because I think that's important too. And right now, I would dare predict, subjectively in a bright room, the G4 is really bright. The Bravia 9 doesn't have enough content to show off. 
Because even if I had that 4,000 nit type content, not a lot. Well, as most content, the G4 will shine in. So I'm going to predict that the G4 by a nose, but the Bravia 9 will come closer than people expect. And last year, I predicted the G3 or the S95D, actually, a C would win. Turned out the A95L won, and the G3 was second, so, you know, or, yeah, I think the G3 was second last year, right? But it's, you know, it's up to the judges. Everything is subjective. But thanks for showing up and hanging out with us as we eat nachos. And Sean is saying, is there something wrong with the S95D? Its color shouldn't look washed out compared to the G4. I think it's because it's a little bit brighter in these scenes. It's not washed out. If I adjust the exposure, you'll see. Okay, now the S95D's color, let me see, because it's slightly brighter. Oops, there you go. It's actually much more similar than it appears. See, now that I just exposure to capture all of the color, you'll see that it just looks a touch brighter, but the colors are there, so it's not washed out. This is the problem with capturing on anything, uh, video, and then putting it on YouTube. But put YouTube aside, where you're capturing video and one TV slightly brighter, if I capture to expose to the less bright TV, the brighter TV looks washed out. That's you know, just overexposed. If I capture for the brighter TV, then the slightly dimmer TV will look a bit dimmer. And now you're thinking, wait, why is it so dim? Because it is. So what I normally do is I try to expose to the brightest TV to make sure all that color is captured. But then if the TVs next to it aren't close, it looks really bad. And that's why I don't have a C4 next to a G4 or a S95D. It's just, it doesn't look good at all, but it's not that bad. But because the cameras are not our eyes, it kind of exaggerates the differences, right? Oh, and tell them about the Q difference between the sensor for QD OLED and the Oh, yeah. Computer. And then talk about color differences. QD OLED. So when we're filming a QD aggravate. OLED and a WRGB OLED, the QD OLED always pushes really warm. Mm -hmm to where a lot of the parts that you're filming that are white look pink. And that's what you always hear. Now, Fomo's camera doesn't look that bad, but it can look night and day. Yeah. The blues look hopped up on WOLED. Like here, they look very similar. Teal, Samsung's favorite color. What's funny is I love the more, it almost like the, um, I'm gonna go back to it in a second, where the 900D look better in the intro with this. All OLEDs benefit from breaking, I agree with that. <laughs> not five hours. <laughs> yeah, five hours is not enough. You need I mean, another 200, 200 hours, maybe. Another 200 hours. Here we do the five hour break. Can you go through the S95D settings again? Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, Give remote. me a second. Let me just finish this. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, we just I'll show you in a second. It's filmmaker mode and static. That's it. No other changes. Everything else is out of the box. Filmmaker and static. Everything else out of the box. And the G4 is filmmaker and no dynamic tone mapping. And the 900D, what, what do you do with the 900D? Same, everything's the same. What about the color booster? Local, nope. No color booster, so. It's raw. 900D is the same, just And raw. the 900D's um, local dimming's on high, that's the only difference. Yes, local dimming, well, because it has local dimming, right? And the processing's off. Yeah. What did get enabled, though, was that um, power optimization did get enabled. Not power saver, but, op but uh, the sensor. The room sensor. Need to do a stress test for all TVs. The question is, what constitutes a stress test? You could do a dark room or a dark scene stress test. Well, we did it today, 10,000 nits. We, we have a 10,000 nits stress test today. Horses, baby. Bright horses in the snow. Look how good the S95D looks in the dark, Can I though. Can pan up a bit? All right. Let me lift that. Maybe I bumped into it. I probably kicked no, it. that's good. There you go. Or maybe I move this. Yeah. Nope, that's just the scene. So yeah, the TV cuts off right there because that's, that's where the scene cuts off. It's not, I'll tell the exposure so you guys can see. That is funny. <laughs> like, dude. 
<laughs> like, I feel like it's actually widescreen, but okay. What's happening <laughs> over there? Okay. So is it cutting off? Let me see. Yep, I'm cutting off at the right place. It's just dark right above the TV. There's another TV behind the, the, um, the G4. Yeah. You never seen that. Okay, there we go. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that helps you, Lauren. These TVs have been on all day. Maybe they are heat exhausted. Maybe, maybe, and that's the whole point, right? Is people sit there and watch TVs all day. Which is the first to fail? But I think they're okay. Now the G4 should be the one that performs the best because it has a heat sink. It's got its latest generation MLA. It's got the more efficient power board or the, the latest power board. The heat pad on the S95D. So, but I think they're okay. I think. You want to uh, ask them how they're doing? Hey Ask guys, the TVs. You guys, you guys doing okay? I think the TVs are all right. TVs? Okay, let me move the camera. I may have shifted a bit too much. There you go. Okay. This up a little bit. There we go. All right. I'm gonna go back to this other demo for I'm gonna show you the Aqua. Yeah, go for it. Um, can is that captured well? The 900D. The who? The 900D is in, in frame, right? Yeah, it's in frame. I'll show you this, this demo in a second. S95 D brighter in Filmmaker, it's not supposed to be. Filmmaker, so this not, source is not a bright source, so. So, so I, I, I'll say that this is where I actually see more color on the 900 Watch this intro for a moment. When you talk about the quantum dot, the aqua, check this out, this intro. Okay. You see how it's got an aqua? Yeah. I like that better. The teal. Yeah. It's the infamous Samsung teal yeah, on its mini LED here, TVs. On the S95, though. Look, check it again. This is the teal that's on all the mini LEDs from Samsung. But you don't see it on the S95D. No, you're right. But I appreciate that more. Well, I've only noticed that a couple times all day. Just in that one scene. It's Maybe the same. A little bit. Yeah. Here? Oh, so I didn't catch the message, KG, sorry. But KG is saying that the S95D forced SDR on itself in Street Fighter. Okay. So we have to force it back. So what does that mean for LG? So the splitter sent the Samsung an SDR feed, but sent LG an HDR feed? That is so odd. What is that? So. Well, I mean, I think when you're playing with splitters like that, you're gonna see. Yeah. Hey, and that's something that's like, wow. What are you gonna do? Someone who wanted to get the AV Pro Edge, I'm gonna have to give them a call and ask them about that. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You see FUMU the whole day, you're like, gotta give him a call, baby. Gotta, I'm like, you know what? Don't pick up the phone. You're so funny, like, hey man, look, my hands, I'm sorry, I give him a call. <laughs> FUMU's got, we got like five different people getting customer service. My FOMO keeps telling us to call you guys. Hey, what's up? I was uh, referred by FOMO. <laughs> Never mind. 
Cancel that order. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Well, who was who was before? Was like they're buying uh, buying TVs at the beginning of the stream. They're like, oh my god, I gotta cancel it. Apple TV versus Shield. Is Apple TV 4K the best streaming device? If you're an Apple guy, the answer is yes, because it's Apple. You're used to the ecosystem. The Shield gives you more options, more settings. So what's best for you is what are you using the Shield for? Are you using all of its features? You're comfortable with it? To say generically it's best, it's really hard because image quality is very similar across these streaming devices, I think. Apple consistently puts out the highest bit rate. I don't know about Shield, what its bit rate is like. So if you're counting bit rate, Apple consistently does put out higher bit rate samples of movies and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind, but is it visibly different? And that's, I think, what you really want to know. The answer is no. I don't think you can notice a difference. But if you need upscaling from your device, then the Shield offers upscaling. Apple TV doesn't upscale. But if your TV does better upscaling, then you don't need the Shield, right? So use case, but the Shield is a very special device with lots of settings. You have to know that you want why you want it. I personally don't use it because I just, Chromecast, Fire Stick, Apple TV. It's whichever works for what I'm trying to compare as long as I can get the feed. And then you have the internal apps of the TVs as well. And the 900D suddenly looks amazing again. It's, it's amazing how bright they- Content specific, right? But That's it's amazing how, how bright these OLEDs are. In Filmmaker, this is all Filmmaker model. Yeah, and this is in Filmmaker, right? I mean, this is accurate to the source lighting. Yeah. It looks fine. I see, so if, the ni if the 900D was alone, it'd look amazing. Yes. So what's with the teal? Well, this is something I noticed with the first QN90A. What's with the teal? I told Samsung and they said to me, we agree, what's with the teal? <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> still happening. I know you are, but what am I? Like that? <laughs> I mean, I would say that even any part of the, the 900D that maybe looks a little more lifted, it looks more natural. Right, yeah. almost. It does have that plasma look to it. Which hey, I don't understand. Don't at all. worry about it, KG. I, we were struggling trying to get yeah, we're not that the S95D to work. Our remote wasn't working. I mean, at that I mean, point, we just gave up. The remote could not get us into the game bar. Yeah, we were actually stuck out of the game. We then were, I couldn't we get out of the, I couldn't out get out of the game, game mode to change yeah. it into this. Yeah, but no, this is why a dedicated gaming stream is required so that you could just sit there and just focus on game settings, which I do not like doing. Right? No, it's too. But you, Hey, there are people that love doing that. I just, I can't do it. So it's kind of like, what is it? It's that institutional sense where when you sense something is wrong, you know right away, oh, the circuit number five is off. Let me adjust that. See, for me, that's like tone mapping. I could spot bad tone mapping for a mile away. But other than that, man, it's a specialty, my friend, specialty. Do they want to see a different preset at some point? Or do they want to stay with Filmmaker for a little bit? What's that? Do you want to see a different preset or are they happy with Filmmaker for a little oh, bit? Oh no, they just want to check out because we already know all the presets. Basically, each TV does their own thing when it's not in Filmmaker mode. And the question is, is that your thing? Hey, Eric Barrera, thank you for, uh, for the comment. Hey, Stop the Film, Brian. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Wonderful. I've been watching your past live streams for a couple of months. I appreciate your channels. I'm new to the TV space. I have an Xbox X. How unfortunate. We have a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Xbox, I have an Xbox X2. And before I used to, you know, compare both and ultimately like, you know what? What am I doing? It's all, it's all pretty much the same. So just to make it easy, I normally test on a PS5. But Xbox is great. You got the variety. Yeah, I mean, the Brian, Xbox, the you Xbox, need to put up some PC comparisons. Of so PC comparisons I've done, but now it's gotten to be where if you're going to do PC, you might as well just do PC as Xbox because they're the same in a way. Mm -hmm. So PS5 we do because there's more dynamic single player titles to show off. That's why I bring it with me because it's got a lot of the, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, things of that nature. The PC, I brought it for the, it's just hard to bring. It's just huge. So here's a comment that we want to hit. They all look great in FMM, but specifically, YJT says, wow, I think we were wrong about the S95D. It's looking a lot better. 
Well, you've been, Why you, is you that? guys have all been wrong about it since it launched. <laughs> because it, we're in a dark room. What did we tell you? <laughs> well, the I'm saying. S95D is a dark room TV in a bright room. It kind of washes yeah. a little bit of that contrast out. But, the but, blacks live in a dark room. But FOMO, this, this is why it's so important to not listen to one reviewer in five minutes and then crush a TV. You're seeing it do amazing against the G4, which I've already said the best TV of the year. That matte finish is doing nothing against it now. Yep. So we're in a darker room, which is still like your living room, right? You have your light behind me. There's TVs mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's doing amazing. So, you know. Now let's, let's look at this dark room real quick. So now, you guys remember at the beginning of the day, I panned around. Look how dark it is outside now. Look at that, right? <laughs> I mean, and then we look up to the skylight, like, it's dark. And so in a dark room, like I said, this S95D, it's a dark room TV. Now, in a bright room, it has some magic special powers, but for some of you, as you saw, that's not so special after all, right? Because it does uh, stuff like maybe wash out the colors, maybe lift the blacks. You don't like that. So it's a great TV when it does its intended job in a dark room, which is where we are now. There you go. Okay. But yeah, I'm glad you made that observation. I think all the reviews, they, they seem to forget that it's a different performer in a dark room because it doesn't have that ambient light. On the one hand, it treats reflections great, but then there's a cost to be paid, my friends. Okay, and Eric continues with his question. My budget is 3,500 for a TV. That's a good budget. My current TV is a Sony Bravia from 2009. I am glad you spent that time saving up. What is the best <laughs> oh, bang for the <laughs> buck for my console? You. Okay, Brian, Xbox Series X. What about it? Best bang for the buck for your console, $3,500? I would have to say the G4. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep, yep, you're a gamer. It's doing very well, I think. The G4 would do very well for you. And a 3,500? 65 inches, you're there. No, oh, but bang for the buck, you can go 77 inches with an S90D later in the year. So Brian, actually that's a good question though. At $3,500, he can go bigger with an S95D, 77 inches later in the year, or an S90D under 3,000. So if we're talking bang for the buck, I'd rather you go larger. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy a larger gaming experience because the subtle differences between the G4 and the S90D and the S95D, that's not bang for the buck. That's, that's pixel peeping for the best. Like every dollar, forget it. I'm willing to spend extra. But if you're wanting the best for the 3,500, I'd add size to that equation. So now if you're already sitting close, let's say you're already six feet away, okay. You top out at 77 inches. So 77 inches for a $3,500 uh, G4, wait until Black Friday, it's gonna come close. Maybe wait for 2025. But let me know, what size are you at? <laughs> Tell us your tone mapping secrets. Uh, it would be to get the right TV. You can't, you can't fix tone mapping. Don't feed it over 2,000 nits unless it's a Samsung. Or in this case, the G4 did pretty well too, right? And if it's a Sony, definitely don't give it over a thousand nits. That's the secret. There's nothing Sony could do with that. Okay. You know, what's the so funny says, is FOMO, is it just me or does that 900D look like absolute garbage? Are these calibrated hookup? I'll tell you right now, calibration 900D is not a filmmaker while the other two are in standards. It, it so is what relax. it is, right? So relax, if you don't like friend. mini LED, give you don't like mini LED. They're competing with the best OLEDs out there. Mini LED cannot beat OLED. It's in its strength, which is right here. You got the shadow detail. You got the specular highlights. It's, won't do it. So calibration is not going to save it. Trust me. Calibration could do some magic. But if you call a calibrator and you say, I got a crappy LCD TV. Can you come over and fix it? He just get, get yourself an OLED, my friend. Uh, Cypher thinks that the problem with the mat, after eight hours of streaming, the heat from the stream it melted it off. away. <laughs> the mat is no longer there. I'm not sure that's how it works, but I... What time is it here, Douglas? We are in New York, and the time is... Is it 8 o'clock? It's, yeah, 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. 
We're going to wrap up soon, my friend. We went, we started at one. So yeah, I think we want to leave while they're still serving dinner. Brian already finished most of the guacamole. Oh, now it's me. All that the day. guacamole. I think I had like two dips. Oh, stop it. Dude, he ate all the nachos, bro. <laughs> I ate all the nachos. He ate the guacamole with his finger. Fatty. <laughs> <laughs> Fomo oh, eating all the cheese. Awesome. Lips are all shiny. Standard preset. The G4 does have a better processor than the S95D. The so S95D has a better processor than the S95C, and the 900D has a better processor than the S95D. That's the pecking order of processors. The question is whether the G4 processor can match the Bravia 9. That remains to be seen. What do we do with the G4 to give it more orange? They're, both, do in, they're both in standard. That's nothing. This is just the G4 being the G4. Well, G4 is in standard, so it, is the Samsung. Oh, it's standard mode, right? Oh, okay, and they are the, in standard mode now. And the um, 900D is in dynamic. 900D is dynamic. The because G4 is the standard. Because standard. the standard's broken. What is the S95D in? Um, S95D is in standard. So, to, uh, so this is a standard mode comparison. We're no longer in Filmmaker. So in standard, off. all color goes out the window. Yep. Uh, they do their own thing in standard. Now, you can calibrate standard. By calibrating standard, you'll make it more like filmmaker mode. So I guess the whole point is, what is it you want, right? Calibration is supposed to be first dark room. Is it as close to a reference monitor as possible? So you got your filmmaker in a dark room, but you're in a bright room, now what? So you can calibrate cinema home on the LG or filmmaker in active, but I don't think that should make a difference for the, the Samsung. So you might want to calibrate cinema home with dynamic tone mapping on. So in a bright room, it's a completely, everything, is, everything has changed. But we're in standard now, just so you guys know. So yes, hopefully that answers your question. Akina Hora, Kine Aora. These TVs are not miles apart, that's the point. Now, the, the expense is they are miles apart. The 900D is very expensive for what you're getting, but Ultimately, the picture quality are close enough that if you walked in a room with just one of these TVs in a dark room, you would not be able to say, oh, that's definitely a mini LED or an OLED, right? Just letting it run through its content that we're showing you now. It is very hard to say that one is clearly an OLED, and that's why we do them side by side to give you that sense of difference. But the reality is if, if you got one of these, you should not be unhappy. Sorry, milk shed just got here late. Panel uniformity discussed, yes, so it was okay here. We didn't see any issues that were obvious, but if you ran a gray screen test, I could probably tell you that the 83 inch G4 will consistently do worse than the smaller sizes. And QD OLED overall will consistently do better than the non QD OLED W OLEDs. And this is something that I've asked, um, I was gonna say Sammy, Dwayne Davis, and he's noticed that slight uniformity improvement if that, the reality is the 83 is slightly better, but still worse than the smaller sizes in terms of that vertical banding uniformity. But overall, it is a touch better than last year, but it's not night and day. QD OLED will give you the best uniformity still. And on Mini LED, definitely panel lottery. You don't know what you're gonna get. And thank you for that super chat, David E. Thanks for all your effort, fellas. Well, you're welcome. These comparisons are so helpful for all of us. We try, with the exception of Street Fighter. <laughs> that yeah, one was so just Capcom dead. really ruined it. What happened? But hopefully this helped you choose your TV. But if you're a Street Fighter gamer, but you know what was ironic? So a Street Fighter, so let's say it was, in, it was an SDR on the S95D. It looked better in SDR, so maybe you should be an SDR when you're playing Street Fighter. It did not look good on the G4. I was hoping maybe the G4 had the screwy signal. So, you know yeah, what? it was actually. B blame the creator. If they wanted it to be that deep orange, it did not look good. That's the one where I'm like, ah, sorry, no. And that was even with the video range changed. Mm hmm. And here we go. Just looking at your interesting, interesting questions. 
So here's something interesting. Now, just so you know, I did not compare the 900C again after our first stream last spring. So SD says the 900D is a step back in blooming control because it crushes less than the previous iterations. You either crush hard or blooming will be exposed. No in between. Correct. So this year, they're trying something different. They're, they want to give it a little bit more shadow detail, maybe more specular highlights, but without that fine level precision dimming of the mini LED and the local dimming zones, you're not going to get as much of that OLED-like look. And the Bravia 9 promises that's what it will be. So I'm excited to see if the Bravia 9 can beat out the 900D in terms of those specular highlights. Uh, it should, by the way. G4 versus C2, where do I even start? <laughs> Not even close, my friends. In terms of brightness, in terms of motion, and upscaling and tone mapping, well, upscaling, actually it's okay, uh, tone mapping. So the G4 is a tier, like a whole tier, better than the C2 in many ways. But then the C2, when you get it cheap, hey, it's an OLED, right? Yes, I, other than price, the G4, just is a better TV. Now, it's an OLED still, so in dark scenes, the C2 actually will look good, right? As a matter of fact, it should look very similar to the G4, except getting out of black, the G4 is improved. The C2 struggled back then with black crushing, as many have complained with the C1, C2, and prior. So that could be an issue that C2 is still struggling with, but just above black to, let's say 100 nits, they should look identical. So if you're watching old TV shows, friends, happy days, Shouldn't make a difference. Happy days. That? <laughs> Laverne and Shirley. All in the family. <laughs> All in the family. Three's <laughs> company. That doesn't make a difference. Come on, knock on my door. What do I feel like uh, Shaquille Patel does not watch Three's Company? Oh, really? Well, Elrod also wants to know G4 versus C4. Now, this one, Brian <sighs> is in love G4. with the C4. I love the Brian C4. Brian is in love with the C4. Come on, guys. They're the, the same family, and the G4 is a beast. And yet, for sports watching, you want bright, you got to go with the G4. But if you don't need that extra brightness, yeah. again, you're watching Three's Company, let's go with the C4. Come on, I got my door. Silver Spoons. Oh, Ricky Schroeder. You're going Ricky Schroeder, baby? Ricky Schroeder. Going back that far? Okay. I think, now, just so you guys know, we're, we're pretty much finished with the comparisons. We're answering questions. So we're going to wrap up in a few minutes so that we can go and grab a bag before the diners close. And I think Brian has fully digested his avocado guacamole, as have I. All right. S95C, S95D, S95D game mode versus G4 game mode. So we did the, I did the S95C versus the S95D and the S90D. And ultimately, the conclusion is the S95C is slightly brighter than the S90D. The S90D is using the same tone mapping and processing as the S95C, and the S95D is better tone mapping software. We see in brighter scenes, it does a better job of tone mapping the details, whereas the 95C and the 90D look nearly identical, except 95C is a little bit brighter. That tells me that the 95C just passed on its chips and software to the 90D, whereas the 95D took a step forward with its tone mapping software. So that would be the biggest difference between those two. So if you're not into like, oh, I don't watch super bright, I don't need the extra tone mapping, get the 95C and save some money. But it appears that some are saying the 95D may have, may have addressed the dropouts in gaming. So if that's important to you, pay close attention to that. Now, 95D game mode versus G4 in game mode. Man, how to unpack that. They're both excellent, but you know, game specific, console specific, you need to know, do you like HGIG? Is it always off? You just want dynamic tone mapping? That, that's just, I don't want to say one is obviously better than the other. I think they're both good. For my purposes, I would take either one. I would not say, oh, I'm going to get that one. I'm going yeah, to get that it's, one. it's really, if you like the matte finish with that, you like the remote, you like the, the UI, matte finish might make a you like Tizen, for you like LG. It, it, that's how good they are. Yeah, and they're very close. Now, you know, Josh is convinced. He's just going to wait for the QN900E, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are too much. 
Uh, I think Ephraim was able to inhale the nachos we were eating because we were crunching so, so loud. Rock, rock, rock. You guys are awesome. G4 looks now like it's crushing. Uh, it's just because my exposure is down a bit. I'll show up the exposure for you guys. There we go. Okay. Now, with that exposure, hopefully you guys can see what's crushing what. By turning up the exposure, you'll see the black levels better. And it does look like the LG, the black's very similar to the S95D, but the S95D is a touch brighter and standard. That's the biggest difference. That's a bit too hot. I mean, they're both in standard, so they're a little, little hot. Oh, this is a great one. Yeah, and again, guys, they're both in standard mode. So standard is something that Brian enjoys uh, when he has a cocktail martini, sits down in <laughs> front porch. <laughs> no one's I'm, watching. I'm a <sighs> filmmaker. I'm not Scorsese. Uh, no one watching. I'm putting it in standard mode, baby. And so right now the common refrain is, the Bravia 9 will destroy the 900D. I personally think so as well. It's, it's, it's because it's, to me, it's because Sony has spent so much time on this, whereas Samsung has been ahead. They've been incrementally improving, but they have not made a huge leap to push tone mapping with more dimming zones and that dimming zone control forward. Sony did, and I think Sony will beat them because of that. So we have Jennifer Gala. Um, this is this standard is on both. Is that Jennifer Gala? Mm -hmm. oh, let me turn down the exposure real quick. So let my camera run. So. Oh, look at that! Oh, what a great scene! That clarity is insane. Oh, this one you could really see the differences when you went, when you panned through mm -hmm. with the shadow detail and everything. Definitely can turn up the exposure for this one. Again, guys, this is in standard mode. So in Filmmaker, they should be more similar than they are different. Okay, Brian, are you ready to wrap up? Sure. All right. Let's uh, give hugs and kisses to everyone who showed up. I think this is a great scene. It feels peaceful. It feels zen. I feel like, oh, wow, this is a bright scene. I'm going to turn down the exposure so you guys can see how bright that is. Yeah, that's standard mode on the S95D. It's very, very sweet. Okay, everyone, thank you for showing up. Much love from me and my What's up? Romo compatriot here. Thanks for hanging out with us all day. I know it was a long day for you guys, but we appreciate it. it. Feels like the day just started. You ready, Rocky? You ready to start it over? This, is, back? this is my natural <laughs> element. Comparisons in a dark room. Finally, this is finally <laughs> what I just We should have started now. We got 471 <laughs> likes, there you go. Oh, that's all I needed, guys. Okay, <laughs> explain everything one more time. Right, actually, from, from the top. From the top. Okay, actually, Josh, this is actually good. In one sentence for each TV, Brian, tell me. G4, one sentence. TV of the year. Okay. I'm going to give you a little. I would say um, much improved over the G3 for me. Uh, processing brighter. But I would say a, a, a win for that LG really needed. This year. Yes. They needed a real good TV this year. They, I think with the C4 and the G4, they've done it both. Um, so I think it's only going to get better with refinement. It's going to need some updates, especially the 83. How so, about the S95D? S95D is my hero. I mean, it's a TV that I beat up when it first came out when we were at CES. Um, I'll still continue to recommend it. I think it's excellent. I think, you know, um, in a dark room, we're seeing right here, it's not milky at all. It's as tack sharp as the G4. Um, so to me, I'm still recommending it for its use case. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it proved me wrong. I hope it, it helped change your mind a little bit, whether you like it or not. 900D, I think, <clears throat> in a vacuum, it's amazing by itself against other mini LEDs. I think it'll be awesome. It's, it hung in there today against the two best OLEDs in the world. It did, and that we didn't see that before for mini LED. No, no. I mean, to think it was going to win, I mean, we never thought it was going to win, but I think it did very well. And for me, I have not much to add other than on the S95D, remember our emphasis in a dark room, phenomenal. Bright room, make sure it fits your use case, right? If Definitely. your room is too bright, too meaning it's bright enough that it will start noticeably lifting the blacks and possibly washing out some of that color in some scenes, just so you guys know, that's what we saw today. But if you're watching in a dimly lit to dark room, the S95D, no compromise TV. Done. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed today's comparisons. This is this one. Don't forget to check out my channel, Brian's Tech Therapy. I don't say that enough. Um, and special thanks to Value Electronics, Robert, yes. Wendy, and Leanne. Um, please consider making your next AV purchase through them. It was amazing. They were here all day. Robert. Oh, Robert, thank you. Here Hello, we go. Everybody. Here we go. Thank you. And again, if you guys don't remember, the Bravia 9, he's taking pre-orders. Yes. 10% credit applied to any soundbar. And if it's a Sony soundbar, an additional $100 off the Quad or the Bar 9. That's right. Together, that is cheaper than any but he else. No, Robert, just reiterate though, waiting till Black Friday, that same percentage doesn't get offered, right? So That's right. We're not going to so, be able to do that when we'll, yeah. we'll 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 be involved in the Black Friday sale. We'll have the same exact price that everybody no, no, no else has. No double coupons. We're not doing but, triple coupons. But we're not going to have our exclusive 10% <laughs> store credit on top of that. Yeah, so, you can't bring in a coupon. You can't swipe coupon. it three times. You can't use a card. <laughs> yeah. Was it a Groupon? Yeah, can't use a Groupon. Five of us are coming. We're going to buy 10. <laughs> Yeah. But Robert, you know, from FOMO and I and Wendy and Leanne, thank you so much for giving us the story of the entire well, day. They are open today. So, I mean, that is a big sacrifice. Yeah. And thank you, Brian and FOMO, for coming here and, and filming this with us oh, at our oh, showroom. Shipping. Shipping is free. Shipping is free. And yes. if you're not in the state of New York, Robert will pay for that sales tax. Yes. Yeah. So, guess what? That sales tax, depending on what state you're from, can actually be, end up being more than a 10%, right? So, <laughs> oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Hey, thanks, everyone. And Thank you. Look until, forward to seeing right, everybody. Love you guys. Give us a call. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Till next time, stop the FOMO.